while I was in the shower, bro. That's how bad it was, man. That's insane. Then I unmuted you whenever Rufus, I guess, is a masochist. Ask your opinion, okay? But <laughs> regardless, you can't just stream, man. Jesus. Exactly. Okay, Look how easy this is. Rue, if you're wrong, the very the very surveys you invoke say they absolutely do account for lateral refraction. Also to determine azimuth, they use a spherical coordinate system of the stars in relation to the presupposed sphere to get their direction so that you can determine the deviation from supposed horizontal. Thank you. Now let me let me let me when dry we, off. Let me dry I just got out of the okay. show. <laughs> when are we when are Morning, we debating on Jaren's with it? Which ask a scallop again, by the way, with it. Which when are we debating on Jaren's? Was it? Can I drop a question on which? Chaser. You were A1 certified cloud chaser. Which is it? Hey, but so, Rui, oh, you're a certified cloud chaser. But, okay. So, okay, so, yeah, how does refraction not play a part in the angles? Because they're horizontal angles. The, ref <laughs> the gradient in the atmosphere is vertical. So, what is the rules for E and not for D? Now, wait a minute. Isn't it going what? over the ground that is undulating? That's what I'm saying. Is it going wait, 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 wait. Let me help you out here. Let me, Jesus, bro. I can't even dry off. It's so painful to listen to. I hate misinformation, bro. It's so annoying. Okay. So the actual surveys that they're invoking, which they don't do them anymore, by the way. <laughs> okay. Those surveys mm -hmm. were done in like the last one was done like early 1900s. And in there, it absolutely does account for lateral refraction. Okay, but it is significantly no less. You see how I'm honest. So if you just let me finish, I'm going to say the whole thing. So it does. It's not nearly as much refraction <laughs> as vertical refraction. Okay, because there's a gradient difference up and down. Obviously, there's a vertical density gradient, vertical temperature gradient. But there, there can be somewhat extreme temperature gradients left to right, despite that. So they actually uh, write about this in detail. And again, the way that they determine their azimuth, okay, because that's their direction to the horizon. The way they determine their actual azimuth is they use a spherical coordinate system. Okay, they have to use the sphere in relation to the stars. They look at the stars in the distance. They pick a star out close to above where they're supposed to be looking based on the spherical coordinate system. And then they measure deviations from that. Admittedly, also in these surveys, that when it's at great distance, it's not very reliable. Half the time, they can't even see the little, they were using little mirrors, right? So they can't even really see them because they're so far away. And they filled them in based on the spherical model, right? And the coordinates. Okay. That's what actually mm. happens. That's what actually happens. Right. And right. I'm, it's it. So Ooh, first of all, how much you say saying bro? that servers were being invoked. <clears throat> Um, is this my understanding that Ruif was invoking is uh, referring to his own measurements, not to some surveys uh, or sur uh, spherical yeah. coordinates? And then you went on for more than a minute on this yeah. wrong premise. Ruif didn't and do any measurements. The... What are you talking Hang about? On. Hang on, I'm getting two things confused here. AK is talking about my video, which is not spherical access. I posted a meme in the chat showing spherical excess of 45 arc seconds. So my question to Witsit was, how much lateral refraction did they measure? All right, wait up, wait up. So AK, you were wrong, huh? You should stop jumping in. All right. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and give you a, a heads up, bro. AK, you, you do a lot like what Brian's doing right now. And we're, I'm not interested in particular. Yell, okay. Yelling and screaming? <laughs> I don't think I do that. It, it, no, no, AK. And he interrupts a lot. How so, when, when did I scream? No, no, okay. buddy, buddy, buddy. I'm just telling you, you were clearly wrong, right? Okay. Okay, so you didn't need to do take, take note going forward. Okay, I just Rui, explained that lateral that? refraction is much less. But it absolutely... Now, this is, this is the part of moving the goalposts that the Globers do always. Okay? For years, they said there is no left-to-right refraction. There is no left-to-right refraction because there's only vertical refraction. And, and refraction only affects angles vertically. Well, we went and looked yeah. at the very stupid 1900 paper that they keep invoking because they don't have any recent ones, right? And then uh, it, it's a totally different story when you read the paper. Now, if you're saying that someone's done it recently, right? Well, how many measurements did they take, right? How they determine azimuth? I don't, I'm not claiming that lateral refraction is the biggest uh, scenario that would like move something anywhere close to 40 degrees. And I would just tell the flat earthers, you shouldn't say that either. 
Because <laughs> lateral refraction is different. In order for lateral refraction to affect an angle anywhere close to that much, it would be the outlier of the observations. Okay, because it would have to be an extreme temperature uh, difference, meaning like if you're looking straight forward and then you look at an area over to the right, right, that area is way warmer than the area to the left. That's a very rare phenomenon. Okay, and that, that could cause displacement due to refraction left and right. And then there are slight fluctuations, which are called slight refraction. Okay, this is this is on the paper and it's also just common sense. So there, yeah. there's, there, there would be something else if something's moving that far, because if you take 10 measurements, right? If you take 10 measurements, in order to be something like crazy lateral displacement, which is left or right displacement, then it's going to, uh, it, it's, it would just be like one of the 10 or something, right? It wouldn't be every measurement show you that same angle. There's no way a diff on different days and stuff like that. Now, this is not even what they really do. They do just take one measurement. But, I mean, it's not the strongest argument. I think if we're going to be realistic, if, if, if they claim to have multiple measurements that are far off left or right, just saying refraction is not a strong argument. But also, you have to correct the Globers because they don't know what they're talking about. It. There absolutely is a lot of refractions. Okay, yeah, so, so the that I here? know about. Well, hang on, we're piling on. <laughs> that the two examples of, of lateral refraction I've seen in the literature is uh, taking a shot across a cliff face. So the cliff face is radiating heat and that will bend the light. The other one was uh, along a riverbank where there was a um, temperature change between the riverbank and the, the, um, the land, right? Those are the two that I'm aware of. When you're up atop of a mountain, Looking across to two other mountains, I want to I want to get Witsit's opinion, his guess as to how much lateral refraction could possibly be in that. It, it would depend on the relative altitudes and temperatures left and right too. So, so right, I, I, it, it, the paper doesn't say unless there's a cliff. It, it, what they actually did because the survey you guys normally bring up, <laughs> which I mean, <laughs> kudos for not bringing it up anymore. At least trying to invoke that someone did it recently or something. Hopefully, I don't know what you're talking about, but, but like they, they say that what they would do is they would determine lateral refraction based on just how much off it was from the globe. And they were like, this is basically impossible to measure. Uh, you have to kind of reverse engineer what the rate would be. So like I, like I already admitted, I don't think lateral refraction would be a ton. And the easiest way okay. to eliminate that is to make repetitive measurements because the odds that unless there's some geographical variable that's causing a major change in temperature or something right that's going to consistently be there then lateral displacement is not going to be a common effect right so we've measured 45 arc seconds of spherical excess well you say that you've you say that you've measured that you know and that's a cool people story. Have. yeah who and where are the where's the raw data and where are the measurements and how they determine azimuth yeah they, they just measure angles between three points and they do it probably 12 times for each one. You realize that they have at least as right, I was going to I was going to mention at least 10 minutes ago regardless of your choice of coordinate system the internal angles mm -hmm. are not going to be affected by your choice of coordinate system. You have to determine azimuth. But if you're measuring an angle between two directions that angle is not going to be affected by your choice of coordinate system. It's going to be affected by your azimuth. No. No, you're looking at two objects and, and you're measuring the angle be between those two references. Have... Yeah, those. But here's the deal. First of all, the reference shrinks in the distance, oh. right? And then you're going to try to arbitrarily place it on. Typically, they use mirrors. You guys now don't even use the mirrors. You just like, we looked at a mountain in the distance, I promise. Right. And like, if you want to send the actual raw data, that's cool. But it, it how you determine your azimuth absolutely does matter. Right, because that's how you actually get your elevation angle measurements in the first place. And the way that we determine typically, like when an accurate surveys, the surveys that were actually done, the way that they determine exactly where those mountains are in relation to them is they have to figure out where they are, right, at, by using the stars. Now, I know that these people yes. don't do anything like that. You guys go up there, take it the outer light way outside of its range, right? Oh, and then Jesus, just, what's it? What's, what's, what's what the range mean? of a the outer light? So wait, is this a professional theater? survey or is this some random anti flat earther that claims to have done it? No, it's a professional it's survey. A Taking manual. a shot for 192 kilometers. Is that beyond its range? Wait, it's a professional survey. Yes. Really? So they, they, you're telling me that they determine, they determine uh, spherical excess with physical measurements and, and compile them together for surveys yes. now? Really? What's it called? 
Oh, fuck the American Ark of the Parallel. What's mine from? Mine's from the uh, Utah. There we go. See, you just it's brought up Utah. something from the 1900s, the American Ark of the right. Parallel. Dude, I just, dude, you just acted like someone recently did it. It's so goofy. You said bro. they are beyond their range of a theodolite. What's the range of a theodolite? No, wait up, wait up. They're, are they using theodolites in 1900? What were they using yes. in 1900? Okay, how were they? Okay, and what were they using on the, the mountain in the distance? Uh, big fucking air. What are they called? Um, the towers, and they put the lights on. Oh, they use like little mirrors. Bilby, Bilby towers. Like Bilby okay. towers, that's it. Okay, so, so first of all, first of all, when you read the American Arc of the Parallel, <laughs> I knew it was going to be the really old one. It's so funny. You guys have nothing. Right. So, but did they use the autolites? Yes. No, it, dude, How time far out. did they shoot? Buddy, 192Ks. You're, 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 buddy, you're taking the alleged the numbers from there and claiming that they're actual measurements. But when you read the actual data in the actual paper, it says a lot of the times these distances – we aren't able to actually see what we're trying to measure or we're not able to make out an angle. So what we do is we plug it in to the spherical oh, coordinates. Okay, do you want to oh, bet, honey? What do you want to bet? <laughs> what it says is that we, we try and get a, a sight line to it, and if we can't, we get it the next night. That's not you what it says. You reckon they just fucking it bullshit the angles? It absolutely does not You reckon they make up the angles? No, they don't think they're making them up. They think they already know what the Earth is. They're just trying to refine it to more accurate, precise right. numbers in smaller segments. And so right. whenever they can't see it, that's right. They put it in there from the model. That's they, a fact. That's what the paper says. They do not guarantee you they don't make up angles. Now here, now, okay, but I guarantee you that you're, they do use the sphere assumption model to get them when they can't see them. They say it point blank in the paper. Now, this is what I want the audience to realize. That's making up angles. To defend the globe Earth, you have to come in and deceptively pretend that there's some modern measurement taken, then get called out and find out that it's actually the, from the same exact survey that we were talking about, which is from like the 1900s. To defend the globe in 2024, you have to invoke measurements from the 1900s. And then we looked at that survey and tons of the measurements that should have definitely had spherical access still were at 180 degrees or 179 degrees, right? They didn't. How big were those triangles? Uh, there, there are some that are over like 30, 40 miles with 180 30, 40 degrees. square miles? No. 30 miles between each point. Okay, how many square miles make, they, is that? Then? They didn't do adjustments to them. So wait, how can I right, now here here, how could I go out on a globe earth and then measure internal angles over 40 miles away and then get 180 degrees? Yeah, what's the accuracy of an auto level for a small oh, wait, trial? Sorry, what's, what's the accuracy? You, you, well, if you're invoking yeah, I'm, I'm explaining your answer, right? You're invoking the accuracy of these theodolites. The accuracy of these theodolites is roughly an arc second. If you've got a small triangle, the amount of spherical excess may not be that much. Uh, so 40 miles from each location is going to be less than an arc second on a sphere? Well, it'll be three arc seconds because you're making three measurements. So you think that the only displacement from 180 degrees over 40 miles is one arc second? How big? Is, you're asking how much spherical excess in that triangle? Yeah, yeah. Well, give me the area, and I'll tell you that. Okay. Well, I mean, these are different random uh, ones. The point is that we did all the math, right? We looked at them, and they, and admittedly, some of them were giving them like close to 180 or just under 180, and they were having to make right. adjustments. They were having to how make big adjustments. Those triangles. I just told you that, like, from point to point, right. some of them are over 40 miles. Okay. Tiny ones were close to 180. Small. Yeah. The small ones are close to 180 because the <laughs> accuracy of the miles. instrument. 40 miles. Yes. Yes. The large ones were 40 miles. The small ones were close to 180. Those two are not the same. They are. There okay, are some that were, wait, tell me. There are some that were close to 180 that the, the point-to-point -point measurements were up to 40 miles. And this is what's so funny. You guys just have to lie about it now. This is where you're just going to lie about it. Just like you guys lied for four years about how there was no lateral refraction. Then we had to read through the 600-page paper and find it ourselves. And then you guys just hand wave dismissed it once we did. Just like you guys claimed that all of them matched the sphere. Then we went and looked through them and said, that's not true. They had to make adjustments because too many of them were 180 degrees. Then you just changed and moved the goalpost again. And now it's just that they were the small ones. Then we point out that no, they're the big ones. And when you do, you'll just point and move the goalpost again. 
I wonder why you guys have to invoke something from the early 1900s it, 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 and then lie about it. I wonder why. That goalpost. Like, that goalpost has never been You know that you're mic hogging. You, you do let's, realize let's that. Let's measure. Right? Yes, you are hogging the mic. Let's measure this big triangle that I posted and see how many square miles that is. Uh, hey, you want to address the point? That you, uh, you, every, every climb that you guys Three and a half thousand. Three every, and a half every... thousand square miles. Okay. Okay, so, so that's big, right? Yeah, they, they literally say at the really big ones, they couldn't actually see them or get reliable measurements. They filled them in based on the globe model. That sounds very much like an accusation of making up an angle. But that's what they say in the paper, bro. And this is what's so funny. If I, if I spent the time to go up to my computer, find this PDF, and then find where they admit it, you would just ignore it. You would have to go feed your dogs, or you would wait a week and then no. say it again. i go to bed. <laughs> it's fucking one o'clock. Okay, so do you understand that, that what I'm okay. saying is a fact, and they actually invoke a specific type of model? They, they already had a sphere Earth model at the time of that survey. They were trying to refine it in smaller sections throughout the Midwest, et cetera, okay? That's what they were actually doing. Okay, so they did have a model to go off of, and I, I forgot the, it's like the Clark, oh, the Clark ellipse, it, it was called the Clark ellipsoid model, okay? And it says right here, it literally says in the thing, it says that with some of the measurements, when we were trying to take angles, we weren't able to actually see the, the location we were trying to measure. And then it gives you the method that you use when you look at the method. And it's actually called, it's called like the Clark method or something. What you do is you just take the ellipsoid model, right? And then you do the math to get what the, the number should be. That's what they literally did for long yeah. ones. Now, this is the crazy part about it. It doesn't specify which ones they had to fill in without being able to see. So yeah. I don't I, care I at all what you people are talking about. You should be able to do this in modern times. Because if, 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 the, if the one you're invoking shows that some of them that should have spherical excess are actually showing 180 degrees, and then the longer they, – they admit that at the long ones, they can't always see them. They just fill them in based on the spherical model. Then just go do it today or without, you're not, without making all those assumptions. All right. You, you keep saying they go and fill it in, and, and your explanation sounds a lot like they're making up an angle. No, so they're not can making you just say, just say they're not making up an angle? I just said they're not making up an angle in the sense yeah. that they have a model they believe is true or close to accurate. So when they have to keep doing the survey. They weren't going to just stop doing the survey because they can't see a mountain. So they filled it in. They're like, okay, this is the part that we have to kind of use our own model. And then they kept going. That's what okay. the paper Send it to says. me and I'll read it myself. Okay. Then you send it to me. Yeah, I uh, will. You don't have the American art. You're telling me to cite it, I guess? Just the page number would be fine. Okay, okay. I'll have to find it later. Okay. Well, actually, Man, when are we, we debating we, on Jerry? Oh, I don't know, dude. So, oh, Rui, geez. you were going to sit up here and try and deceive me with that stuff? Yeah, that's what like, they do. I told you that. That's how, that's how more flat earthers get made. We it's ask for exclusive what? proof of the globe. You tell us some yeah. bullshit. We go look there's, into there's it. There's no such thing as proof. It turns out you're cap. And then okay. Question, like, question for Witsit. Question for Witsit. Do you think there could be up to 15 arc seconds of uh, lateral refraction? In these measurements, I already answered that I don't think that lateral, like uh, lateral okay. refraction, would cause major displacement. Thank you. You are they correct. One I side here is honest. You know, you guys should try it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're funny. I'm funny. Like, like Man. I stepped in and corrected the flat earthers. Right. I then detailed exactly the truth. Which is that they do account for lateral refraction, but that it, it they don't they don't say that it's a huge amount. They never they do not claim in the, in that paper that like if there was a spherical excess measurement of like you really degrees. like to hear so yourself talk is what it is. <sighs> hey, I got a question. Did Ruhip just say there's no proof of the globe? I I, I, I may have misheard that. You are one hundred percent correct. You cannot you keep prove an explanation about yeah. reality. Yes. Oh, okay. That's what's up. Yeah. Hey, can no, you no guys look trust. into the live stream chat real quick? I have a cool video that's 50 kilometers out. You can see a city. They zoom in on it, and you can't see it at all from the beginning. It's really good. We can prove its refraction by just assuming the sphere and measuring the difference and then claiming that rate, bro. Come on. 
Not so you can measure the right. Uh, yeah. So, so and this is what I asked you the other day. So, if we, you guys have an equation for refraction, right? Yes. So you're going to go with what Andrew Thomas Young? Oh, what's Andrew Thomas Young's equation? Oh, I, this is your claim, my guy. I'm asking you what equation you're going to use. Right, measurements of the density gradient, and then you apply those. If you want to do a, a glow prediction, you apply that to the radius. Now think about now. I want everyone to listen. This is what this is literally what they do. Okay, they they, they use like that balloons that measure the conditions of the atmos. They get a general yes. average. Okay, they get an average of what that is. Then they look at their quote unquote geodetic surveys, and they got an average of what those measurements are. They then merged those two data sheets together and said, okay, well, standard conditions from this average uh, of the balloon data, right, must cause average refraction of the globe looking like it's this much bigger. And that's how they got their equation. So they, yeah. so they just begged mm. the question that the Earth's a sphere and the fact that we see on average 15 to 20% more than we should means that there must be refraction. And since that's the consistent standard average, that means that the standard conditions must cause that amount. That is incorrect. I'll let you no, ramble for a minute, but that is incorrect. We measure the vertical density gradient. And then if we want to make a, a prediction for the globe, then we apply it to the radius, just like I said a minute ago. We don't look at an observation and go, oh, we see 15% further, therefore refraction. No, we measure the refraction. Okay, see, and this is how you know you're dishonest. And this is why actually debating oh, you on... Jesus, Witsit. Jesus, Witsit. You're a moderator here, Witsit. You're a moderator here, and you just can't stop calling people dishonest. You are being dishonest. You can't help yourself. Because I've, I've told you we measure the density gradient in the atmosphere. Is that dishonest? Oh. No, because I said that. What oh, you what was dishonest is how you tried to phrase it as if it was just direct empirical measurements and that it didn't have anything. No, no. Uh, I will debate you on Jaren's because you won't get to interrupt me. Okay, so we'll set <laughs> yes. it up and we'll have a pre -term. So this is what's so funny, right, is I just stated a fact. And as a glober, you should stick your chest out and be like, yeah, I know that we know the Earth's sphere, so this must be accurate. But you don't do that. You try to twist it like a wizard. So, like, absolutely what happened was they take the average measurement of atmospheric conditions we use balloons to get those so yes like the vertical vertical density gradient ruhif like the vertical temperature yes. gradient even humidity okay we take those values right and then we have an average of atmospheric conditions like what's the average vertical density gradient what's the average vertical temperature gradient we have a, we have a, we have a number we have a value of the average standard conditions oh, right is yeah. that correct okay Oh, we, sorry, also, oh. we also have geodetic surveying data where we make measurements in the distance, right? And then we have a, an average or a standard that we normally see in the distance when it comes to the rate of curvature. Right? I was in a hand at Ice King. We also make geodetic survey measurements where we take an average of what we see as a standard. We assume the average, yes? Okay. We assume so the, the average way, gradient. The way that we got standard refraction is we take the standard conditions, we take the standard mm -hmm. geodetic measurements, and we merge no. those together. It absolutely is what happened. No. They're vertical measurements. They have nothing to do with the globe shape at all. I right? didn't when say When we want to make a prediction... You said geodetic measurements. What are you talking about? Because that's how we know, quote unquote, what the standard refraction does in terms of bending the light in relation to our geodetic observations. That's not right. It is right. right. No, we can use, we can, we can establish any kind of gradient we want to and measure the effect independently of the surface of the Earth. Okay, where'd it's you guys do that? the reciprocal of the gradient. Where'd, no, wait, wait. Where's the lab okay. test that shows this rate of refraction based on those conditions? To measure the refractive index? Where's the right. lab test that shows the light bending at that rate based on those conditions? Yeah, that's, that's mathematics. That's Fermat's principle. But are you asking right, for then, how we measure the refractive index or what? 
No, no. Well, this is it's very simple. I'm trying, I'm trying to get to the conclusion here, which is we should be able to go out and make an observation where we send, say, we send a boat out across a lake, right? And it has a something making measurements on it. We could also send, like, say, four drones out. Say we do 10 miles, we send a drone out every two and a half miles. We send them up at the same time, we make measurements right? We make temperature measurements, we make uh, density measurements, and we make humidity measurements, et cetera, right? And live yep. time, that data is fed back to the computer on the shore, right? Before we pull something out to make an observation, we should then be able to take all that data, plug it into the equation, and know exactly how far we should see. And when I say exactly, yeah. I mean like very close. Then we should be able to look and observe and we should see that much of something obstructed we should only be able to see something that far in the distance and it should match the actual measurement right yeah okay and then if that was done and we see further than that or even much closer than that then that would refute your entire refraction claim right no oh it depends what see, the, the you guys are <laughs> here we go you're gonna call us liars again no no the other guy said no like, I mean, it's right, just like the reason, right. The reason why I say no is because uh, you didn't want me, you didn't want me to go over how we've determined how a gradient of index of refraction can be used uh, ahead of time. But like, if I induce a gradient, any gradient I want, and then I measure the effect uh, it has on light, and then I do that several other times with different gradients induced, and I measure the correlation between them. That means in the future, all I need to do is measure another gradient to determine what the light would have to do through that gradient, right? Well, then if that's the truth and it's that bulletproof, then I should be able to do the test I just said and it would match, right? Yeah, do, do you have the measurements of the conditions? I just yeah, talked about how, a how test where we're getting those. <laughs> and you said yeah, no. You're going to run into problems. The problem you'll run into is you're going to do this close to the surface, right? And your measuring equipment's going to be like, I don't know, three or four meters vertical apart. It's, it's right not on. going to be accurate enough. Right. You'll have right. a huge, three huge error Three or four meters bars. apart. See, now that I want the flyers just to take note here. So when I finished the question with, that would refute your claim of refraction, right? The other guy impulsively said no. And seemed to, Ruiz seemed to say yes, he understood it would. But now it's that you can't do the test. See, they, they're comfortable with the mathematical assumptions of this whole thing and claiming that it matches and then using yeah. it. Of course, And by the way, of course it matches because if you're going to use the standard conditions of the Atmos and then, the, and then the, uh, like what's assumed standard refraction, we got that from how much further we see on average on the Earth. No, we didn't. No, no. we didn't get it from there. <laughs> yes, we did. No, you no, can measure didn't. the atmosphere and that tells you how much light should change direction. Yeah. We measure the vertical gradient. We can tell how much it's going to bend. Okay, so then we should certainly be able to show that's the case in a lab setting, right? Right, which is what again, I referred I'm to. Asking. Yeah. yeah, yes, Doofus, yes. But again, they're going to ask, do you ref are you referring to measuring the refractive index? Oh, winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Measuring the refractive index, absolutely. Or are you talking about measuring the amount of curvature of light see that's what that's what we want to know we want to know if the light is right. curving and bending right based on that gradient and it's never right. been it's never been demonstrated yeah do this yeah yeah it's yeah, never been demonstrated. induce a gradient see how much it curves the end uh, okay so can someone send me where they did this in a lab well i mean i would have I to send know. you I'd have to go back in time where I tested it, but okay. I'm, I'm happy with Fermat's principle in mathematics. Right. And you find out when you do this kind of stuff that it very closely follows uh, the differential form of Snell's law, too. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I, it's a very simple thing, right? I'm trying to set up a test that would actually test your claim, and you guys are going to always find a way that we can't test it so it can remain unfalsifiable. I gave That's you a test. No, I just no. I gave the test, which is when the best way to test your claim that the light is bending a certain rate to make the the globe Earth look flat. Okay, is that we go out there, we measure the conditions, and then based on your claim, we should know what we should be able to see, and then we make the observation, and those things should match. 
Right. And are you measuring the conditions to the to the granularity required? As Rufif was about to mention, if you're going to be close to the surface and your measurements are a few feet apart, the problem is that close to the surface, the gradient is much, much steeper, typically. What? What do you mean a few meters apart? Who said anything about a few meters apart? I said a 10-mile observation. We could put multiple drones spaced throughout the 10 miles. Oh, you're not measuring a gradient. Separation. You're not measuring a gradient at all. Do you not know that drones go in the air, doofus? Did you not know that you could take yeah. the drone and move it in the air? Okay, so are how you far about to your like expose? Yeah, are you about to expose how poorly you understand refraction? What's the not vertical nice. separation? What's the Dude. vertical separation of your measurements? Hey, did you know Rumpus was going to do a similar thing with seven therm thermistors? I never heard you guys complaining to him. You remember that one, Ruiv? Seventh thermistor sounds excellent. What's the so what's wrong with what Woodson is telling you? Why are you giving Woodson a hard time? If because I they're just yeah, it's not testable. Because they know I'll actually go out and test it. I'll literally right, actually go that? out and prove that your little religion is just math and magic that you reverse engineered and reified. And you're trying to avoid the falsifiability. That's exactly what you're doing. Why would you not just immediately work with me on the test and be like, okay, this will prove the globe? That's bullshit, Witsit, What's because you've been trying to avoid gradient index optics for over two years. Both people have postured and, and tried to come at me personally when I'm saying, okay, it's very simple and, and anyone can understand, right? If you're claiming that the light is bending at a certain rate, right, that makes the globe look bigger than it really is then we should just be able to go out and test that equation and then be able to know what the observations are going to be to substantiate that that is, in fact, the case. Yes. You want to do it close to the surface. I want to do it at a decent height above the surface. Well, even okay, even at a decent, decent height above the surface, right, you guys still say there's standard refraction. Yes. That's right, where the standard much. refraction is. Yes. But the way that That's we're going to actually get... Dude, no, the reason you want to do it there is because it does it won't really change much, right? And you think that that means that you think that ensures accuracy, which is a non sequitur to what we're trying to do, which is see if the actual relationship between the conditions that you're invoking is accurate. So we want to be where it's going to change. So so yes, you're used to just repeating ad nauseum. We just need to go to a high mountain over 300 meters or 100 to 300 meters because it's less refraction. Yes. But what I'm saying No, 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 no. Not less refraction. Less variability, more stability, more predictable, predictable refraction. Yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, uh, less no. refraction, a lower rate of refraction. No. Yes. No. Not less refraction. Not oh, less. So there's refraction. not a greater. There's not a greater rate at the surface. It could be the opposite direction at the surface. It's all over the place. Okay, that's a very convenient oh. thing. So this is the point. Do the point it's is convenient very convenient for you? Is it? No, it's not it's convenient because for you. No, listen, we're not talking about just going and cherry picking observations at the surface where you guys claim there can be extreme refraction. We're talking about making the measurements of those conditions at the time and then seeing you want variability to test it. You're trying to avoid being able to test it. It's because you guys are, you know Here why go. you don't. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so I asked a minute ago, what is the vertical separation between your measurements? No, 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 no. And to address my point that the variability is what's going to allow you to test it. Meaning if I go there and I measure those conditions live time, if I see that the conditions are like wildly in one direction, I'm like, oh, man, we're going to see this. If they're in the other direction, I'm like, oh, we're going to see this. We're going to see much yeah. further. We're going to see much closer. You, should, that's, you want okay. the variability I'm, to test it. I'm trying right, to answer your, your question test, by asking you. What's the vertical separation? What do you think is a good vertical separation between your measurements? No, I don't know. A good vertical separation between the measurements. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. I thought you would just, you could just make the measurements the whole way up. Here, 10 feet. How about 10 feet, Ruhiv? Yeah. 10 feet. Three. Okay, you're going to make one. Interval. You're just yeah. trying you're to make one measurement at zero. Right? You guys no, are just I'm, trying, I'm trying to, trying to bust out the cranes for Witsit. Right? I said you could make Let's the measurements make one the whole way up. What do you mean the whole way up? How many you measurements have, are you making? Why can't the drone just take the data the whole way up, run it through an algorithm, and give you the gradient? You take three measurements at 10 foot intervals up to okay. 20 feet or something. Or okay. you could so have over, over 10 measuring feet. it the whole way up. Right. Over 10 feet. Right. What's the, the resolution on your, say, your uh, thermometer? Let's say it's cool. 0.1 of a degree. 
whatever, dude. I don't know why you're just okay. – both, you, both of you are religiously walking past my point, which is that you can ignore, <laughs> you can record the data the whole way up. He's trying to explain right. the actual recording process. Yeah. Give him a, give him a yeah. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. say – Oh, let's, let's say you, the whole way up, and you said no. no he was going to. Yeah. Let, let's say feet. you take, let's say you take the temperature every ten feet, and the resolution of your um, thermometer is point one of a degree. What are your error bars on a per kilometer basis? Are you That's kidding, man? Enormous, right? Are you kidding or what? What, what, what are you trying to do, just, Ruhil? It's a tactic. It's right? That's, That's how we express the gradient. It's just a tactic, right? Because I, 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 I haven't invoked any specific equipment, like how it's going to be measured, right? Obviously, the, the actual intellectual, the honest thing to do would be like, okay, here we can work together. And this, is the best way, this is the best way to do the test, right? This is the best way to do the test. These instruments are more sensitive or this works better. That's cool. But you're not even addressing the premise of the test. You guys are avoiding it, trying to act like it's impossible to do it. No, 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 you said measure, you measure the gradient. You, you said measure the gradient all the way up. The thing is, you need to have set points at which you make recordings. You got to write the numbers down. You can't just measure continuously. So, <laughs> yes, you know, you, you set points, you set points at which you record measurements. You've got to know the, uh, the, the accuracy and the precision of your equipment and all that stuff. And then how much variation and would that variation fall within the error? You know. Uh, oh, hey, wouldn't it be more accurate if you were measuring the data the whole way up continuously? No, you can't making... measure it continuously. Why not? You can't do it. Yes, you What's can. Your because data you, look can like? you can literally put a device on the drone or whatever is going up in altitude. It could be lifetime feeding the data to the computer on the shore, which is run through an algorithm compiling it as a gradient. You absolutely can do something like that. And if if no, if you like can. That. You can say, no, oh, I don't think you can do that. But why wouldn't everyone in the room not immediately admit, of course, that would be a more accurate measurement. You guys are just looking for a way to say it's impossible because you want the test to be impossible because you like the current state of things where you can just say the word, say the R word over and over, and the earth remains a globe. Monologue. You don't want it to be tested. Right. I have about two feet away from me these pressure and temperature sensors. Right? They're not continuous sensors. They give you discrete measurements at intervals. Oh, so would there be a problem to set it for 10, 10 feet intervals and it pauses go, and it goes oh. 10 feet, remains level, pauses for 30 seconds or a minute and goes 10 feet, takes a measurement? Yep. So then 10 <laughs> feet. Again, right. Right. Your, Rui, it sounds sorry, like your sensors aren't very accurate then. Yeah, wait. Well, I'm asking you why, why, why are you just going to clarify? You guys are claiming it's impossible to put a device on the drone that is constantly measuring the variables of temperature, pressure, and humidity and feeding the data live time in relation to its increase in altitude. Which you could predetermine all of this. I don't know if you guys have ever used a drone. You can set up its flight beforehand. You could coordinate all four mm. or five of the drones together. They're all going to slowly move up together in unison. You can, ha you can actually have an exact distance that they're separated. You can do all of this with drone software. So you can have the drones separated by, say, two and a half miles each. They're all hovering at the same height above the water, right? And then they're all going to start to go up at the same time. And they're just, they're, whatever the sensors are, they're just measuring those variables at the same time. They'll be at the same altitude across the whole 10 miles, right? And then they're, you're going to feed the data live to the computer where it's going to give you the, the, the temperature and other variables in relation to altitude. That's going to give you a specific gradient. You can then compare the four drones to see what it is through the whole visual corridor, right? And then you should be able to plug this into an equation and say, okay, well, based on my observer height of this far, based on the fact that there's a mountain at this distance and this distance and this distance, we should see this much of the mountain blocked. We should be able to see this lighthouse or not see it or whatever. Then you pull your, your optics out and you see if that's true. That's how you would test it. All right. So how do you account for the fact that there will be an error induced because the, uh, it takes time for the temperature at any given height to register? So if you're constantly moving up, you're constantly going to be uh, you know, moving before the, the thermometer has had a chance to come to a reading. Okay. So is that what you guys are saying? That the temperature can't be read? No, no, no. 
That's just, I'm, it's just like wondering, I'm just wondering how you do it, how you correct for well, the What excuse can we come up with while the test is impossible so we can keep on pretending there's a vote? I'm I'm saying that it's not possible to get a continuous reading. These things are digital. They give you discrete measurements. Okay. So given that you have discrete measurements, you are going to have to interpolate a gradient between two measurements. Do you agree? Well, that, yeah, that's what you're saying is, is if, well, I'm asking what if it could be fed live? It's, live's fine. They're still discrete measurements. Uh, okay. I don't so, know if it could yes. read it, if it could detect it, it could detect it twice. And if it could detect it twice, it could do it three times. And it can do it continuously. Yeah. Hold on. You went wrong with it. What? I was Rufus, wrong. Rufus, Rufus, trying to help me here. I'm not yes. wrong about the roof saying he has a specific thing that he's using that has to just sit there to read the data. Like that, that's a cool claim because what's going to happen, this is what's realistically going to happen is if we actually spend all the money to go out and do the test, as soon as it doesn't match the globe, you're going to get nothing but endless bullshit excuses. Oh, uh, but by, the, the possibility. By, by the time that knows it's, it's not a pill to possibility. Stop trying to use fallacies. You don't understand. <laughs> so, bro. Dude, Jesus. So the point is very simple, right? Like, I'm trying to avoid that. I'm trying to avoid the, oh, there's excuses. For example, well, by the time you get the, the data back and you take the drone back and then you get the data and you, but then the visual cords are probably changed. It probably changed before you could make your observation. Right? Like, there's no, always going to be an excuse. So I'm trying to avoid right. it. Well, that's what, that's what you do for if, every, if you every experiment this. that proves the globe. I mean, you know, what? No, but you never proved the globe. Well, proved the wrong word, but ev all evidence of the globe is is hand waved away. I mean, Jesse did exactly what you know what you're recommending people do: go out and test it themselves. You didn't like his result. I've gone out and tested it myself. I've also what? measured I've the Earth at 11 miles with a laser, and I got one centimeter lower at halfway across and 11 miles across. So, like, you like, what are you talking about, bro? Yeah, and then you can use different color lasers, and then you can use an infrared laser, and you can see that it does. It isn't. It isn't blocked sooner. Everything well, that we do. Well, the blocked. laser. The laser should have been fifty-one feet above my head. Why don't what you I'm, explain that? What I'm talking about <laughs> is important. actually going out, uh, you know, and taking the taking the measurements, showing what you did. That this is the stuff that that Jesse did, and that every other scientist has done. Not just I went out there, I, you know, I, I put two uh, cement orbs in my garage. Oh, and you're, just wasting our time. you're just wasting no, our time. No, when somebody does it and they don't get a result you like, you know, you, you spin up every conceivable uh, objection. Like theodolites can't be used at 70 miles range, which is, you know, which is bullshit. And you know, it's all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Shut up, man. You know, you're just going to jump in and start talking about Jesse and a separate observation and gaslighting as a ref, as a somehow a response to the fact that you guys are you, you're admitting that you're just trying to come up with any conceivable objection to the test in advance. You just no. admitted it. And you stop interrupting me. You just admitted it. But then you said, but you guys do the same thing. OK, anything which we're not objecting. We're just talking That's about just the procedure, the, the procedure and how, how it would work. And I mean. We're just no, talking wait, about did, recording some data. Did he or did he not say you guys do the same thing, which is come up with every conceivable no. objection you can? Okay, do you want to no. bet five thousand dollars? You said it. Five thousand. Sure, sure. You. No, I'm not going <laughs> to bet wait, you any wait. money. But I didn't say we. No, do no, no. The so same you want to bet five thousand dollars that you said you do the same thing? I'm not betting with you. Which I I, oh, I, I'd oh. have to have. I'd have to have Ooh. any kind of. Uh, uh, any any kind of idea that you would you would be good for it? So no. See, good excuse. I, no, see, I, I only offer bets I know I can't lose because I don't have five thousand dollars to just give you. I would have to come up with it, but I know <laughs> I can't lose it because I know for a fact that you said that. Yeah, I got it in my hand right now. Yeah. Let's let's go back. Money. Let's go back. I'm talking about measuring the gradient so we could you know predict yeah, the exactly. refractive. Yeah, let's go back to the conversation. We're talking about what this dude thinks about Jesse. So, well, it was an awesome projection there. <laughs> I, I was just like listening and being like, "Oh my god, that that's like the clearest case of projection." Are you done yet? You, you, I could. Just, I, could just, I, I need. I need that for the next Super Bowl, my guy. That's and what's up, my on guy. On a, you're derailing board. the conversation. Anyway, which you know. how will you calculate the gradient? 
Well, I, I'm like, sitting here in trying detail. to cooperate. Yeah, are you are you suggesting that there's a certain way to do it? Because I'm all ears, my guy. Yeah. Yes. Take two measurements, at however far apart. The problem is that if you are close to the surface, right, and let's say there's only 10 feet in between your two measurements, the accuracy of your instruments is going to give you an enormous error bar for your gradient. That's the problem. That's why you need to get above the surface where the gradient is stable and predictable. Okay, so the Globers are saying that their refraction claim is not falsifiable until you get up higher of over 300 meters. Yes. Right. right. Um, so you have an unfalsifiable yeah, religion. You have an unfalsifiable yeah, close, religion. I would go out this close week. Close to the to surface. Yeah, yeah, I would close go out to this the surface, correct. yes. Incorrect. Close to the surface. It's I'm not, quite happy to move that slider wherever it has to no, be. No, it's not falsifiable. So right. what Rob Boston yes. did oh is guys. no good. Ruhit, what Rob Boston did and no, 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 guys. was going to do that, that's you no good. Listen. You guys are religious, dude, because it's but really listen, simple. But listen. Listen, listen. You, you think question. of the Skunk Bay observation. Yeah, no, what, think of the Skunk Bay observation. What do you think that, that measures like, the way it's wiggling around? And I mean, yeah. you wouldn't be able to, to, to guess that. But but Leslie, that's my point. Leslie, Leslie, listen to the point. The variability is what makes it falsifiable. Meaning if there's no. if, uh, if refraction <laughs> is causing a certain effect, right, as it changes, you should see a direct relationship between the claimed conditions causing the claimed rate of refraction. You want to be where it changes so you can actually test it. The variability makes it difficult to measure. The stability and predictability means that you probably don't even have to measure it. Dude, so it, 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 it's Let crazy that you guys that, are not man. understanding. You're double speaking, bro. Let them answer. What, what Roe Bossom did then, that was no good because he was on the what? surface of water. That Roe Bossom's measurements are no good according to you guys now? He would have been subject to possible extremes of refraction. <laughs> oh, possible, but when wow. it matches the globe, it wasn't there. Yeah. And, and dude, this is what's so crazy, right? It's like I said, I, the the I, said the, I said the truth, right? Which is that the way that this standard refraction equation was done was it looked at the average of geodetic measurement. That's a fact. No. <laughs> no, okay, okay, you can say no, but it's a fact. Now, if we want to disagree, then let's find a way to actually test it. Which means just going to where it doesn't change much isn't going to do that. So what would do it is going to where it does change, making precise measurements and watching that as the conditions change and we plug into the equation, the prediction for what we should see will also change. Therefore, what we actually see should change in accordance with the prediction. Or you could just go somewhere where it's predictable and just do one measurement. That's it. You see what I'm saying? They always just want to avoid the actual test that can falsify it. They all frantically come up with religious reasons why right. you can't falsify close, it. Close, close to the surface. Close to the surface. Yes, it is unfalsifiable. You can swing the slider to wherever you want. Get above the surface. Huh. Hold me to standard refraction. But no, Constrain no. Constrain me to standard refraction. But you're wrong. It is falsifiable at the surface. You can't move the slider wherever you want because we're actually going to be measuring the conditions. Your claim is yeah, that you can't. Accurately. Your claim oh. is that you can't accurately measure the conditions. Yes. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, close to the surface can change direction within the span of a few inches. That's the problem. Oh. Oh. So, so we would have to put a drone every couple inches to test your claim. You, uh, it, it's, it's like difficult. We're, we're <laughs> trying to explain it to you. You don't seem to be understanding. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. It's, it's unfalsifiable. When earlier I gave an example of how you could actually set up your own experiment, make your own gradients, and test what that does to the light. I mentioned that before, and that's definitely falsifiable. Okay, so I can I can set up in a lab oh. fourteen point seven psi, and then and then create a gradient that matches the Earth. Then I can send a light through it, and it's going to match the 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 rate that you claim. You're going to set up any gradient you want to measure any effect you want. If you set up a, a steeper gradient, you'll get a steeper effect. That way, you can measure the proportionality more accurately. 
So then, therefore, it stands to reason I should be able to imitate the actual pressures of the atmosphere and send a laser through it, and it should bend at the same rate that you claim. Do you have a lab that's 10 miles long where you can control the gradient? Well, why does that have to be 10 miles long? Why can't I just observe the rate of curvature on a smaller segment? Supposedly, it's the same the whole way through. Is it? What's it? Wait, wait, this is the other funny part. This is the other funny part. Whenever we see things too far on the distance, in the distance on the ground, right? What they do is they just do move the slider, get a rate of refraction, and claim it's, it's curving at that same rate the whole way from the, uh, the object to us. But when we yeah, say we're going to go out to the and surface, test, yes. Dude, close listen, to the surface, yes, we can do that. Try to use your brain and listen to what I'm saying. So whenever we see an object too far away on the surface, you guys just move the slider around, get the rate, and say, okay, the light bent from that same rate from the object all the way to the observer. When I say I'm going to go out and test it, you guys say, there's no way you can actually know what the rate's going to be because it can change every couple right. inches. Yeah, get above the surface. Yeah. <laughs> it's predictable and stable. Dude, right. so How many times have to say this? No, it's so goofy. Like you, you don't realize that you're just blatantly double speaking. You have such an egregious oh, double standard. And then here, here's a, here, so obviously you guys are not going to cooperate. I, the only problem with doing the test is like I, you've already admitted that what you all will religiously say is this doesn't match my preconceived notion of what the Earth is. Therefore, I'm just going to handily dismiss it and claim there's no way that you could have physically measured the uh, variables correctly because it's a religion. So then here's then another test because because I'm not doing the test the way you want to do it. I'm doing the test that I know would actually falsify. I'm not spending all that money and time to do something that I don't think will falsify it. We have a disagreement on how the actual relationship was established. Until you can verify it, then we'll go from there. But this is what I actually want then. Say we take two different types of lasers, right? One is like blue. One is uh, red, near infrared. Okay. We set them at the same height. We move them away in the distance. They're at the same height. They're moving the right beside each other, right? If, and if we get beyond where the, the curvature of the earth would allow us to see the lasers, but we still see them, you're going to claim that it's refracting. So then don't you agree that the infrared, the near infrared laser would be blocked first because oh, it's, 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 it's less effective. Negligible, completely. Oh, negligible. I'll mention something that brings it closer to reality. The sun, no, the yeah. sun, given how far away it is or whatever you want to say about it, the amount of, because uh, you, you're talking about chromatic aberration, the amount of chromatic aberration on the sun which is clearly farther than anything on the surface of the Earth, is only a couple of arc seconds. Or a few arc seconds. It's a handful of arc seconds. So I don't know how you're going to test lasers on the surface of the Earth for something that's even yeah. smaller. It's what? nothing. I just posted the, uh, posted the calculations in the chat. The calculations from where? Because I've, I have calculations from a lab, an actual experiment, showing that infrared due to the length, the wavelength, can be up to 20% less affected by refraction. 20%? 20%. Yeah, yes, it was like 17% in their lab test, which is so funny because I think if it's like 17%, then obviously the infrared laser would disappear first if actually both the lasers are behind the curve of the Earth being refracted over it, right? What are the two yeah, ways of post the calculations? The gradient difference is fuck all. It's not about the gradient. See, this is what I'm saying. You guys, everyone can yes, hear it. Is. Every specific, no, it's about the length, the wavelength of light and how much it's affected by that gradient difference. What wavelengths did they test? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I have a paper upstairs. In the chat. Oh, no, you, you, you obviously don't have a paper talking about what we're talking about because you just said something irrelevant. So th this is what's so weird is like there's a second test that uh, obviously using logic, it would test the claim. If there are two lasers and they're supposed to be behind the curve of the Earth, so the globe model requires claiming, well, they are obstructed by Earth curvature, but they're refracted over it, then obviously one of the lasers will be less affected by refraction. So then it would disappear first, right? Right. Yeah. As from from you only get a handful of arc seconds. So I don't know how you're going to test something on the surface of the Earth with an effect that's even smaller. I just explained wow. that they did it in a lab. Okay, so, they, so they're going to also just try to... Make, figure without posting anything. I just put, okay, I said I'll do it in a second, dude. I'm on my phone. Dude, now, here's on, my, let, let, let the record reflect that they've 
found a way to hand wave dismiss both of the tests that would definitively test their claim and makes it falsifiable, right? Uh, okay. you can, actually. No, no, you hand wave dismiss both of them. Now, wave, so, so just to clarify, we, we, we can't see further uh, with normal optics as, a, as compared to infrared. If you're going to bring in haze as a conflating variable, that's not going to work, with it. That's not what I said. Yeah. That's not what I said. That that that's the opposite of what we're talking about. Of seeing further in infrared is because you're cutting through the haze. That isn't right. what we're talking about. We're talking about how you shouldn't see as far in infrared. Okay, but for a fraction, I agree. Yes. No, that's what we're talking about. So, so I understand it cuts through haze. I understand it cuts through haze, doofus. Thanks for your your, your script. Right. Yay. The difference is negligible. See the yeah, I've only I've only heard that about probably two hundred and fifty different times from seven eight hundred different people in the last two years. Yeah, I'm sure that makes it wrong. Mm. Like this is what's yes. so funny, right? It's like well, it's like, when it matches up like word for word, and the, even the tone is the same. I mean, you know, well, how many different you might, you might as well have Professor Dave just talking instead. Like, why not just have him talk? And wait, if your equations are so good, then how about you show us the math? of the wavelengths within your equations that so actually match uh, reality. Show us the difference in wavelength in, say, like an ultraviolet laser and an infrared laser. Show us the difference in wavelength and plug in your equation and show me that it's negligible. Yeah. I did. It's in the chat. <laughs> Fuck. It's, 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 what the it's, chat it's, thing is. Hey, Rumpus, left lane, how many times did you ask, uh, did you ask Rumpus? Uh, how many times did you tell him that his thing is going to be wrong? Three years now, right? He was doing it on the surface. I didn't hear one of you guys complain to him. Well, how come? He had a very tall pole. Oh, a very tall pole. Seriously. Like, I mean, it, I mean, you guys are just, you know, you just know, wasting time. Getting yeah. off of the surface. No, okay, so you guys just got a drone. Like, you what are you you dismissed the first test because there was too many measurements and the second one because there's haze? Yeah, they're just looking for any excuse. No, the answer is that the first one is unreliable, so no matter what we see, the globe is still true. And the second answer is that, infra that the difference in infrared is negligible. So if we do see that the infrared laser can be seen from longer away, the exact opposite, that somehow it wouldn't matter. This is, this is how I, I trapped you guys, though. Okay, And oh, this is what you have to come up this is what you have to do with these people. You have to trap them, okay? So, yeah, you're saying that it's negligible, right? That's a cool story, okay? It's negligible. So, but it is still different. You're just saying that the difference isn't enough. So then, technically speaking, the, the infrared laser has to be less affected by refraction than the ultraviolet laser, objectively. So you're just saying it would be negligible. You wouldn't be able to tell. Okay, so then yeah. you would agree, then, that if the if the ultraviolet laser disappeared first, it would refute your claim of refraction. I don't know how. Answer the yeah. question. Maybe, wow. maybe, wow. maybe maybe show me the actual <laughs> observation first. No, 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 no. Answer the question. If the infrared I'm not laser answering is, hypothetical. Dude, look, and here's the deal. It's very simple, right? If you have a yeah. laser that what do you mean you're not answering hypothetical? We're talking about setting up a test. If I set up a test and it has an ultraviolet laser and it has an infrared laser or a near infrared laser, okay, the infra the near infrared laser has a longer wavelength. That means it's less affected by refraction. Let's say we both we put them both like two three feet above the ground, okay, and then we pull them back exactly together, okay. If in the distance we can see them beyond where the curvature of the Earth predicts, right? So it says that we we go however many miles back, the laser should be completely below the curve of the earth, even with beam divergence, okay? And then we say, okay, well, obviously on the globe, that means that these lasers are being bent around the curve of the earth or being refracted. Then the laser that's less affected by refraction, the near-infrared laser, right, should be blocked first. You say, oh, it would be negligible, which means, which means what you're claiming is they would disappear at the exact same time. Okay, so then if we see that the, the ultraviolet laser disappears First, meaning you can't see that one, but you can see the infrared one, then that would debunk the claim that the lasers are being refracted and bent around the globe. Well, there's one small... If every, if every aspect of your experiment is perfect, then yes. 
Yeah, if you're doing this test for water, yeah, if you're doing this test for water, right? Uh, infrared and ultraviolet have different properties with, when reflecting off of water. <laughs> oh, yeah. dude, they came up with something else. So, wow. like, for, first it was negligible, and it wouldn't matter. They were both going to disappear at the same time. Then you're like, okay, well, then the logical conclusion to that is if they don't disappear at the same time, but the, the near-infrared is seen longer, then that would refute it. No, they have different properties reflecting off of water. Now, all of a sudden, the difference isn't negligible. Well, as soon as you introduce another variable, yeah. Yo, you know what you're doing, dude. And and that shows me this is why I told everyone, look, when it comes to people like this. Just being dishonest, bro. This is why I told everyone, like when I talk to people like this, I'm I only gonna start the conversation off with motion of the earth. Because like Come on. Like, like, why would I have a conversation about like like a good faith conversation about the surface curvy and how to test it if someone can't be honest about the motion? And what all you're doing is like, no, we're comfortable with what we currently believe. And we don't want that to, to be changed. So we're going dis to dis disregard any possible test that could falsify it. We're going to keep our I've position. I've told you the test, Richard. I've told you the test. Get above the surface. No, everyone knows that when you get above the surface, when you get above the surface, right, and you, and you can see further that you're looking through way more atmos and that the, that is typically around the same. And so, like, then you guys just claim it matches the globe, even though it doesn't, right? You can just say, oh, well, it doesn't match the globe because here there is also standard refraction, right? And so I don't care what you're talking about with how you want to go do the test that you know what the results are. I'm talking about doing a test yeah. that would actually definitively falsify it. And, and oh, wait, just to, just to clarify, hey, Ruif, do you agree with Doofus's yes. response to the laser test? What was the response? <laughs> that, that that infrared reflects off water differently. Did you want to know why, or do you want to keep asking other questions? Well, no, I want to know if Rui agrees. Well, yeah, Rui no said idea. that it, it, he would agree. I um, literally just said I have no idea. <laughs> you said you would agree that test would be decisive, though. What? Oh, Powerful. sorry. If every other aspect of his experiment was perfect, then yes. Right, and the, the, reality is not perfect. the water is because, as we all know, there was a few experiments with uh, D. Marble and F. E. Cor and all those other people, where done over a uh, body of water, they angled a light downward to get an up in the uh, where the laser was going. What does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything? Whenever they accidentally <laughs> angled it down, that which, that's why. When they accidentally angled it down, it reflected way up in the air. It looked like the laser was going way up in the sky, like it was being bent up, right? When it, when it reflected off the water. Over again, which means they were looking at a reflection. Uh, okay, so then if we ensure that they're level, how then that can they do that? There you go. There's no way to ensure things are level now. <laughs> so, like, and, and dude, think about the, how, how many random <laughs> excuses. Dude, 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 anyone with a brain can tell you guys are just religiously trying to constantly come up with an, a way to avoid it being falsifiable. Incorrect. Very because like, there's like, the lab having like to me. test the thing that we're talking about, and you refused to talk about it. No, that's not true. I said that we would make sure that it's level, even if it reflected, if it was tilted down and reflected off of water. Hey, Charlie, hey, 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 you sound like the Charlie Brown adults, man. Hey, listen, man. When you interrupt, it sounds yeah. like the Charlie Brown adults. Yeah, it's no one bad. Can, no one yeah, your mic's you. fucked up. Yeah. Right. So what did I say? I said lab setting, right? I didn't say go out and do it 10 miles away. No, I said lab setting. What? What does a lab setting have to do with what I'm talking about? We, we've already done in a lab setting, and we know that the longer wavelength of infrared is less affected by refraction. I have a test that says the number 17%. Which you haven't posted yet. You're right, because I'm on my phone. It's on my computer. I'm 17. doing stuff. I don't know if that's actually the thing that they're claiming. Which especially is why we set that aside. Which is, why we, required. which is why we set it aside. And we went with your guys' claim that it's damn near negligible. Okay, cool. Doesn't matter. It is still different, though. You're just saying that the difference isn't that much. You, of course, can't deny that there's a difference because it has a longer wavelength. 
So then it's, of course, affected by refraction less. So then if it is damn near negligible, but it still exists, that would mean that in the scenario that the ultraviolet laser disappeared first, it would prove the claim that it's refracted around the globe incorrect. You're now saying, no, the lasers could be reflecting off the water and the infrared would reflect off the water differently, which is completely non sequitur and irrelevant because it would reflect and go up in the air. And we can level the lasers. Right. And well, you won't level the lasers to sub arc minute accurately because I know none of you guys have the ability to level them to that level of precision. So, so wait, explain to me how it's going to. So, uh, the, let's say the laser is tilted down a little bit, it's going to reflect off the water. And then what's going to happen? Then the light will continue to bend downward due to standard refraction being looming in the common case. So you're basically saying that you'll extend how far you can see it because the laser will come down and hit the water, <laughs> hit the water, yeah, and then that'll basically create. Slash arcane, <laughs> tested this. Slash arcane tested this very idea, and he came out with positive results. Oh my god! Anyway, just so everyone knows what he said. That if you you're going to try to shoot the laser, but it's actually going to be tilted down 100 percent because Doofus knows that no flat earther is competent enough to level the laser. And then it it's going to be reflected down. It's going to be tilted down, and then it's going to reflect off the water. And that location that it reflects off the water will basically serve as a new source of light, as if the laser was actually there. And then it's going to bend from there. But the way that the infrared and the, the way that the infrared and the ultraviolet reflect off the water is different. So therefore, it would make sense that we see the infrared further, even though it's less affected by refraction. Right, and as I mentioned, the <laughs> as I mentioned the the uh, the reflective That's properties wild. and Sly Sparkane's practical test of the actual thing I'm talking about shows that this could happen. Okay, can you show what? what why does the infrared reflect off the water differently? Why not? You know that if you have an IR sensor, that if you're you know out in the uh, out there in reality. And you point it at a pane of glass, for example, that's a completely reflective surface to IR. It's not transparent at all. Okay, but water is reflective to both. How much? Uh, can I interrupt real quick? Can I have the flat earther role and also anything but atheist role? I feel like I'm about to catch a disease. Go ahead, continue. Uh, yeah. You can change that oh. yourself. Yeah, you can change okay. that. Bad, thank you. Yeah, and we're kind of getting off the topic that I was trying to discuss a long time ago, which was the practical example that I post posted in the chat of the sun, where we can observe that red is higher than blue light from the sun. Oh, then you should agree then. So then you should agree then that if we see the infrared laser longer, it would refute the claim that both lasers are being refracted and bent around the globe by refraction. I actually said it backwards, just for fun. The red light is at the bottom and the blue light is at the top. Do you realize? Do you guys realize that all all the stuff, right, that we've been talking about for all these years, it's all been from the ground, and Robotham's measurements has been from the ground. Now, do you realize? But you guys saying to climb up a mountain, you just lost the argument, right? It, it's it's over. There's no nothing to be said. You're, you're trying to change the scenario. You're trying to go up a mountain. I mean, what are you... I mean, you, it's over. You if might as well just okay. say no, and you win. Right, if you're Thanks, curious, we're what the most variability is. I mean, yeah, I just like, this needs to be clipped out, though. This needs to be clipped up, right? Because it's a perfect oh, example yeah. that... It's a perfect example of how, like, all the Globers in the room immediately started, like... Yeah, hey, right, hey, hey. Dude, stop talking through the middle of me, man. You right, we don't need your mic. Bro. Sounds, your mic sounds yeah, terrible. Like shit, bro. And no one cares what you think we need. This isn't your server. Right, you but we don't. This place. We're all here. We're every one of us heard. Hey, just let just, me know. It, no, you're interrupting, and it's just making noise. It's just like it's just. We don't want to hear nothing from your mic. Like literally, have you ever seen Charlie Brown when the adults talk? It literally sounds like that. I guess that yeah, means so the address adult. my point, guys. Calmly, logically, address my point. Why, in all the history of all the stuff we've been talking, Robotham, 
It's always been on the surface. And why now? Because maybe you guys figured out that we can do it and prove you wrong. Now you want to go up high mountain climbing? Address that issue. Why? What was my response? Anything, I just responded to it. We couldn't hear you, bro, because five people talked at the same time. Go ahead. Respond. Okay. Several times in this discussion, it's been mentioned that we need to get away from the surface where there's the most variability of something that's more less variable. Bro, yeah, I, you're I, gonna I, have I, to fix your mic, dude. Look, listen, listen. You have to fix your mic. I don't know if it's not all the way plugged in, if there's a short in your cord, if the mic is on your chair, your shirt, or something. But it Kevin, sounds insane. Kevin's dude. hot mic. And yeah, it's, Kevin, it's, 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 it sounds it's, like drool, like the drool on the mic. Kevin, Samuel, you're hot micing, dude. I moved him. I moved him. Thanks. Maybe yeah, it's only when he's like, when I'm he's trying to talk when other people are talking is it, that it does that. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you right. agree that, that when he interrupts someone else, it sounds terrible. Right. Who was I interrupting when I was trying to answer SE? Well, Doofus, it, it, the proof that you've been interrupting people is that it's been sounding terrible for the last 10 minutes. Okay. Who have I been interrupting when I tried to answer SE? Answer the question. Oh, well, the Everybody. last one. The last one, I don't know, though. I know you interrupted me right before that when I started to recap what has happened, and you you think that you somehow have juice over me and got to tell me what I can or cannot talk about in here and talked right through the middle of me and then ear raped the entire room for the 30th time. That's what I do know. Okay, so how about I respond to SE again? Uh, SE, over the uh, past <clears throat> hour or two, it's been mentioned several times that we want to get out of the area with the most variability. Right? I understand that, Ruhi. No, we I want mean, to measure uh, the area. Uh, no, sorry. I, I understand that, bro. But the, the issue, that's not the issue. Uh, the issue is when we look at these things, we're always on the ground. Everything has been done on the ground. Even the Greeks with the boat, it's all been done on the ground. So it would stand to reason, logic, that, of course, we're going to do the, the, the measurements on the ground like everybody else did. Now, you guys, maybe you see a fault here, and now all of a sudden you want to go above the Atmos. Most of it. I mean, that's disingenuous, bro. That's not most of it either. It is actually a good point, right? Which is that all of these Globers that are saying that, they will all defend all the other Glober talking points about how they proved the Earth was a globe without a telescope on the surface of the Earth. The looking at a yeah. boat, how they, Looking at a boat over the water and how they used to have all these arguments. The answer to Essie's question, this is the actual answer is the globe proponents have the advantage and benefit of being able to completely change and update their arguments as they go over the years. That's the answer. Um, yeah, this is a tough sure. one because they're, they're, they're going away from the place that all the measurements have been done before. I mean, that's totally disingenuous. I'm sorry, guys, man, but uh, there's no other way to say it. More politely. Well, that's not what's it just mentioned, 1900s, the example that was in the 1900s. That was definitely not close to the surface. I'm sure they've done some that were not, but the majority of them, right? Where did this come from? It came from the Greeks when they saw a boat disappearing over over the horizon, right? That's where all this started from. Well, watch On this. The <laughs> observation. Wait, here's how you elucidate the double standard, okay? So then you guys agree that every observation that the globe Earth proponents have invoked near the surface can be dismissed when they claimed it was it was evidence for the globe. If you can explain bottom-up obstruction, no. uh, uh, please explain uh, bottom-up obstruction. See, so they Bottle get up. to, listen, listen, they get to use observations from yes. close to the water. Yes. And flat earthers can't use observations from Correct. close to the water. Wow. Correct. Correct, correct Witson. Correct. Hundred <laughs> percent correct. Yeah, that should be clipped right. right there. Level wow. level the playing field. Level the playing field where we don't get to move that fucking slider wherever we want to by getting above the fucking surface, Witson. No, 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 no. Stop changing the subject. We're not talking about that you can move the slider to claim that observations work on the globe. I'm talking about the globe earthers for years who have brought forth Images such as Earth is life, such as uh, what, what's to do with the bridge? Bee ball. Soundly, b ball, right? Okay, the, the all these pictures done on the beach saying this proves the Earth's a ball. Look, it's right where the globe predicts it should be, right? right. When you guys, so you guys, when you guys can explain, wait, wait, wait. 
Yeah, two months, two months. So you guys yeah. get to claim that that is evidence of a globe, but when we go make observations on the beach and see way too far, that can't be used as evidence. Correct. Do you know why? Like this picture. So I know like that you're because you guys don't. You guys don't have an explanation for bottom-up obstruction. But that isn't true. What? See, it's perspective well, is the explanation for that. Angular size of your eyeball is that what? What kind of... Uh, all, yeah. the, you, all the Globers have is fallacious reasoning. That's all you have. That's it. That's it. Show me the, show me the geometry of bottom-up obstruction. Uh, it's a fact that a globe, flat earthers have many explanations for things disappearing bottom up, and we've actually even replicated it on a small scale in a warehouse. And guess what you guys said, because you're so religious, that the warehouse, me, is act, the, the, warehouse the surface of the warehouse is actually curving, and that's why the objects disappear from the wow. bottom up. When actually what happened was you could see the bottom of the objects, then they opened the door to introduce different atmospheric conditions, yep. right? And then the bottom of the thing disappeared first. Yep. But no, no, it's actually because the, the, the floor of the warehouse is curving. You didn't know? Right, and I pointed out. Mirage, why, why don't you talk about the fact we shouldn't see mountains and entire buildings and almost to the point where you could see streetlights miles and miles away? Like, why don't you talk about the fact that that shouldn't happen in the first place? If you want to bring up a specific well, Yeah, we, we don't see that. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to bring up okay. a specific example, we can definitely go over that. But what I'm trying to get yes. to is that warehouse example or garage that I have mentioned several times. I'm not talking about the surface being curved. I've never said that. What I've said is that the surface is warm and the air is cool above it, which causes an inverted gradient. And yes. when I go through that footage, I find a mirage is happening there, too. Okay. So first of all, that was a that was a indirect way of admitting that you absolutely can get bottom up obstruction on a flat Earth, but by moving the then moving the goalpost then moving the goalpost to say that they don't think that that would happen or not happen often. Okay, that's what's going on. Now we do know in reality that over bodies of water, you get this this like reflection effect. We get a little reflection right. effect. Right. Can, can yeah. you see my meme in the chat with it? Wait up, chill, chill out. We also know that the horizon is just optical. It's just in a convergence point in the distance, right? And so when things go beyond that, well, the convergence point is where you lose resolvability. So as the boat goes beyond that, the the propagation reception angles from the bottom of the boat are going to be smaller than from the top of the boat. So they fall into that vanishing point first. So the fact that you guys are still saying in 2024 that it is impossible for things to look like they disappear bottom up on a flat earth goes to show there is no reason to even talk to you people about this. And you should just immediately say, hey, prove the earth's moving around the sun and just slam dunk on them with all the evidence the earth is stationary and watch them not be honest about that. Instead of getting into the intricacies of the same script over and over about how they can't accept the horizon's optical. But they can't understand it. They can't understand it. Yeah, with it, you just yeah, that's what happened before you yeah. came online. Right, you were just right. incorrect. You doesn't want to talk about the motion. Witsa, you were just incorrect about angular resolution. That's not how that works. The vicinity of something next to a surface is not how you determine angular resolution. Angular resolution occurs at the optical device, not at the distant object. No, oh, but it, the, <laughs> I'm such a red herring. So it. it because you're saying angular resolution can cause it, and that's not correct. Buddy, chill. <laughs> okay, yeah, it occurs at the device relative to the angles of light, buddy. Okay, so yeah, it's obviously, it, 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 obviously, dude, shut up, man. It obviously is about aperture of what you're observing through, etc. But we know this is one thing that the Globers do. They treat, like, say there's a boat in the distance. They treat it like it's just one point of light that has one angle to you. But in reality, we know there's like a trillion right. points of light. There's like a trillion points of light on the yes. boat. Okay. And so the bottom points of light have a different angle than the top points of light, don't they? Yes, they do, which doesn't change what I said about angular resolution. Okay. So then that relative angle to, say, the eye level, right, or the vanishing point is going to be smaller at the bottom than at the top, isn't it? That has nothing to do with angular Answer resolution. My question. I am answering your question, your twat. There's nothing to do with regular resolution. 
It was a yes or no question. You just you're you're you're, you're trying to that that angle between eye level and the bottom and the angle between eye level and the top has nothing to do with angular resolution. You didn't answer the question, so I'll ask it again. So it's not one point of light, it's like trillions of little points of light. So do of course the points of light at the bottom of the boat are going to have a smaller angle in relation to say eye level or the vanishing point than the angles from the top no. of the boat, right? Right. Yes that or no? That has nothing to do with it. They can't answer it. They can't answer it. Yes or no? I can definitely answer it, actually. Here we go. If you're at the altitude of the top of the boat, that means the top should disappear first. It's yes or no. Right, but given your explanation, you've just described something we don't observe in reality. Oh, oh my God. Okay, you can't answer yes or no. Now, now this is a fact, right? That So the horizon is an optical location. It's like the vanishing point, right? If you have something that's moving into the distance, right, then you're just seeing the light or information from that object. And it has like trillions of little points, right? And so the angle from, say, the vanishing point, the horizon, and that object, it's always going to be smaller from the bottom of the object to the horizon or the vanishing point. Always, 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 always. Yeah, so that's why you have to avoid the point, bastardize the point, straw man the point, red herring the point, and then just start regurgitating your script again. So the fact you guys can't accept this fact proves you can't even truly entertain what the flat earth position actually is and then decide it's wrong. You have to create a caricature of what flat earth is. That's you coping, okay, bro. So yeah, can real you quick, predict between oh, the particular point on an object and eye level has nothing nothing to do with angular resolution eye level does not get involved with angular resolution at all well, let's just bring it up again so the horizon is an optical location right of the vanishing point if an object is moving into the distance okay then the bottom of that object the angle from the bottom to that vanishing point is always going to be smaller than the angle from the top to the vanishing point right unless you're at the same altitude as the top of the object no, that doesn't change the actual horizon. The yes, angle it does. to the oh, so if oh, so you're, you're, horizon at eye level, and you're at the same altitude as the top of the object. Then the angle from the top of the object to the horizon is zero degrees. Wait, wait, give me give me an example of a time that the horizon, the vanishing point, the horizon, the angle from the bottom of the boat to the horizon is going to be bigger than the angle from the top to the horizon. I just gave you an example, which is if you're no, at you the didn't. same... The no, you're going to interrupt me. That's fun. You complain about that. But I just gave you an example, which was that if you're at the same altitude as the top of the boat, then your angle between the top of the boat and the horizon is smaller than the angle from the bottom of the boat to the horizon. No, it's not. Does, wait, do the other Globers in here agree with me? Wait, wait, do the other Globers in here agree with me? Take your I claim, mean, buddy. There was people in chat that definitely agreed with what he just said. Uh, they're just yeah, not I want, speaking. I want every Glober to stake their claim right now before we continue. Do you all agree with what he just said? Well, does he have any I'm like not paying attention. examples or is this only like hypotheticals? So so what they're trying to say is if he said horizon there. I don't know why he just fell off the rails. There. They're, they're trying to say that obviously in relation to eye level, right? Because if you go higher, if your actual altitude in relation to say the boat, right? is is like the same or higher than the boat then like if your eye level is at the top of the boat or below it then the angle to your eye level is obviously going to be smaller from the top of the boat to your eye level than from the bottom because of your altitude that's what he's saying right he totally slipped up and said horizon there. conveniently the other bars weren't listening conveniently right but but this is the fact of the matter the fact of the matter is that, yeah we understand what you're saying there and that's a red herring okay let's get specific the horizon itself the horizon itself is a vanishing point, okay, right? And if there's a, so it's where the sky appears to meet the ground. If there's a boat on the water, right, the boat, the bottom of the boat is always going to be closer to the location where the sky appears to meet the ground than the top of the boat is because it's on the ground. Yeah, not from your perspective. If you're at the same altitude as the top of the boat, the top of the boat should be at your eye level, Right. We're not talking about eye level right oh. now. We're talking about the horizon and how it's where the sky appears to meet the ground. Now, obviously, horizon has a relationship with the eye level, but that's a totally different conversation where you guys are going to absolutely oh, disagree. Shit. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Answer the question. Is the horizon where the sky appears to meet the ground? Yes or no? Fuck. We already uh, all agree on that. 
the, you're, you're trying to avoid the point, which is if oh, you're at the same altitude as the top of the boat, you'll have an angle to the top of the boat and eye level, which is zero degrees, assuming a flat Earth. And the horizon is very near eye level. So oh, those should be a smaller oh angle, God. the angle between the bottom of the boat and the horizon, right? You notice how he keeps on trying to squeeze oh, eye level in there, right? I, because obviously, the her let's just make sure a whole room understands. Okay, on the flat Earth, the horizon is just an optical location. On the real Earth, the horizon is just an optical location. In the current 2024 defense of the globe model, the horizon is just an optical location. So we have an optical location called the horizon. It's where the sky appears to meet the ground. You try to squeeze in there that it's very close to eye level. Good try. Good try. So the horizon is where the sky appears to meet the ground. That would be the water in this case. If the boat is on the ground or the water and it's moving off in the distance, the angle from the bottom of the boat to the water is going to be smaller than the angle from the top of the boat to the water. Uh, not if you're at the same altitude as the top of the boat. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, if you're hey, at Rufus. the same altitude, it would still be smaller. Of course. No. Because, uh, Ruh, I got a question for you. If you are at the same altitude, <laughs> the angle between uh, your yeah, eye level. You're cutting out. See, he keeps saying eye level. You see how he's being intentionally dishonest? I even uh, stop him interrupting with it. No, what? Come on, no, bro. He... Go stop interrupting, champ. Stop interrupting, champ. Come on, bro. We can't, we can't even hear him, champ. I just, want to, I just want to say something real quick with it like these guys in chat um, I posted in there a while ago a bunch of different laser experiments that people have done I'm not the only one to do a laser experiment across mileage um, and I find it funny how nobody he's even remotely said anything about those laser experiments they just continue to gaslight me about how I haven't taken geometry so yeah well they're just going to yeah. say it's a fraction they all have a religious script that they follow oh, I, have way, against you yeah, I guess, oh, I guess uh, 40 different against experiments you know, that all include the same result you refuse to respond moderation, moderation. Ruth, you refuse if to you've been sitting so, Ruth, if you've been sitting uh, in the don't go like no listen. nobody's addressing it no, shut you, you up, refuse to respond Ruf. to to Ruf. anybody engaging you on this. So. That's not true, Ruif. If, if you've been in the room this whole time and we've had to go through it yeah. painfully and redundantly, and then you just like are are narrating your poker game, ignoring it, and then he wants to bring you in and recap the conversation with sounding like the Charlie Brown adults, we don't have to listen to that. What we just discussed it. What he's not going to do is divert over to asking you questions so you can circle jerk straw man's. Okay, so if Dufus wants to answer the specific point, which is, is the angle to the horizon, or how, let's answer like this, let's ask like this, is the angle from the bottom of the boat to the water smaller than the angle of the top of the boat to the water? Yes or no? What point in the water? Because water is a surface. <laughs> is the angle from the bottom of the boat to the water smaller than the angle from the top of the boat to the water? You're not asking about an angle. You're asking about a avoiding distance. Avoiding it. Avoiding the fucking Yeah, he has to avoid it. Uh, uh, you're asking about an angle. Question. The question is incorrect. The question is asking what? about an angle when what he's referring to is a distance. No, no, I'm talking about an angle. Yeah, is it so a degree? Degree? So what? what are the two lines? You're just arguing it's distance, though. The bottom of the boat. I mean, relative to what? It's sea level. Like what? Yeah. It's one level. It's the no, same two, height. Angle. Like what? Yeah, really, angle between two points. What? What two points? The bottom of the boat and the horizon. The water. Ooh, the horizon. You know, Here we go. That's, three that's what the water is. To find an angle. <laughs> that's what the water is. Yeah, so, three, three points. Correct. Yes. I wonder where the right. word horizon <laughs> comes from. One point you're looking at, and another point you're comparing it to. That's how you get an angle. Okay, so look, we have the water, right? And then the boat's on the water. Obviously, if I try to see an angle between the two, right? The angle from the bottom of the boat to the water is going to be smaller. Even if I increase in altitude, what would change is the angle in relation to my eye level. That's why he tried to sneak in. The horizon's, and the horizon's very close to eye level. Which is like a go of Earth problem. I don't care. That's totally irrelevant. We're talking about the horizon itself because we know that as we increase altitude, the horizon is slightly below eye level, right? So that's just a non sequitur. You've repeated it five times because you're trying to be deceptive in how you're entering the questions. The point is that the, the, the boat is on the water, okay, which is considered the ground in this situation. 
The horizon is where the sky appears to meet the ground. The boat is going, the bottom of the boat is going to merge into the vanishing point before the top of it. And it isn't even slightly complicated. You guys understand exactly what's being said, but you have to repeat your script that it's impossible for things to disappear bottom up on a flat earth. So that's all right. You're I have finished. Up. I mean, do they have borrow you? Can I borrow you for 20 seconds? Because that's how you go to bed. You reiterate that it claimed that it does. Can I can I hog it for a sec? So I'm going to bed. Yes, All right. please. All right. Witzer, can you use your angular resolution bullshit to predict how much of Kanagu will be hidden? Uh, well, it depends on conditions as well, right? So like this assume is called a fallacy. typical atmosphere. This is called the fallacy of assume, division. Assume a typical atmosphere. Um, I, I think that you could, if, but the problem is like typical atmosphere doesn't like the way that you guys interpret that and, and refraction doesn't actually Jesus. correlate to where, listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't actually directly oh, correlate. Answer. It's a no. It doesn't act. Yeah. The answer is no, not with your interpretation of the light in the atmosphere, buddy. So yeah, that's right. What? No, not with standard refraction or standard conditions in oh. your paradigm where you take an R value and reify it because what we see is that the horizon itself moves greatly and if you're going to determine what I'm talking about it's going to be in relation to where that vanishing point is okay. assume whatever you like about the atmosphere can you make a prediction for the amount of hidden of Kanigo well yeah but you would have to first establish the relationship between the variables and the location of the horizon okay assume whatever you like <laughs> like assume I didn't the say assume atmosphere anything. assume I didn't say assume anything. I said you'd have to go out and actually establish that relationship. If you have that information, then yes, oh, no. you can do okay. that. No, okay. I said yes. So what, I said yes. What variables, what variables do you need to measure? Well, I would just measure all, all conceivable variables that are relevant to us seeing light in the atmosphere. <laughs> so you guys, you got, you guys get rid of all kinds of things. You guys don't even account for things like haze and stuff like that. Now, knowing that the horizon is actually just a vanishing point, right? Then there are many variables that are going to change that. There are many variables that are going to change it. You think the horizon's physical, and so you only account for a few to try to say the light is bending. In reality, I've gone out and made hundreds of observations, and sometimes you see the horizon super far away, sometimes you don't. And it typically correlates to how clear of conditions you have. Even when the temperatures are very much similar, right? We know that the density gradient is typically very similar. Right, if we're if we're there back to back days, like the temperature gradient is pretty similar. You guys will say it can change a lot. You're whatever. monologuing with it. You're monologuing. The answer is no. You can't make a prediction. You have I no explanation for bottom up obstruction. I just said yes. I just said yes. You okay, just have to make a prediction. But you have to. Okay, first, this is what's so funny. You guys didn't do shit. You just went and got someone else's reified R value and then use it. We would have to go replace that which is, of course, us doing a thousand times more work than you guys did. You guys just religiously believe what conforms to your belief system. We would have to go the out you're and... going to to say no is hilarious. Do you no. have anything to support? What? I'm not the saying no. I'm not saying no. Okay, okay well, then what's your this? prediction? I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I have a prediction right now, and I'm also not saying no, I can't make a prediction. Good try, though. Good try with your okay. dishonesty. Then come back when you can make it. That's that's my question yeah. to you in the debate is make a prediction and I bet you won't. Anyway, okay, it's well, fucking two thirty here. The prerequisite to making the okay. condition is establishing is establishing the con the relationship between the conditions and the location of the horizon. Okay, that's what you okay. have to do. For. Assume, that hasn't been done. That hasn't So you can't make a prediction. I can't make it with the current information. That's right, because the current information assumes the globe, assumes the horizon's physical. Yes, you can't do it. Just say you can't. That's fine. I, I, I had oh to God. have more information to do it. Stop being dishonest. Assume, you're not, you're assume not typical anybody. values. Assume typical values for whatever you like. Use them in your prediction. I don't care what you assume. Just make a prediction. Okay, dude. Again, yeah. again, what actually happens in reality is the horizon moves around based on conditions, including just clarity in general, which would be haze, turbidity, all these different things. You guys do not account for that stuff. You don't even account for it. Because it doesn't change the observation. 
according to your religion, which is that you need the light to bend around a ball. Now, I, again, have gone out in reality hundreds of times. I know for a fact that it does change what you see. The turbidity of the atmos absolutely determines what you see. Absolutely does. Yeah. It's, it's ac- yeah. absolutely asinine to say it doesn't. Okay. Anyway, that yeah, was a very long note. Absolutely asinine to bed. say people don't account for fog when you uh, uh, when the nature of the observation itself clearly implies that you want to have clear and free view. If you have a wall in front of you, then you cannot. Then your horizon is also also going to be at the same distance as the wall. Obviously. Did I say fog or it's, did that's I say a turbidity? Case that is none. That is not argued. That's not in contention. Hey, did I say fog or turbidity? Fog is a form of turbidity. Is that turbidity? Is it the only form of turbidity? Essentially, yeah. I mean, if oh you're going to have. Oh my God. It's the it, only it, form of turbidity. Gotcha. What else so, can cause so turbidity in air then? If you have a suspended particulate cloud, then we could say, oh, some kind of dust cloud is in the way too. Well, yeah, just different versions of turbidity, right? So the point is that whenever you actually see that there's turbidity, what that does, like, it, you would have to, the proper way to account for what we see. It's way more complex than your guys' is like really simple, like reified hand pick and cherry pick. Okay, so how do you properly account for it? I'm trying to say it. So you would have to account for attenuation rates, right, which is directly relative to density and turbidity. The rate at which the light is actually attenuated is that you, this is what I'm saying, like, you have a religion. You don't want to accurately look at the conditions and the actual observations. You want to repeat ad nauseum your remedial cherry picking interpretation that reifies the R value. If that's all you're going to do, then just go somewhere else. It's been seven years. You're not even. Doofus. Stop hot micing, doofus. You're not. Right, but it's the direction in which something can be observed. That's not possible for turbidity to do. No one said anything about direction. So this is a typical ex- a typical example of how you interrupt thinking you know what's going to be said, but you have no idea what's going to be said, and you don't listen to what's going to be said, but then you know you're right. What I'm actually but saying is that... There are variables that uh, affect what we see and where we see it, and turbidity is not one of them. That's incorrect. So it's a fact, and it's been proven a thousand times in the lab, right? That attenuation, the attenuation rate of light is directly relative to density of the medium and the turbidity, okay? Now, we're talking about receivable information that gives us resolvability in terms of a vanishing point, then that is directly relevant. It's impossible that it wouldn't be relevant. You guys have completely ignored that variable because you have a religious belief. So if I'm going to be asked to make a prediction accurately in reality, I'm going to try to look at all the variables in reality that I know affect what I see in reality. I'm not going to cherry pick them so I can come up with some mathematical construct for my belief system. Do you understand the difference here? Uh, Turbidity won't change the location of the vanishing point either. Oh, do you want to bet? Yes. Okay, what do you want to bet? Right. You have to acknowledge what vanishing point means first, which is a direct consequence of perspective only, right? No, no, no. No, No, it's because your eye has an angular size. That's another reason. There's there's more than one reason. And the conditions actually (laughs) can exaggerate those effects. And so the, and the attenuation rate will give you less resolvable information. And when you receive less resolvable information, then it falls below resolvability. That starts to begin to vanish from being perceivable. Duh. Okay, vanishing point is defined, not by you, but by other people. Defined as the, the point at which parallel lines that are on a plane not parallel to your projection plane converge to. Turbidity does not change where that convergence appears to happen. Okay, you're talking about how you can sit in art class and draw on a piece of paper not accounting for the atmospheric conditions of reality. What we're talking about is obviously perspective combined with the conditions that are going to exaggerate certain effects and remove resolvability of information. What I'm saying is objectively coherent. You know what I'm saying. You can't rebut it. So you devolved into just saying that perspective is just about like the angles. And that's it. Yeah, we're talking in the context of the vanishing point of the horizon on a flat earth. Right. And that means the resolvable information. That's what it's about, is what information of light can we resolve in the distance? The amount of resolvable information that will be received is dependent upon many variables, 
one of which is the attenuation rate of light, which is relative to turbidity. All right, then don't use the term vanishing point because vanishing point has an exact definition. You're trying to use it as the point at which we can't see the object anymore, which is not what vanishing point is actually defined as. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we'll just call it the horizon. Okay, so in order to determine the horizon, which is a vanishing point, but, it isn't, but it isn't just perspective, right? So it's a vanishing point affected by additional conditions. This is called the fallacy of division. The, the favorite fallacy of Globers is to say, you can only pick one thing to explain it, so then I can straw man and say how that alone won't explain it. <laughs> fallacy of division. That's all you guys have. It's bringing up the actual definitions of words. No, no, it's a fallacy of division when I've explained the exact context, right? Which is that you have to account for all the conditions. So the horizon is a vanishing point, right? Because perspective objectively affects where the horizon is. But there's, it's a vanishing point that is affected by additional conditions. Uh, perspective does not determine where the horizon is. That's what you think. <laughs> okay. But obviously we're talking about stepping outside of your religious belief where you think that there is for sure objectively in a, uh, a physical geometric horizon. We can just never actually see it. Uh, no, if you look up the actual definition of perspective, perspective doesn't uh, define or change where the horizon is. Okay, on a flat earth, the horizon is merely an optical location where you can no longer see beyond it, also known as a vanishing point. If you want to straw man the context by talking about vanishing point defined simply in terms of perspective and geometry without talking about how we're actually discussing it in real life, then that's just because you can't actually debate the point. And that's because you guys said that I couldn't figure out how to make the predictions, but I can. You act like I can't explain how the objects disappear bottom up on a flat earth, but I objectively can. And then you have to start just immediately hitting me with fallacies and red herrings. No, and you didn't. Yes, I did. Right. You didn't actually no, come up didn't. with prediction. You made, you made some. You made some assertions, but they were proven by assertion. Oh, really? Really? It actually, so goes against what we know from pers uh, from perspective and from oh. observation. Oh, really? Still, man, my position, AK, since you're so smart. No. You just said I was wrong about it, but you don't even know what it is. Incorrect. Then, still, man. <laughs> right. You said on multiple occasions that. Where are things Why we can't save them? Why are you trying to save them? Okay, you've said on multiple occasions yeah, that you... Try to save them, yeah. You've said on multiple occasions that if the horizon is where things disappear at, that that's where the vanishing point is. The term vanishing point has an actual definition. You're using it incorrectly. Now, for the fifth straight time, the horizon on a flat Earth is the vanishing point and that location is affected by additional conditions. So we can still use the actual definition, which is the location and the distance that begin to vanish you to perspective. And we can also account for the additional conditions that would affect our perception of that vanishing point. And for you to say that I can't is a fallacy of division. It's almost the most remedial elementary tactic I've heard all day, which is saying a lot. So please stop doing it over and over. Thank you. Just sit this one out since you can't rebut what I'm saying. Right. It, me rebutting is not rebutting it. Sure. I'm, I'm, I love it. Yeah. It's called a fallacy of division. So just so it's the not a fallacy of you using the definitions of words incorrectly. No, I'm not. I'm using the exact definition of, of vanishing point in terms of perspective. And I'm saying that is what is determining the horizon in addition to conditions. Okay, so the vanishing point, which is defined by perspective, is at infinite distance. And the other conditions cause things to become less resolvable or more obscured. But those conditions are not the vanishing point and have nothing to do with the vanishing point. Oh, just because you say so? Just because you say so? Like, the, this, so you just admitting 
you, wait, wait, you just admitted that it was a fallacy of division because you're trying to straw man and pigeonhole the conversation into only talking about perspective and the vanishing point in terms of simply geometry on a piece of paper without accounting for condition. What I'm saying is that the perspective, like your perspective is obviously going to determine, is going to cause things to begin to merge together. Fact. Okay. Fact. It's going to cause the things above you like they're going down and vice versa. It's going to cause things to converge in the distance. What's going to also affect where that takes place is the conditions. One example is <laughs> the actual resolvable information coming from what you're perceiving in the distance, getting to you so that you can resolve it. But we have something called attenuation which means the, the absorption rate of the light into the medium, which means, of course, if that information is being absorbed into the medium, less of it will get to you to be resolvable, right? So then that relationship is determined by predominantly density and turbidity of the atmos. So if you want to determine how much of this information you're going to get to be receivable so that you can make out that vanishing point, you're going to have to account for atmospheric conditions. All right. Well, here's an easy response. Yeah, it changes, so that like, that's why it's a, it's a vanishing point. Yeah, okay, like that changes. Yeah. Uh, so, so here's an easy response to that. You agreed earlier. Turbidity does not change the direction in which things are observed. So, if we're talking about perspective and turbidity, then turbidity cannot change where the vanishing point is located. It can obscure objects before they reach the vanishing point, which is not the same thing as due to the vanishing point. Dude, this is what's wrong with Globers. They can't use their mind outside of like what they've been told is true. If you actually Expand think about what you just think about what you can't adhere to a terminology that about, has been established just, already. Oh, great input, dishonest, AK. Disingenuous. Yeah. Yeah, AK, can you still me my little fucker okay. you. Hey, AK, can you oh. still man my position? Point instead of doing oh, yeah. the app. No, I hey, won't. Doofus, Doofus, don't jump in. Hey, Doofus saved you last time. You're saying that my point is so wrong. I and that won't. I'm... You can oh, stop you asking can. me, okay? It's I it's won't. Because you okay, then stop jumping in, right? I so if won't. Okay, and you cool. can stop slandering me uh, and uh, making up Didn't reasons why you? I can't or why, why I wouldn't. I won't, okay? I'm telling okay, you, well, I just won't. Stop interrupting the conversation then. You should have seen this guy's comment. No, stop <laughs> monologuing. <laughs> no, no, dude, if you're trying to just jump in and tell me my point is wrong, but then when given the opportunity to articulate what my point is that you're claiming is wrong. When you slander, I will come back with slander and I will interrupt you for it. Okay, well, you're about to be muted. So, no, all I do is slander my name in chat. Then. That is the only thing you have that you actually have going for you. The only thing that you can substantiate, your fucking mute button. No, that's not true. It's very simple. If you're claiming that my <laughs> point is wrong... There, there's nothing else you've ever substantiated. You're, you're why are you interrupting again? You understand that when you get muted, it's not because it's an abuse of power or you're some type of victim. It's because mm -hmm. you can't just talk right through the middle of people. And that's why you've been muted on the server a hundred times. Because you think you can talk right through the middle of people. But you can't. I've not been muted on the service a hundred times, and uh, you're monologuing. So if you, uh, someone is mon wants to get an edge, uh, a word in edgewise before you pile on incorrect things on up on incorrect things up on incorrect things, then the the sensible thing is actually to interject you. Um, so no, incorrect. So in this room, we don't interrupt people. You can claim I'm monologuing. I was going back and forth with Doofus. Oh, I had to do. be. I had to be repetitive because he kept on bastardizing my point. You jumped in to let us know that my point was wrong. That's fine. That's what the room is for. But if my point is wrong, objection noted, feel free to articulate my point and then tell us why it's wrong. But you can't actually articulate my point. You don't understand it. You can't still man it. I did. Okay, but AK didn't, so he should just sit this one out. So now what I was saying to you, dude, is like, think about if perspective is, is changing in the distance. Right? So it's like, it's obviously converging in the distance. Now, if say you just randomly drop a line on it and say, okay, you can't see beyond this point because of attenuation, then it's going to, that, that location is going to be closer than if you could see that those perspective lines go further and further and further. Right. It's like looking down the railroad tracks. And then, and then putting like crazy turbidity uh, around the railroad tracks, and you can't see as far on one day as the other. In both situations, the railroad tracks are looking like they're converging towards each other, right? On all days, they will look like they're coming towards each other. 
That's my point, bro. But like on one day, we're not maybe converging the point when turbidity gets in the way, though. Right. <laughs> That's the main. The main point is the turbidity is not changing where the vanishing point is because those uh-huh. railroad tracks still appear to be converging on the same point. You just can't see the farther away part of the track. Okay, that's the point. So if we take the railroad tracks and we flip them on their side, that would be analogous to the sky and the ground. They begin to move towards each other in the distance. Let's say that we have turbidity that makes us not be able to see as far down the railroad tracks. Yeah, you're right. It wouldn't be the same point of convergence. But when we look in the real world, what we see is that the vanishing point is like a gradient. It's a gradient. Right, it goes from sky to ground in a fuzzy little gradient. Even whenever we're over water, and you guys try to say there's a hard line, no, just zoom in, you will see that the color of the water has a gradient going up into the sky. So yes, that's exactly what we would see. Now you guys have to deny this though, because you have to claim that basic perspective and basic observations are impossible on a flat Earth because you're coping. You have to create a caricature of flat Earth. That's what you have to do. I don't have to do that for the globe. I can still man the globe better than you guys can argue for the globe. Uh, except the point that you brought up involving turbidity and railroad tracks kind of refutes what you're saying, since the tracks do appear to converge still, and they do appear to converge at the same point that they previously did, except that you can't see the more distant portions of the track. So that the vanishing point didn't change, you just can't see the more distant portion of the track. But as that relates to real-life observation... It's going to what we're going to call the vanishing point, as in the limit of where we can currently see everything begins to vanish into that will be where we lose resolvability. It'll be where we lose resolve. It'll be where we lose resolvability. Right. Yeah, that's not the definition of vanishing point. You just keep on reverting to that because you can't respond to what I'm saying. Okay. right. What you're saying is vanishing point is where we can't see things anymore. That's not what vanishing point means. Okay, well then, so vanishing, what does that word mean? Right, there's a fallacy of, what is it, a com- com- composition? No. <laughs> right. No. Because it's a vanishing point, you want to say vanishing is sufficient to describe where things are reaching a vanishing point. It's incorrect. Vanishing point, the complete term, together, vanishing point, all together one term, is defined by perspective to be the point at which parallel lines that are not in a projection plane or not in a plane parallel to your projection plane will appear to converge. Okay, that's right. So I've I've explained multiple times, right, that when it comes to the discussion of real life, okay, we're going to have to also account for conditions. So then in that context, we're saying vanishing in the sense that it can no longer be perceived. There's no... There's no longer resolvable information beyond that point. If you keep on diverting and reverting to saying, but we have a definition for vanishing point that doesn't account for conditions. <laughs> like, okay, use another word for it. Let's use the word uh, globe. Uh, we're going to call it globe earthers don't comprehend flat earth. Okay. Instead of vanishing point, we're going to call it globe earthers don't comprehend flat earth. So you know that point in the distance where things begin to fall below below resolution and resolvability and we can no longer see, they disappear, they begin to vanish from our view, right? Yeah, we call that globe earthers don't understand flat earth. That location, right, it changes based on conditions. One of the primary variables of that is perspective because it it causes the ground and the sky look like they're converging towards each other. We can only see so far down that effect, that corridor of visual effect, depending on the conditions because we can't receive the information further in the distance. So we can't see it. So obviously, turbidity and attenuation is going to be very relevant to where that area that vanishes, called the Globers Don't Understand Flat Earth, is. Could we That's call not the vanishing point, of, though. Circle of vision. <laughs> you got nothing. I like, I like the term circle of vision. That's a good one to use. That's a variable. Yeah, or this, just you can't see forever. Like that'd be, just, that'd be a good one. His response was just that it's not the vanishing point. Like, it, it's whatever. It's bad faith, right? Because we're, the reason I'm using vanishing point is because at, like the reason it's called that in terms of perspective is it's where you won't be able to see anymore. And so the fact that you say, well, normally people only use it in the context of like an abstract drawing or something isn't the point. Right, because the reason, the way that the term is actually defined is it's the point at which you can't see beyond, and it's due to perspective when you're just drawing it on a piece of paper. But in real life, it's 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 uh, in relation to perspective and conditions. 
So it's just a weird semantics. This is the definition of like semantics. You're being pedantic and semantic. Okay, so the, the example that I posted in the chat, the vanishing point appears to be beyond the point at which we can no longer see the tracks. So when I use the word vanishing point, I'm using the actual definition. I have all the globe, the globe trolls locked in chat. I mean, let's be real here. So anyway, and like this is for this is the thing though. What you guys need to realize is that someone that's really interested in trying to figure out what's going on, like they're not, you're not convincing anyone. Like even the people that are just on the fence, because they're like, well, I want to look at what the globe Earth claims, and I want to look at what the flat earthers claim, right, and see which one matches reality better. And trying to dictate the flat earthers and say, no, no, that's not your claim. This is your claim, and your claim's impossible. It's just you coping. I don't have to do that for the globe. I, I still man the globe. I present the globe better than you guys do. Right? So that shows that there's something going on here psychologically where you have to actually straw man flat earth to eliminate the possibility of it explaining different observations, which is highly suspect. Are you going to address the observation that I put forward or not? No, I don't. I, I haven't described it. Describe it. It's a photo. Wow. Thank you, man. Okay. So, like I said, I have a bunch of you guys blocked. And since there's so many things that say blocked messages, there, I'm not going to go scroll up and click every blocked message. Okay, right. Fine. I'll do it in questions. words since I'll you want to have me take the time to do oh. that. So, here we go. We have train tracks. They are appearing to converge to a point. Before we get to the point where they appear to converge, part of the track is obscured by the fog. That, that means... What you're saying is the vanishing point is not where those lines appear to converge. Dude, dude, you just repeated what I've already specifically refuted in address. I even changed the name to Globers Don't Understand Flat Earth. This dude called Circle of Vision. Some people call it, I don't know, kind of the ether band. It will be the perspective plus the ether band. It doesn't matter what you call it, okay? The fact oh, of the matter is... Listen, listen, let's see if you guys can answer. Well, wait, this is what you, I found out you have to do with Glover. You have to ask closed-ended questions, but then what you see is they lie and claim they're loaded questions and still don't answer them. So do you guys agree that what the way that we see is we receive information from in the distance? Light is reaching our eye, yes. Okay, so do you, do you agree that there are variables that determine how much of that light can reach us? Of course. Okay. Do you agree that one of those variables is attenuation? That, yeah, that affects how much light receive, you receive, yes. Okay, and you agree that the prime, predominant variables of attenuation are density and turbidity? I mean, that is one form of uh, attenuation. Okay, so if we, don't, if, we're not, if we don't get receivable information in the distance, what happens? Hold on a second. All right. The, we reach a point when, we, we, when you can't make out a signal uh, compared to the background noise, we say we can't see what we're looking for. Right. Okay. So we can't see it. It vanishes. But vanishing point, the combined term, has oh a specific meaning. I didn't ask you that. I said it right, vanishes. The, right? the reason why this whole conversation started was because you used the combined term vanishing point, and vanishing point has a definition already, which is not the one that you're using. I didn't say vanishing point. I said it vanishes, right? Before that. In it vanishes. The it has it doesn't vanish? Yeah, it vanishes, right? No? See, this right. is what they did. Vanishing <laughs> is not the same as saying that it reached the vanishing point. Because, okay, again, oh, the combined okay, term oh. vanishing point has a specific definition, which is not simply where something cannot be resolved or, or made out. Okay, cool, cool. But it vanishes, right? Yeah, you can say that if you want to, but you well, would no, still be using the term I'm vanishing point incorrectly. I'm not using the word vanishing point. I use the word vanish. Right. Somebody so just then used previously somebody you were using the term vanishing point incorrectly. Inventor picture of a bridge to prove garbage. <laughs> hey, yeah, what, hold on, wait a minute. Well, don't don't globally use <laughs> in a program. Why are you using a picture in a program to prove a bridge shows curvature? Like what? What are you doing? That's crazy. It's not even a picture of of a bridge. Like what? That's insane. 
Ruhif, does it vanish at a certain point? Can we say at a certain point it vanishes? Like he agrees it vanishes. He struggled to say you can say that, but I mean that's the definition of vanishing. So now he's asking you, okay, do you agree that it does that at a certain point? That's the question, Ruhif. Does it eventually no, vanish yeah. at a certain point? It's doofus, not Ruhif. It's doofus. Uh, sorry, yeah. doofus. My sorry, my apologies. <laughs> Doofus, does it eventually vanish at a certain point? Uh, yeah, you can use those two points or uh, two words separately, but the combined term vanishing point has its own specific definition. Okay, we can use that those two words separately. Okay, so we talked about resolvable information in the distance, and then we we can no longer see it, and that that changes based on turbidity and density and different variables because of attenuation of light. And then basically what happens is when we can no longer see it, it vanishes. And that where that occurs is at a certain point in the distance. Okay. So now the question is, do you agree that that uh, certain point in the distance can change? Point at which you could make something out can change. Yes. Okay, cool. So it's the point that what we can see vanishes in the distance and it changes. <laughs> the vanishing point. Whoa, I'm sorry, whoa, I'm you sorry. Can't say that. You can't say, can't that, say that. Oh I'm sorry about that. My bad. It's okay. It's okay. We forget. Well, you, if you end up looking up the definition of vanishing point, you'll see it's different. <laughs> you see like, you the guys don't want to look at the definition of crazy. Time. The tap dancing you have to do, doofus, for this point. All you got to say is, yeah, it vanishes at a certain point. That's it, well, he is. bro. He is. He's I did already working. say that, Essie. I actually said that a while ago. Yeah, but what yeah, I said was the vanishing point term, the combined term itself, doesn't is not defined the way that Witsit was using it earlier. And look, 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 to be fair, he's not incorrect. Like, it, like vanishing point, right, if you look up the definition, is going to be in relation to simply perspective. And so they're not going to say that that changes, right? But we're talking about how, well, there actually is a point in the distance where things vanish and it changes. That's why reality is different than just abstracts in art class, right? <laughs> so if we're going to talk about reality in the context of observations on the earth, well, we either have to say the point at which things vanish in the distance that changes, or we can just say oh, the vanishing point and it changes. So, like, Don't to say, say that, that you can't, yeah, it's, it's just like it's just a pedantic argument. Just like I said, it's wasted fifteen minutes of everyone's time. But they like to use orthographic view, and you know, take away everything else, take away the atmos, and just draw a side picture and say, "Look," but that's yeah. not reality, guys. Exactly. They want to remove all the variables. This is why I, I, I think like it is this? called. I think it is called the fallacy of division, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, right? Where it's like what the, what the globe earthers try to do is they're like explain why goats disappear from the bottom up and then like okay and you start to say your answer is like okay well we have perspective and no oh, perspective doesn't do that and they don't let you finish and then you're like no it's perspective combined with conditions no but perspective doesn't do that we know how perspective works it's like no but that's not my claim is not perspective alone right my claim is perspective in addition to conditions well we know how perspective works okay so unless you can show me the math of how perspective works it's like they and then the, then what they'll do is they'll turn around and they'll be like, okay, well we know that conditions don't work like that. What type of refraction are you talking about? Right? They want to divide the claims, act like you can only invoke one of them to explain it when your actual argument is that it's a combination of the two. This is one of the number one tactics that Globe Earthers use, and it and it goes unchecked so much. Fallacy of yeah, these are debate tactics like climbing a mountain, no, getting away up. from the no. actual observations that have always been made, and going up a mountain because you know that uh, during those conditions we can prove your we can disprove your model. So the uh, the the you want to climb a mountain as a solution? Really? Come on. I think going up a mountain is worse because you're trying to look further into the layers, right? And it, it, you might get different optical effects as you go up. I agree that it's more turbulent um, the lower you are to the surface, but the optical illusions as you go up change and differ. They're not taking that into an account. 
Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a stretch on fallacy of division, actually. Like, I just looked it up. I mean, it kind of is. But, like, obviously what it what it is clearly is a straw man of your point. And they're doing that by, uh, you know, dividing the points. And so it does apply. Fallacy of division does apply. But really, that's normally, like, counter to fallacy of composition, which is, like, the idea that what is true of a single part must be true of a whole, et cetera, right? But what they're basically saying, they're basically saying is the opposite of that, which is like, OK, well, uh, your claim, if you're going to claim that the combination explains it, then that means that each one has to individually explain it by itself, which w- would, of course, be that very thing, the fallacy of division. Can we agree uh, that it has to either be in higher or lower elevation to decide on that? Because I think that's a conflict, right? Because What's up? It's a, can we decide on if it's going to be more accurate on a higher elevation than, like, say, sea level on minor site observations? Like you said, um, the density of the elevation makes a difference, right? And the layers you're looking through. But if it's horizontal, you're going to be looking for the same general gradient, to be, any, to be honest. You're just looking for a thinner version of it. I mean, I think it is pretty clear that the conditions are more variable at the ground. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah. That's all. So if we take these uh, mountain experiments, uh, it'd be a more accurate representation on reality than doing it at sea level. Well, that's okay. See, that's where you, that's where we kind of jump to a conclusion. More accurate of reality. Well, you could say that, but we need to understand how resil- reality presents itself. And when you go higher and you look further, we're like, well, what exactly is the horizon? What is that actual optical vanishing point that we're observing? Right, like what is do what is it due to? So we can understand why how things are perceived in relation to that in the distance. And this is why, they, by the way, dude, this <laughs> the conclusion of this is so bad for them. Right? It's like, oh, so there's a point in the distance where we lose resolvability of information, and so it, it vanishes from view. Right? At a certain point, and that point can change. It's like, okay, well, say it gets brought closer. And there's an object that's further away than that. What would happen? Oh, the bottom of it would be obstructed. Duh. Plus, in addition to that, its angular size is going to change in the distance. So its angular size is going to keep changing in the distance beyond that 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 point that vanishes. <laughs> right? It's gonna it's gonna it's going to change it's gonna get smaller beyond that and then you're gonna still see the top of it because the top of it is still above that convergence point that optical convergence point yeah perspective doesn't account for everything because perspective is viewed from a vacuum or orthographic view when you view it in perspective in the atmosphere you can have things that overcome perspective like mirages things can be magnified can actually be bigger than what they should do to, you know, if you just base that object size on perspective, it should be much, much smaller. But how we see in the distance into the medium, the atmosphere might magnify that same object, which overcomes perspective. Well, of course, you have to look at it in the environment in which you're, it's going to be. You can't just draw it on a piece of paper and say, look, you have to take all the atmos, the heat haze, the pressure, the heat, the angle of the sun, all of that. You can't just say, yeah, I mean, come on, guys. Well, well to be fair, we, we are working with geometry, so at the best logic sense of it, we do need to kind of draw it on paper first, and then the variables are the atmosphere and, you know, temperature and all these other things that we... Sure, sure, sure but you got to go in reality then and test but it out. Right? The original logic step is on paper with lines and geometry and measurement that way. And then we yeah, okay, step one. You have to add conditions to step it. Step one. Yeah. They, well, I'm saying, what was the last thing? They're po- they have a serious problem because they don't even account for what we just discussed. Their claims of how it works on a globe doesn't even account for the attenuation and how that actually will bring forth the, uh, the point that things vanish is closer to you. They don't even account for that. And that means they cannot be correct. That whole eight inches per mile thing that people seem to be spurting out is is with zero refraction. It's just straight up geometry, isn't it? So 
Yeah. I'm saying like even yes. when they claim for standard yes, refraction, they don't account for turbidity, density, and attenuation rate, making the things in the distance less resolvable, thus bringing the, the position in which you can see things closer to you. Their, their whole entire explanation accounting for, for Atmos and refraction and everything does not even account for that. So it gets way worse for them because what? <laughs> okay, so if attenuation is based on density and turbidity, where is the density and the turbidity the greatest? At the surface. Dude. Okay, so that means that the resolvable information that can receive you due to attenuation through the atmos is going to be the attenuation rate is going to be the greatest at the surface. So even can, if you go to a high altitude, the bottom of what you're seeing in the distance is still going to be light or information that's coming through the most dense part of the atmos. So we can take more surveying uh, ground level with a pinch of salt, essentially, because of the um, variables involved. No, and a, a more accurate you. representation would be a different elevation where you kind of reduce because that's all science is it's just doing the experiment again but reducing the variables to try and get a more controlled uh, accurate um, outcome from it conclusion what i'm saying is even higher up if you're looking at mountains in the distance and they're like why are the mountains why don't we see the bottom of the mountains it's like because the information that is the lights that's letting us see the bottom of the mountains is going through the most dense part of the atmosphere with the most turbidity right yeah yeah yeah. It's changing well, the speed of light, literally. The problem with that is that we don't see that the bottom of the object is becoming obstructed by the atmosphere. It's not turbidity or attenuation which causes us to not see the bottom of the object. The surface of the Earth gets in the way. No, no. no. The horizon gets in the way, which is an optical location <laughs> that changes. And it's not a hard cutoff or a hard line. It's actually a gradient of losing resolvability that's what it is in reality and this is what the globe earthers once told me was well there's no there would be no horizon on a flat earth i'm like what the what are you talking about well it would be like a gradient it would be kind of fuzzy it would be a gradient the sky and the ground would kind of merge together and blur together in a gradient oh you mean like this image this image this image this image this image then they move the goalpost and say oh no no that that happens sometimes but it happens on a globe too Every one of your arguments are just like, you can never test my claim, and then we can strawman your claim. So, I mean, that answers your question directly. Like, we, we see the horizon appear. The things in the distance are, like, beyond the horizon. And that horizon is like a gradient, right? Like, if you look in a plane, bro, you see it very clearly. If you look at the horizon in, in a plane, like, it's very clearly, like, just a gradient, that's blurring together. Like you've all seen mountains in the distance, and there's like, I don't know if anybody lives in like Canada or Alaska or something where you've got multiple mountain ranges. And at multiple distances, the, um, there's like a blue haze on top, like I don't know what they call it, Eden haze or something, um, where it, you can see the, the density change almost until it turns to the color of the sky in the furthest distance. And it's trying to define where the horizon is becomes quite difficult. It's all like a. Um, Conceptual thing, in a way. Okay, but the whole problem is that where the bottom of the object is located, the the surface of the Earth is in the way. Because I could have swore earlier, with it, you said the horizon is where the ground appears to meet the sky. So the horizon is made up of at least below it the ground. So the ground is in the way. Well, yeah, the ground begins to optically. Now, when you zoom through. in. The ground, the ground begins. Do to that. Do that. Zoom it in. Zoom it back over the horizon. Do it. The ground begins to optically rise towards the sky. It, just zooming in on information that's no longer resolvable doesn't change anything. The ground begins to rise towards the sky, and the sky begins to look like it's going down towards the ground, just like a hallway, just like a plane that flies over your head. Okay, the, fl the plane that flies away from you is going to look like it's going down. As it flies towards you, it's going to look like it's going at an angle up. But it's actually not. It's flying level the whole time, right? The ground and the sky do the same thing. Take the railroad tracks, flip them over, right? And then, yeah, it's where the sky appears to meet the grounds. More specifically, it's it's that gradient area where you lose resolvability as the sky and ground meet inside that area. It isn't a single point with a hard cutoff, which is exactly what the globe would necessitate. In fact, and if there was a globe and I go on a mountain, I would see that there's a curved horizon blocking the mountains with a hard cutoff. And we don't see that at all. 
we see like a gradient, right? We see things shrink in the distance. We see the horizon merge together with a gradient that's fuzzy. Everything we see matches exactly what would happen on the flat earth. That's why you guys have to cope and claim that things couldn't disappear from the bottom up at all, because it's obvious that the horizon, the way that we see it, is exactly what we would see on a flat earth. I found out that phenomenon. I'll put it in chat. See, the yeah. thing to realize and to focus on here is how they're trying to change the viewing conditions, right? This all started with Ranty, with going up the mountain. That's very telling, right? In all the history, recorded history, all measurements were done from the ground. Robotham, the Greeks, all examples, mostly from the ground. Now they know we have them, right? They know we have them, so they only have one option, and that's to go mountain climbing. That's very telling. Shout out, Ranty. This is all ranty stuff. He started a couple of years ago when he flipped. This is all ranty. Okay, so since Winston finally finished talking, uh, we where we see the horizon at, and if you say it's a gradient, they, that's wonderful. The bottom of the object is still below where we can clearly make out the ground. So the ground is still in the way. And next, let's do another monologue for 10 minutes, not addressing that point. It's not when you zoom in at all. Why did you not address my point, doofus? Right, because I was so tired of waiting for Witsit to stop talking for five minutes straight so I could actually say one sentence. Gotcha. That's not what right, happened. No that, that's not even what happened. No. I, I can, I can drop a video. because I was definitely here when it happened. You hear me? Hello? They zoom in on a, on a city. It, it destroys oh. what we're talking about. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can Loud hear you. and clear, Jeremy. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's not even close to what happened. He didn't talk for five minutes. He, it wasn't even 30 seconds, I don't think. Right. When I have to go, get these kids ready to go to the library. And I have to dress a baby to put in the car. And he's still talking. What does that mean? I was here just now. He, You said something. He said something for like 20, 30 seconds, maybe. And then... He was done. I don't know why you're you're not telling the truth. Maybe you're misunderstood. I don't know. Did you time him? Okay, time him. Uh, so the the problem that I'm still waiting for an, uh, an actual response to is that if we see the bottom of the object should be somewhere where we can see the ground is instead where we see it, the ground is actually in the way. And of course, the other guy says, zoom in and bring it back. Do that. Go ahead. Make it happen. Show us that happening. I, I can show you a video for 50, 50 miles away. And they bring back and you can see the bottom of the buildings of the city they zoom in on. Okay, let's see. Now, this is a specific claim that something that is half obstructed by the surface of the earth, as it appears to us, something that has a proportion missing, you zoom in and that same proportion is now visible. Yeah, but it's even worse than that for the Globers because you literally can't even see any of the buildings whatsoever from the original point. And you can't see like any of the boats or anything they zoom in on. And then they zoom in 50 miles and you can see all of it. And that's because okay, there's no to what the actual claim in the beginning is. of the in the beginning of the experiment anyway. Okay, but listen so, to what the actual claim is. The claim is that something that is proportionally obstructed, there's some proportion that you can't see. You zoom in. And that proportion, which we couldn't see before, is now visible. Yes. yes. Show me. Okay, hold on a second. Not too far away to see, too small to see, but obstructed. Yeah. So you guys never seen a boat? Not, not only partially obstructed, but completely obstructed. And when we zoom in, we see it on the horizon. Yeah. Are, uh, are you serious? Okay, like, it's, it's in live stream. It's, it's in or what? Yeah, yeah, they're trying to. I've never even I, seen that. I posted it in the <laughs> chat. It's in the chat. It's in the general chat or the live stream text. It should be a video of. Uh, no, I don't mean shrinking to a point and you zoom in and you can see it again. It should be Brisbane. That's not what I mean. You know That's what? not I've the claim. Seen that with the sun. I've actually seen that with the sun. Actually, I take that back. I've seen the sun zoom in 
it looked like the sun was cut off, and then you zoom in, and there's a gap between this. Yeah, the that's sun because and the, the yes, that's whatever. correct. That's because the sun doesn't actually go down underneath the the Earth's crust. That's correct. Yeah, we see the sun split. We see like a split there, as if it's going away in the distance. I mean, how many times? Yeah, Rakia which is the same shit nice, we're talking about. How many, it's, it's all yeah, it's all Rakia proofs. So uh, it's all hard proofs of what we're talking about. How like perspective. Like makes it so you can't see something right and then you're talking about something being in the way but when we zoom in it's not actually in the way in reality at all and you can do that for they've done 650 miles now with infrared and there's nothing in the way so it should be like what like yeah, 80 they, miles yeah, they, of curve in the way that's ridiculous yeah that video that video doesn't show anything obstructed being zoomed in it shows something too far away to see and zoom in and being able to see it that doesn't mean it's obstructed Right, but his claim is there is something obstructing the view. No, 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 no. We've got obvious images showing obstruction where a boat is half obstructed. And you claim you can zoom back in on it and see the whole boat. That's what we need to see. Yeah, absolutely. No, but you, those you are images are already it. zoomed in. This yep. is like the deception that you guys do, right? I know. Those images are already It's, it's actually in. crazy. Uh, like, really and the boat is still better. missing. We're showing you a better version of what you're saying. It's literally a worse, like, or I mean, like a better example of what you're saying. That's what yeah. it is. Uh, a, no, a no, it isn't. Oh, okay. Well, you're right. Because, because, it's, because for... it's closer, right? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because <laughs> yeah, no, what I asked you're, for was. You're talking about something, something that's is... what? It's three miles away, five miles away. I just showed you something that's 40 miles away. Okay, so what we're asking for is because you said that something that is partially obstructed by the horizon could be zoomed in, we could see it all again. You posted something where that doesn't happen. So now I need to have you post another thing because we don't have that yet. There's sunsets that appear like that. They were just telling you that. You just didn't hear it. The sun appears. Yeah, and there's to tons of videos on that. Hang on, hang on. Ahead, Hold sorry. on, guy. Don't interrupt. You're interrupting. Well, let's have right. them then. Yeah, okay, no problem. But what, what we're talking about is the sun appearing to be obstructed by the horizon. It, it seems to be cut off or obstructed at the bottom up. And when you zoom into it, the sun then rises above the horizon. Yeah, there's a split. Yep, and we have video time. of that. Hundreds of and hundreds of, of examples, like people are doing that. So what say you now, again. guys? And then move the goalpost again. Yeah, they, we provided them exactly what they wanted, right? The sun cut halfway. We zoom in. Rakia has this, and the sun cuts in half, and it, you see it on the top part. So let yeah, me guess. Have exactly uh, what you asked for. Yeah, no, without a without a solar filter, with a lot of glare. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I've seen that video. What are you no, talking actually, about? We that need to no, that. That's how we see it. You say that's due to Earth curve. But then now when you, we zoom you, in on it and cut out some of the haze and magnify it, it's in a different position. How can that be Earth curve? Yeah, uh, yeah. If you use a solar filter where you can see where you can see so the body of the sun. The no, I'm saying no. You, no, we've always been. You can't be making observations and claims of the sun near the horizon where it's blaring into the the lens, and you can't discern what is and isn't the sun. It's your claim. So it's not it's that your point. claim that what? the sun sets the way we see the sunset. It physically it's goes under the, under the earth. Yeah, physically. Yeah, the earth By the way, it's been done with the solar filter. It's been done with the solar filter. Dave Weiss has done it multiple times. This is where you move the goalpost again. Yeah, but yeah, the water spins that? in the opposite direction in Australia. So yeah, like could you show yeah, that? Yeah, we can. We can show it. Yeah, we can show it. And I already know what you're gonna. You guys are gonna end up coming together and saying because I've heard it. You guys are gonna move the goalpost again. So let's get your answer on the record right now. If I use a solar filter and then I zoom the sun back in, then that satisfies our point, and you're wrong, right? Oh, don't, yeah, don't say it. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, if you use a, a proper solar filter where there's no glare, you can clearly distinguish that the sun has set behind the horizon, and then you can zoom the sun back in, and it's not set behind the horizon. Yeah, that That's would be not interesting. That's what we were saying. You see, you changed it. Yeah, you're, you're just we're, not you repeating half. what we said. You're just you're dishonest. Said, yeah. That's not what we said at all. 
Your, well, the, globe, change, yeah. the globe's claim is that the sun physically sets. That means that you should actually be able to watch it, right? As in, like every ten minutes, the the sun should be setting at a at a constant rate. As in, like you shouldn't see the sun just sit there at the horizon for thirty minutes. At, like that doesn't make any logical sense. And then on top of that, and that never stayed there. I'm just bringing up another point of why it makes no sense. And then on top of that. Uh, like when you actually see the sun with your own eyes, it looks like it's completely set. Basically, let's say it's three quarters of the way down. You can zoom in with a 250x zoom camera or or even like a telescope. doesn't matter what you use. And you can see the separation between the sun and the horizon. And that's because the sun doesn't physically go down. It just can you goes show me away. That? Can that's you show me does. that? I mean, I'm sure people have videos. I, I can pull it up. If You've seen that to. from Rakia. Come on, left lane. Yeah, they, I do. Yeah, Rakia is is not a a solar filter, and there's glare. And yes, you zoom in, and and oh, look, the sun hasn't actually touched the horizon, but you zoom out, and you really can't tell because there's so much glare. Okay, so if we provide one with a solar filter, answer the question: Will that definitely, definitely uh, satisfy your guys' request? If we show you one with a solar filter, I actually think I have that right now. But they're gonna say, "Hold no, on, hold I, on, I, let, let, them answer, let them answer." Yeah, answer it. <laughs> I don't know if we posted the video. They won't answer. They won't answer. Uh, well, I, I just, uh, I had to. I had to go for a second, and I just reviewed the chat, and I don't seem to see an example where something was partially obstructed and zoomed in and brought back. No, answer did you hear the question. What I did answer the question. Yeah. yeah, answer the did question. Left lane, no, left lane needs to answer the question. You jumped in to school us all about uh, solar filters, so answer the question, left lane. You're not answering because you think it may exist. No, I have answered. Okay, I've I, answered. I actually, I've answered every question. It. I actually have the the evidence if you if you need me to stream it. I just can't stream. Yeah, I keep answering questions and asking for evidence, and y'all got the evidence, but I don't see any evidence. You didn't answer a but question. You asked us a question. question. Yeah, I didn't hear an answer, Left Lane. Let's be definitive here. Answer, can you answer? If we provide you what you asked for with a solar filter, would, would that be definitive for you? I would have to see it and make a determination. We could watch it together, and we could uh, determine what we're looking at, yes. Can the one guy what? scream it so there's no confusion? That wasn't. I, I, don't know, was I can't that a stream. Definitive answer, uh, or no? no, it wasn't. But can, oh, can like, I, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to make a definitive answer on something. You know, course. a claim about something I've not seen. Well, you just made a definitive claim and said that if you use a solar filter, that you can't do it. Yeah, the one that I posted in chat. You think you can zoom that sun back in? No, that's not what you said. You said if you use the only reason that it happens is because they don't use a solar filter and it's the glare. And if you use a solar filter, you can't do it. No, what I said was the ones that I've seen did not use a solar filter. And when you zoom in, you can see that the sun hasn't set. But when you zoom you, out, you there's so much see. glare that you that can't is tell. Not, that is not, not what you what said. You said. Well, you, Montreal, exactly. Montreal, can I have stream perms? If we could play it back. We could play it back, whatever. Yeah, we can play it back because left lane, what you said was you jumped in to say the only reason that that happens is because they don't use a solar filter and it causes glare. But if you do use a solar filter, then you're not going to be able to do it. That's exactly So let's what you see said. it. Let's look at it. And, and oh, so that is what you said. This, you wouldn't be able to see the separation anyway. Let, like let's just say if you, use, if you use a proper solar filter was what I said. Oh, what does that mean? Yeah, I see people the using these, these, the, yeah, where it cuts the glare completely out at all zoom levels. Yeah, it's at least ND5. See, there's the excuse, right? So he bought no, the nicest. One, he bought the nicest yes. one that they can have for a drone. He bought like the nicest one that they had for a drone, and they're gonna say that it doesn't count. They're gonna still say no. They're gonna say no. Is it? Is it the there's one just, where he? There's just uh, different types of solar filters. You have like I, ha I have, of, okay, I have the yeah. evidence. I just don't know Speak if it's the solar filter one. Was it solar filter from Timo? Yeah, because there's okay. different ones. You have you have ND and a number, and the higher the number, the less of a filter it is. So it's best to use like ND five. It's very cheap, by the way. So it shouldn't be an excuse that it's too expensive to buy. What, and do use do for they video. make it for drones? It, it it makes no sense anyway. The glare would block the separation, so you wouldn't be able to see it regardless. Like you can see it, right? And then we'll show it to you with the sun filter. Yeah, tell me yeah, how with that the solar filter. That, there's no glare. Wait, tell me how that that helps explain it. If yeah, it looks like, like it's if it looks like the sun is hitting the horizon, you guys are claiming it's going behind the earth, right? And then we zoom in and we see that the sun is there's separation between the sun and the earth. 
How is that no. answered by not using a solar filter? Can we get an example? Or are we just going to keep talking about it? I can, you guys I can said stream it, it, but I'm not allowed to. You guys said it was because of a solar filter, so explain why. No, it's well, because of the glare, and solar filter so removes the glare. Good. When you're okay, so was the explanation room. given. Yeah. So if I remove the glare, I'll see the separation. You won't see the horizon, but you will see the sun. And if it's a full disk, that means when you zoom in, it's still going to be a full disk. When it's a partial disk with yeah, a solar that filter, happens. that means it's under partially under the horizon. When you zoom in, it will still be that partial disk. It won't go back into being a full disk. No, but wait, 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 the glare, the, wait, time out. How can, how can glare explain if it's not a full disc? Do you not understand the question? Yeah. Say it's not a full disc. <laughs> That's what I was and saying. And then you can you, see it as a full filter, disc. Without a solar happen. filter, you will not even see the disc of the sun. You will see a how, point of light. How does glare make it a not full disc? That's not what I said. Okay, so it can't do that, obviously, right? Yeah, glare, glare simply obscures what you're seeing, period. Hey, why don't so it wouldn't make it look like the sun's cut off, though, right? No, no, no. Uh, I wouldn't make any, any definitive statement about a, a glaring sun and whether it is set or not. No, but a glare, you, do. you notice how you just dishonestly avoided the question? So. Not dishonest. Not, no, 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 not dishonest. Absolutely not. Not even a little bit dishonest. Objectively dishonest, yeah, because the question was, can glare cause the sun to look like it's cut off when it's not? And you said, I would never make a, qu a claim about a sun that's gl with glare. Can we maybe bring up a video and actually like visually see what we're talking about? Because just talking yeah, about something that's street, visual. Can you put it, can you put yeah, it's, it's wolfy. If you can give me perms or I can just like send it to people, put but it's really long. Put it in the text chat. Well, well, you need perms for that. Yeah, uh, sorry. Can Ahmad give him perms? Well, I can you put guys it in realize chat, that, but you, you guys realize that every globe claim requires like some type of like final answer that makes it not testable or falsifiable. Every single one of your claims and your script is to make the globe Earth unfalsifiable, and then when you make claims about what can, what uh, is impossible on a flat Earth, and then we show it, you just move the goalpost and make up new excuses. Are we going to get a, no, an example video or not? I, I would, driving, I would love, I would love perms. If anybody has the ability to get me perms to stream, I can just stream it and show you exactly where it is. The the claim that we see sunsets with glare setting behind Earth curve is your claim. The fact that you can zoom into a sunset, one that's been instructed from the bottom up, that's glaring and then have the sky appear under it, which means it wasn't set beyond Earth, below Earth curve, denounces your claim. Exactly. And that also denounces your claim that things can't appear to be disappeared bottom up on a flat Earth. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get an example Angular or not? Size. Angular when do size we get an example? Wait, do and you understand? Now, now do you guys... Doofus is going to claim that he's never seen a sunset. He, he needs a video of a sunset so he can discuss sunsets. Oh, well, are we avoiding right, right, providing wait, 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 evidence? No, no, I can't stream. Fact, what I actually like, can you not hear me? Yes, no, no, there has to be a fast, specific person Rocky's to give you the perm. claim about me and no, say, No, not you, Wes. I, I know you already told me. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't know who in here can give you the perm. But the point is that Red, the room okay agreed. That. Even, even, even the Globers in the room agreed with what Moyox pretending doesn't exist now. Even the Globers just a second ago in unison agreed that, yeah, you can bring the sun back when it looks like it's, it's, it's blocked, but not with a solar filter. Now, Rakia made a point that even if you don't use a solar filter, it still proves the point. And then you said, wait, are we going to see it or not? So do you guys agree that it exists or don't? You, you're just literally wasting our time and using tactics and being dishonest. Who it sounds like you just mis so misrepresented. Nobody said that. Yeah. Well, you guys, yeah you I, did, I feel very much said. misrepresented. No, wait. Yeah, you, wait, did you, wait, wait, wait. Who wants to bet money on it? I don't know. I'm Fucking very poor. So not internet really. bets are stupid. Oh, oh. Well, I pick right. my bets. I'm not like a glober. I don't, I don't, I'm not anonymous and hide behind my keyboard. I, I'm like really public person. Everyone knows yeah. who I really am. You okay. think I would just, I'm sorry for not wanting to be know, a very okay, public lovely. person.
No, okay. but do you understand? Are we going to provide any if it's something we can evaluate? It was something yeah, we can evaluate. Let's rewind right, back not- to when the, all the Globers said the only reason you can bring the sun back is because it wasn't using a solar filter. Do you guys remember saying that? Uh, we said that the glare was was there. The glare was the reason yeah. why. Yes. Okay, so you did acknowledge that the video exists, but said that it was because of glare, and then you need to use a solar filter. So then Rakia made his point, right? And you guys responded by saying that acting like it doesn't exist. So you double spoke. First, you're saying, yeah, it exists. The videos exist, Y'all, but it's just because uh, of glare. No, oh, left lane, stop mumbling through me and listen. Yeah, so you're, 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 you're completely misrepresenting what's being said. No, right. I'm not. You guys just now even agreed again that you're saying that the reason that those videos exist is because of glare. Then you're turning around acting like the videos don't exist. No. What I'm asking for is an example so we can actually discuss the thing that we're trying to discuss. Because now we're just discussing what people remember of the thing. We could actually discuss an observation. Well, let's get back to the point, right? Which is, if you are, if it looks like it's blocked, but it's really not, whether it's because of glare or whatever reason you guys have, it proves that things can look like they're blocked from the bottom up and not just because of Earth curve, right? Well, let's have an example where it looks like it's blocked and it's zoomed in and it doesn't look like it's blocked. Yeah, okay, I said specifically, I said specifically that I wouldn't try to make a determination about a sunset when there's a lot of glare. I wouldn't say anything about it. They're all avoiding the question, but they're not being dishonest. So if I see a dis- something in the distance and oh, it appears to be sakes. blocked, if I see something in the distance that appears to be blocked from the bottom up, but then I can bring it back, that proves that things can appear to be blocked bottom up and not only due to earth curvature, right? So let's have an example to actually They're talk never gonna about. Answer it. You guys They're are never avoiding gonna... actually posting any evidence. They, they and said, just they keep said this that I'm driving a vehicle. Going. You do. Can, can you relax, bro? They said that I can't stream it, so I'm going to post it in chat. Like, I don't know why you're getting so upset about it, bro. Like, relax. Right, because it's been this long and we're still trying to get evidence to discuss. Okay, and no, there's but, nothing but, but, that anyone can, can do about that. Why can't you answer the question in good faith? If because it's a we don't have preface. an example to discuss yet. No, 40, but you can answer the question minutes, in good faith. 40 though. minutes and 20 seconds. 40 minutes and 20 seconds. You, but everyone can still answer the question in good faith, though, right? And, and every single Glober in here is intentionally not answering the question. He's saying, well, let me see it. And then Left Lane saying, I would never make a claim about it. You can't even answer the question in good faith. That's the whole point. That's why I'm getting pissed off because you guys are literally disrespecting the room and just intentionally obfuscating and pretending that we're stupid and avoiding the points didn't this honestly. It's a simple question. Even if it's hypothetical, good faith dictates that you would respond to it, right? And the question is, if an object appears to be obstructed from the bottom up, but then 40, you can bring 20 it pesticides. back, then you can bring it back. Do you agree that would mean that an object can appear to be obstructed bottom up, but it wouldn't be because of Earth curvature? No, I don't agree with that. Also, Wolfie, oh, in the not? video that you po- oh, Wolfie, in the video that you posted, no solar filter was used. So, dude, drop the David Weiss video, man. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't show anything either. And there was yeah. no wait, 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 left lane, wait. Left, left, left lane said he doesn't agree with it. Explain why not. Yeah, I don't agree with your wording. That that doesn't represent what I would say in representing myself. Oh, you just baselessly said not on again. You can't even specify what what was what was my wording. You couldn't even tell me what my wording was for money right now. Yeah, yeah, it was it was kind of jibbled up, twisted around, and and spat back out, and yeah. didn't sound like what I said. Yeah, there you go. So look, and and but he's not dishonest, guys. Right? I'm the jerk for telling him he's dishonest. So we'll yeah. just repeat it again. If there's an object, yeah, call in the me disc- dishonest again, with it. And what? We're just, yeah, what are you we're just do? watching it disappear. That's what we're just watching it with the sun filter on it right now. What are you going to do? Left right? Yeah. Uh, hold on. When have you seen a sunset look like this? Here, bro. Look. Here, I'll post it for you. What do you mean? Check it's, this what do you out. Mean? I got. Look, I got there. the OG MD... video that David Wise is talking about. Here you go. Do we agree that if an object in the distance appears to be obstructed from the bottom up, but we can bring it back, that would prove that objects can appear to be obstructed bottom up by something other than Earth curve? 
Uh, well, beasticles. we don't have an example of that happening yet. Wait, 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 wait. Dude, they'll never answer it. They'll wait. never answer it. The most wait, dishonest pieces, dude. Right, guys, we're talking I've about a hypothetical that doesn't seem to exist yet until people. somebody can post one. Yeah, and in, be- to, in answering to this be- Beasticles guy. All what do you mean, bro? You're We've been watching it. What? And, and the 16 right, but is we a never very... see a sunset where the sun looks like a circle and then just fades in the same size circle before it disappears completely. Sunsets don't look like that. Also, ND16 is a very bad solar filter. It's basically not a solar filter. Oh, it's not filter. a good enough solar filter? Okay. Yeah, no, look, look, you, you can say whatever it. you want to say, but wow. objectively, like, in, in reality, on the Earth we live on, that they tell us is 25,000 miles in circumference, that objectively, by itself, much less the other 1,900 different things that prove it, proves that we don't live on the ball that they tell us that we live on with the dimensions they tell us like that's what it 100 percent proves i mean it's irrefutable it's uh, unequivocal yeah, right. you're referring to yeah, yeah, you're disagree. referring to this observation well where you we can see disagree the sun. but i i know it for an objective fact 100 percent certainty with zero doubt so okay oh, you right. well, you're referring to an, an observation that we're all looking at which is the sun looks like a circle and that circle fades out over time until it completely uh fades into the background we don't observe sunsets to look like that, so clearly some other variable was introduced. Would you like to know what that is? I would. I got a question. Okay. The, the camera's way out of focus. Ta-da. It was so, real easy. So if the apparent uh, location of the sun was actually just a reflection, would we see any angular change in size? That's not enough information to come to an answer. What, what Are you sure? Question? Yes, I, I am sure. I, what the question was is, is if the, the apparent location of the sun was actually just a reflection, would we see any change in angular size? That's not enough information to come to yeah, an I answer. I fucking heard you. Somebody asked me what the question was. I'm repeating it. Chill back, bro. <laughs> Dude, the fucking emotions are so crazy. <laughs> right, so I can give you two different scenarios. One where the angular size is not changing as the sun, as the object, we'll say, in our example, is appearing to move. And another example where the object is appearing to move. In each one, the angular size would either change or not change, depending on the geometry of the situation. So, again, just saying that the apparent location is a reflection doesn't tell us whether or not the angular size will change. It could That's do fine. both, depending on the actual geometry of the situation. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, so what's up with this this sun fade out video where it stays a circle the entire time and then just fades into the background? Why why do we have this video when we don't see that in reality? You do see that in reality. You just have to be under the right conditions. Usually, dry air higher elevations where you get out of the magnification of the low over the the land surface uh magnification of the atmosphere acting more like a lens like when i go look at the sunset yeah no matter where i am when i go look at a sunset the sun is progressively uh behind the surface of the earth unless it's too cloudy or foggy those no, are the it's only not. situations where i won't see the sun progressively yeah, it just appears from because the bottom of the angular up. size of your eye you can't that's how you that. explain that Simple. No, yeah. the angular size of your eye does not determine how something else will uh, be obscured. Well, wait, wait, wait. So, so, you can't see it because it's too far. Oh my god! Oh my god! Right, yeah. that's not Wolfie. an actual explanation. Wait, 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 wait. So, geez, wow. uh, Wolfie. So, do you claim that your eye aperture is too small to see the sun because now, it's so far fourth away? Fourth person tries to get in when you clearly heard other people trying Bro, to get in. Bro, now we're going to introduce the inverse square law of light. Okay, all right. Okay. The inverse no, square no, law just, does not. Uh, I just asked you if, if you claim that the aperture of your eyes is too small. Man, you are such Bro, a bullshit. Do you know how many things depend on whether or not you can see a, a light in the sky? I asked you a question, very simple one. Yes or no? Yeah, can we please let people like go and respond and not, not other people cut in? Uh, I'm please? not responding to that. You guys can keep going. All right. Like, let's do like out. tennis. Question, answer. Question, answer. Yeah. Well, he, he, it was pr- proposed that you never see the sun go down into a dot, which, which is clearly not true. There's many videos of this. People who aren't flat earthers have taken this 
So why that's being denied, I don't know. Now, I'm not going to deny that when I'm at the surface, most of the sunsets that I've seen over my lifetime appear to be obstructed bottom up. But for me to say that's because the sun is going below the earth, like Doofus just did, in this day and time is just ludicrous because we know there's multiple ludicrous. reasons that it could appear that way. Yeah, the, the right, songwriter. So, so you made a claim about what I said again. Would you like to know what I actually said and the reason why what you said was wrong? So I said, you said so we don't see the sun the as earth. the same size circle. Thanks, Rakia. We don't see the sun as the same size circle fading out into the background. What you said is uh, that I said we don't see the sun shrinking to a point. And those are, of course, two different claims. I can address that one, too, if you want. But you got to actually represent what I said accurately. Well, sunsets, how we see the sunsets normally is that we see them go down and be obstructed bottom up without changing size. That's what you're saying, right? But you said no, that's, that's different. Skirt. That's different than the video that I, the, the video we were all pointed to was the sun was a circle that was the same size, not obstructed <laughs> at all. And the entire time it was fading into the background. It was the same size circle, not partially obstructed. Do you not know point. why that is? Do you really not then, know why? Hang on, he addressed me. And right, because we never sentence, see that in reality, oh dude. I, I and in that same after, sentence, in that same sentence, you said that the sun goes down into the obstructed bottom up because it goes below the earth in the same exact sentence, doofus. So I'm addressing both the things you said, and I'm also inserting that we do see the sun at higher altitudes usually in drier conditions without the moisture in the air appear to go from one size into a dot. Now, I don't care who said it. I was just addressing that point as well. So maybe you should listen and understand what you said in the same sentence. Yeah, like, and, and in the same and just real quick, the reason why that is is because the ball's physically getting smaller because it's moving. Like, well, it's not physically getting smaller; it's looking like that because it's moving away from us, right? Okay, and let this, Doofus respond. The, the second After thing, you. just real quick, just real quick, the reason why it doesn't look like it's getting smaller in that video is because of how drastically he zoomed in on the sun. Like, it's taken with like a telescope or something. I can't remember what it is, but like that's the reason why it's not getting smart when in and when we observe it in real life if you're standing you know on the beach it actually does look like it's getting smaller and curving to the right away from you that's what it looks like in all cases it's half uh, not from the southern hemisphere but anyway the 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 sun and every time i zoom in on it and get high zoom and i control for glare the sun gets obscured progressively from the bottom up. It does not look like it's a circle that's the same size that simply loses brightness and fades into the background. That's never happened to me. I've never recorded that. So their excuse is that, like, yes, yeah, sometimes the sun does disappear up above the horizon with a hard line cut off that makes it disappear from the bottom up. But actually, it's only possible if it's blocked by Earth curve. You guys are nobody crushing. Said those things. Yeah, nobody said that either. Oh, so, okay, so then you agree that sun can look like it's disappearing from the bottom up, and that can happen not because of Earth curve? <sighs> yes or no? We were trying to discuss an observation, and now you're bringing a different kind of observation. If you would like to discuss that one, we can change gears to that one. Oh, well, it was just the first question you guys kept avoiding, but you guys did just avoid it. Avoid the point that ends the whole conversation, whatever. No, what started the conversation was we can zoom in on something that's partially obstructed and bring the obstruction back into view. The obstructed part yes. back into view, I should say. And then, and then I asked you guys four times, if you can see the sun disappear from the bottom up above the horizon, would that prove that the sun can disappear from the bottom up due to something other than Earth curve? Well, it depends on the situation. If we're talking about an inferior mirage, that means that Earth curve and refraction are both involved. <laughs> it's like well, it's like the, the question answer. answers. It, it, you don't like the, the answer. I get that you don't like the answer, but it's still an answer. No, no, you're implying that's the only scenario it could happen. And of course, the question answers itself, right? If the sun disappears from the bottom up above the horizon then do you agree the sun could disappear from the bottom up because of something other than Earth curvature? Well, you'd have to explain what the situation is. And in the situations that I've seen, there's an inferior mirage. And an inferior mirage is giving you a view of the top of the object that you're 
that's being reflected or appears to be reflected. And in that case, the surface of the earth would still have to get in the way of the sun for the light to not be able to reach you. Okay, the answer to the question, obviously, for those that aren't just like desperately playing games, is of course, if the sun is disappearing from the bottom up as it goes away from you, and that happens up above the horizon, it can't be the horizon blocking it. Because we see you disappearing from the bottom up above the horizon, which means that the sun can look like it's disappearing from the bottom up, but not due to Earth curvature. Okay, so let's get an example. <laughs> okay, just a second. <laughs> you can't answer the question, though. It just shows that you guys are just... Right. I did with an inferior mirage. You didn't like the answer, I know, you, but you don't say I didn't answer, because that doesn't make any sense. Also, I'm still looking for an example where something's partially obstructed, you zoom in, and now the obstruction is out of the way. Okay, now watch. When I post the example right now, they're going to move the goalposts and start making up new excuses, and I want everyone just to remember what the question was. Can it be caused by something other than Earth curvature? What they're now about to do is start invoking things other than Earth curvature, but they couldn't answer the question when we asked them seven times. Well, I, I already really, I answered with an inferior mirage. That's the only yeah, but way. I already answered with an inferior mirage, though. Is that the only way? That's the example you're going to bring. <laughs> this is going to be so funny. Okay, now what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. You heard my answer. Now what? Okay, so, okay. Do all the Globers agree that what's happening in this picture is there's an inferior mirage? Come on. Let's hear it. I'm tired of this fucking conversation. Someone answer. It's so stupid. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, no what, Globers want to normal answer logic what a normal logical person would think is, wow, look at that. The sun is cut off with this hard horizontal line up above the horizon. So that proves that you don't need some physical earth curvature blocking it. There's optical effects that can cause it. Of course, we know that there are horizontal layers of the Atmos. And if the Atmos is, has certain conditions or has certain thickness, right, the sun will begin to disappear beyond that, that point where everything vanishes, right? And that's clearly what's happening here. The reason that it's horizontal is because we have parallel horizontal layers of the atmosphere. There's a certain thickness and certain conditions, so the sun begins to disappear into that point, which is why we see it's far above the, the surface of the ground, and it's disappearing from the bottom up, right? So you guys have to now admit that, yeah, objects can disappear from the bottom up without Earth curvature, and the fact that you're going to reify Earth curvature in your definition of begging the question that it is an inferior mirage doesn't refute the point you're still invoking an optical effect up above Earth curvature. Okay, and you're sure yeah, there's neither no... Yeah, neither the same refraction. Okay, but, but you're, in, you're sure that there's no inferior mirage. You're absolutely positive. No, I I'm not... No, what I'm saying is that we know for a fact that there's optical effects that isn't just a physical Earth curvature blocking the sun. You guys all think that you all claim that the sun has to go behind a physical hump of earth curvature to be blocked in the bottom. And we've literally observed it not doing that. But you guys just can't admit it. You have to just, you can't admit it because you have to create a caricature of flat earth. And that's very telling. Okay. So how did my answer that I gave you already not fit the observation that you provided? Oh, well, my, my, you didn't. My question was, can it happen? The answer is yes. You're not. Gonna, you're not going to address that. I'm not going to argue with you about whether or not this is an inferior mirage. It's my, my question and point is very simple, and and this is why none of the other ballers are saying anything. Either. See, it's like it's like in reality, we've gone out and see the sun. It disappears from the bottom up with a hard horizontal cutoff, right? And it does that up above the Earth. It does exactly what we see the sunsets look like near the surface of, like, say, the ocean. It does that same thing up above the Earth. So it doesn't take a genius to put together like, oh, this is an optical effect that can happen. Not just due to the Earth being a ball. Okay, and when the surface is clearly what's in the way, then what? But how is the surface clearly what's in the way? We're sitting here looking at it when it's not. Right, we have this example where you're not sure if there's an inferior mirage there or not. That's fine. We also have other examples where the surface is clearly what's in the way. 
like no, the one the I point remains. You get that the point remains. The point is that the claim that it can only happen because of Earth curvature blocking the sun is a lie, and it's stupid, and you guys should stop saying it, but you will all keep saying it after today anyway. Yeah, this well, is under typical uh, circumstances on the surface of the Earth. The air is arranged such that the more optically dense portion of the air is below and less optically dense air is above, which means that the sun is higher than its geometric location. Well, where it appears is higher hey, than its geometric location. So then Doofus, would you when we have observations at night where we can't here? see the sun anymore, thanks, Essie. So when we have Sorry, observations I thought you were at night done, where we... Sorry, I bro. I waited. Sorry, my bad. So when we have observations at night where we can't see the sun anymore, the light can't reach us at all from any direction, then what? Oh, no, we're not doing I a thin one. this picture I'll... an orange swan. This yeah, is like hey, one dude. of the best pictures <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. I know, isn't it awesome? Hey, uh, what do the other Globers think of the picture I just tried? It's freaking awesome, bro. It, this is an orange swan right here. We made another term. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Could be a, a fog layer, or it's possible that there's some refraction going on out in the distance. Oh, okay. So I don't really want to hear what you think it could be because it has to fit within your predetermined worldview. I want you to admit that the sun can disappear with a hard horizontal cutoff from the bottom up, up above the Earth because of an optical effect, which disproves the claim it can only happen because of Earth curve. Well, yeah, that, that, like I said, it's either could be a fog bank out in the distance, or it could be that that's some severe refraction looming effect that gives you a false horizon there. So not Earth curve. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you, even, you even believe? Wait, do you even believe what you just said? Like you believe it? Sure. You know, you've seen the the ships that that look like they're sitting, you know, many feet above the surface. That could be the same thing there. What, you think the sun does the same thing as a boat? Wow, yeah, everything that's coming to your eye from oh. that area is coming through the same atmosphere. Oh, so to, oh. so the sun can get refracted up the same amount as something on the surface? Why not? More, more uh, so. You guys told me that it was not, it was it can't. You guys told me that it can't, though. You told me the astronomical refraction is different. There's a maximum on the sun, and it refracts yeah, at a different rate that. than what's on the ground. That's what every globe yes, said. It's, it's more than. Astronomical refraction is always, or almost always, more than a terrestrial refraction. No. Oh, almost always? So didn't you guys <laughs> say that there's a maximum? Isn't there a maximum? What maximum? Astronomical you said that it refraction can't go more than is half typically a degree. 37 arc minutes at the horizon. You know that, right? You guys said the sun can only go half a degree. Okay, which goes into what I just said. The astronomical refraction at the horizon is typically 37 arc minutes. You heard that before, now, right? Now listen very carefully. If you guys say that the sun can only go half a degree, so we have some observations towards the surface that you guys claim an insane rate of refraction, right? Like an insane what? rate. How much? So then, wait, wait, listen. Then on those days, wouldn't that mean the sun would be affected by the same amount? Meaning on whatever day we have a long distance observation, the sun would have to be lifted up that same amount, which means that the sunsets would be longer on the days that we see further, right? Uh, depends on the conditions we're talking about. Because if you're saying what? an insane amount is a 1,000 feet over 10 miles, that's not actually an insane amount. Uh, no, see, this is the point. You guys, I just trapped you guys. You can't have your cake and eat you it. You didn't because you didn't no. say what an insane amount is. No, no. You no, have listen, no idea what matter. an insane no. amount is. No, listen carefully. Listen carefully. It doesn't matter because you guys are now claiming that the rate is the same. Right? You're claiming that's, the rate's no. the same. That's what Left Lane just said. And you guys said, he said it's going through the same part of the Atmos. It's going to be the same. It's going to have the same kind of effect. There's going to be more of an effect by magnitude. Okay, so then, so every time that we see really extreme refraction, according to you guys on the surface, because we see way too far, then that would mean that on those days, the sun would always be, the sunset would always be longer, right? It again, it depends on what you're calling 
uh, what we're attributing to refraction. Because you said an it's, insane oh, amount doesn't... earlier, but you didn't specify what that is. What is an insane amount? What's it? No, no, that part doesn't matter. We're talking about the relationship. Oh, it does. No, no, yeah, it doesn't. If we're talking about because the... if the amount is actually. <laughs> Because if the amount is actually 0 0.08 degrees, for instance, that's not an insane amount. But say that was the amount we're referring to, then 37 arc minutes is greater than that amount, and it's not really going to change it by much. No, but this is the this is game set match, right? Like, if, if it really is. Because if you're saying that it refracts the same rate, that means there's a proportionate relationship. So every time we see further than we should, we should see a proportionate effect on the sun. No, because not every part of the atmosphere is the same part that we're... Not every part of the atmosphere is, has the same gradient as what we're looking through to see the distant object on the surface of the Earth. Wait, what? But he just said it's going through the same place. That's why it's the same. Right, and that location, the part we're at, looking at the distant object, the gradient is more steep than usual, which wouldn't really change how much uh, the sun is uh, deflected because... The air that it goes through is not where we're located. I know you guys can see the devil speak. Like I know that every normal person here can hear the devil speak. Where left lane said, "No, well, yeah, the sun's going to be refracted up the same way as the stuff on the Earth because it's going through the same part of the atmosphere." Then when I Did point out that? the implications, yes, is that the words he said? Yes. Did he yeah, say I don't at think the same so. rate? Were those the words that he said? I didn't. Oh, hear he doesn't at the think same so. Rate. Okay, left lane, what'd you say then? Oh, he wants. He wants uh, to I said that. I said that. Uh, no, I said that every everything that you see there is coming through the same atmosphere. So, what's the problem with the sun and the horizon being refracted? The same. You said the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now I don't, you I don't know. I don't know if I said the same or not. I mean, I but do. you're going to try to tie some kind of uh, gotcha with that. I don't know. No, I know. That's what you said. That's right. So. So you guys can walk it back now, whatever, because obviously the implications of that is if we go out yeah, and we see whatever we see on the surface, we should see a proportionate effect on the sun. We should see the sun no, take no. longer to set on the days that we can see further. We shouldn't have to see in a proportionate effect the same on the sun. If we're in an area where we're looking through a 10 mile span of air and that air has a steeper than usual gradient, then the remaining however many miles you want to claim to the sun hasn't really changed much because that air is higher up off the surface of the earth which we also agreed earlier has less variability so realistically if the 10 miles of air that we're looking through at the distant object only changes by zero point or changes the apparent position of the distant object by 0 0.1 degrees then the sun is only going to be up an additional uh what is that six arc minutes from its usual 37 and that's not so really he that just much now admitted he just conceded that there is a proportionate effect. <laughs> that's not <laughs> proportional. No, because if you have something in the distance that's deflected by 0 0.1 degrees, that's way more significant than the sun being deflected from 37 arc minutes to 43 arc minutes. That's not. Do you know what the word proportion? You, you no, it means it changes in proportion to it, directly related to it. There's some type of relationship or ratio that would happen consistently. It would be proportionate. What I just described is not a ratio. Well, yeah, because you're going to avoid that, of course. This is the point that I'm making again. This has been an awesome day for you Flat Earth on here, honestly. No, That's I'm all. not the point. I'm, no, oh, I wasn't, actually. So I'm making a point, right, which is that what happens is every single time you boil their, comp their argument down, it's always unfalsifiable nonsense every time so right now it's like i'm pointing out well if what you're saying is true well then we could go make observations on the surface see what they are and then whenever if the sun sets right around that same time we should be able to know how long we're going to see the sun so that's a testable equation like we should know how much refraction is going to affect the sun because of how much it's refract it's affecting the stuff on the surface which is obviously logical and if your claim is true would be the case but you guys know that if that you actually claim that I can now go out on the earth and actually test it and see if that's true. So you have to avoid making any claim that can actually be tested. And I know that you guys are conscious of it because you start to think in your mind, like, wait a minute, that might could be disproven. So then you refuse to make the claim. And I'm just highlighting I, that you've done it all day. I, I don't know. I just made a claim. A six arc minutes is not really that significant compared to 37. I did just make that claim.
It's pretty easy oh, to find out what that would do to a sunset, too. A six arc minute deviation to the sun would just cause the sunset to only be... Oh, how much longer is that? Can anybody else do the math? How about how about you, Witsit? Can you do the math on that? No, I don't know how long it'll take the sun. No, it's your stupid claim. Okay, well then I'll well, do this the is math what's even, Good job, it's your claim. And this is what's even funnier. It's like what I'm saying is, okay, in the scenarios that you guys invoke very extreme refraction on the surface, we should see the sun set longer. One degree every four minutes, so 0.4 degrees, or 0.4 minutes. Oh, so the sun would only be up for longer than 24 seconds, or longer by 24 seconds. Is that going to be something of, you really want to, is that something you really want to go out and test with it? In the case of what fra- what rate of terrestrial refraction? 0.1 degrees, 24 seconds is all you're looking for. Okay, but what is that, like, what is that in terms of your, your equation for standard refraction? Is that standard refraction? Uh, depends on the conditions. I mean, 0.1 degrees over the span of 10 miles is actually stronger than standard refraction. Okay. Now, the standard refraction being 7 over 6R, I mean, you guys say that in certain scenarios, you can that it can be like 400 over 6R, right? You guys, in fact, tell us that there is no limit and uh, that you need to get above the surface, right? So now this is the point. This First of all, yeah, that is absolutely something I'd want to go test is to see if it's actually up 30 seconds longer. That's right. Because your claim should be testable. You guys want to avoid that. Now, what we would want to do is find a day. We'd want to go out and find a day where we see way too far. And it would require like you guys invoking, quote unquote, extreme refraction, which we all know you guys have invoked multiple times. So when we see what you guys call extreme refraction, because we see something way too far, we should then be able to watch the sun and it should be up longer. Okay, so after all that, uh, it's 24 seconds, you're not going to be able to test that reliably because sunset times are down to the minute, not down to the second. Oh, so then let's just get it to where it's up to minutes. Because again, like uh, there are cases that you guys invoke extreme refraction. And everyone in the room understands the logic of what I'm saying. If you're claiming that the sun is going to be lifted up the same as, or with the same effects as what the objects on the ground are, and then it's very simple. When we have what you need to be extreme refraction, that should be doing that to the sun as well. It's a way to test out if your claim of extreme refraction is correct. Right, but in the example given, extreme refraction would be 0.1 degrees over 10 miles. That would only give you an additional 24 seconds of sun. That's it. Okay, well, what if, what if, wait, there are times of refraction you guys claim more than 0. 0.01 degrees. 0. 0.1 is what about? I said. Okay, so what about whenever you guys have to claim 0. 0.3? Okay, when do we do that? I would like to I have some examples. Are you guys saying there's no observations where you guys need that, that rate of refraction? I'm not aware of one. If you can bring one, we can discuss it. What's the rate of refraction in the black swan? Well, I could do the math for you real quick. Hold on. Uh, according to what? Ruhif, uh, according to infinite radius Ruhif, it's infinite over six R. <laughs> I think Ruhif already. Well, the sun, did the, the sun should have never set. <laughs> <laughs> the sun should have never set. It should still be up. Yo, you In- know what's infinite. so crazy, man? It's like, it's like, bro. Like this is kind of this is a side point. I do think it's interesting because. I found out that you guys are conscious of how you make your claim unfalsifiable, and I find it to be a good thing to highlight. What's it? Everyone agrees that that picture, just like, like I'm just letting you guys know, I'm letting you guys know, that the desperate attempts you guys go through to explain it away, uh, the, the normal person that comes in here and say that they see that picture, which is from a video, of the sun being cut off horizontally from the bottom, like half the sun missing with a horizontal cutoff, and they see that that's happening way above the horizon, they're like, whoa, wait a minute. I used to think that that can only happen because it's going behind the curve of the Earth. But here I am seeing the sun can do that up above the Earth. And they're going to be like, that looks exactly like a sunset does. And they're not going to do mental gymnastics and start making stuff up and try super hard to believe it. The normal person is like, well, I'm obviously now never going to say that sunsets are impossible on a flat Earth. Because we can see clearly that optical effects can cause that to happen. You want the answer to uh, the question you asked me earlier? 
the upper bound on the black swan is 0 0.07 degrees. So I don't know where you're getting 0.3 from. What? So you're <laughs> so the what is the upper way? Just, just just explain it. We're at one foot. We look out, and the curvature of the Earth should be at 1.2 miles. We see the horizon over 10 miles. And you're claiming the rate of refraction required is 0 0.07 degrees. Right. That's all that would require in order for a curved surface that's curved by the amount that the globe model claims uh, to appear flat from that vantage point. Actually, it's less than that because, as I said, it's an upper bound. Okay. So 0 0.07, as far as I know, is a lot less than 0 0.3. So there's not a relationship with like your seven over six R and the amount of degrees it's in relation to obviously like the height above, it's the angle of you and the height above the earth. I did the trigonometry, man. If I wanted a curved surface that had curved away from me, as you guys like to put it, if I want to match the tangential drop from 10 miles away to make it so that it's not dropping anymore, now I have a right triangle. Now that right triangle, I did the trigonometry on it. The angle at the point of the observer is less than 0 0.07 degrees. I said, okay, Jesus, bro. Like, you don't listen. But hey, what, what I do find funny is like, the reason that this conversation started was because left lane tried to say the sun was loomed up here. <laughs> okay, um, that's a cool story. But if everyone sees the picture, clearly this proves our point, which is that the sun can look like it's disappearing from the bottom up with like a hard cut off, like a horizontal line, because of optical effects. All right, and what was my answer? Uh, you claimed it was an inferior mirage. Well, for a vertically symmetrical object, that's certainly highly prob probable. Well, I mean, so you agreed. You agree uh, inferior mirage is an optical effect? Indeed. And the only way that... Nice! Be... Yeah, and the only way... For the sun, for sun's light to not reach you anymore from any angle, is if it gets blocked by something. Oh, that's what you're saying, of course, but um, that that just isn't true. We know that there's attenuation, and so we actually see, of course, sometimes we we see the we see the sun longer, we see the light longer than we see the sun, right? Like the, the it doesn't immediately get dark once the sun is gone from view. So, I mean, you guys, of course, claim, oh, and it's wrapping around it. And then if we're like, well, look, the time zone match. Whoa, it's refraction. But the refraction wasn't there when the sun was there, but then the sun left, and then, then, then it refracted, and it bent the light back up, and we saw it longer. Y your whole belief system's unfalsifiable. Can you at least admit that? Uh, we don't claim that twilight is because of refraction. That's not a claim anybody makes. Uh, it absolutely is a claim that people have made, including Zanuck, <laughs> which is that if the twilight is too long, he says it's because of refraction. Well, that's he's being weird. But as far as I know, twilight has been easily explained by the light hitting the atmosphere and the, the atmosphere scattering the light. And then some of that light is still making it to us because it's above us. Yeah, that's you know, what I've sun, always thought. Yeah, because the yeah, sun okay, sets later. But what about or, when we see it longer? Right, that's what I'm trying to get finished explaining. Because we know that from higher altitude, we see the sun set later. So that air is still being lit up by the sun when the sun already sets for somebody on the ground. Okay. So is there a prediction that we can test? Or is this another one of the unfalsifiable claims? And no matter how long we see it, it works on the globe. Uh, you know for a fact that if you gain altitude, you see the sun set later. You already know that this didn't is a thing. You didn't answer it, my question. It is question. an answer said, to your question, it... because that's how twilight happens. But that wasn't answering my question. I said, is, this a, is that a testable thing? Like, can we know the amount, right, so that we can then test it to see if it's longer, or is it just another unfalsifiable claim where no matter how long we see it, you'll just claim it works on the globe? Because yeah, we can obviously go higher that? and look at this. Stuff. Good. Look at what I just posted, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's another I'm killer sure. right there for them. Okay, you're 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 certain that the clouds are the horizon, though. 
<laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Is the sun under the horizon there? But can we still see it? I, I don't know. You tell me. Know. I've never seen the sun below the surface of the earth, but I have seen the sun through clouds before. Interesting picture, right? It's just a visual. A refraction. Refraction. So, yeah, that's not the what does the sun do? What does the sun do when it's infinite over six hour refraction? What does the sun look like at that point? <laughs> a disc? It's refracted again. I'm not and sure again. exactly who's claiming infinite over six R anyway. Infinite radius Ruhef is was claiming it. All right. If you have an infinite radius, essentially it's approximating a flat plane. Oh. I wonder if the sun set that day. Yeah, I was and here when then the was sun wouldn't be obstructed by the surface of the earth. So infinite R? Right. This the radius of curvature for a flat plane is infinite. I hope this is not the first time you guys have heard this. Yeah, so I'm wondering if the sun set that day. That'd be interesting. Maybe the sun didn't set that day because that can't happen on a on an infinite radius thing, right? I'm betting that this was referring to a terrestrial observation over, say, ten miles or less. Also, you've never seen the sun under the ground? You, you, you haven't seen that picture they use the neutrinos to take a picture when looking down to see the sun? You know what I meant was a phys uh, visible light spectrum photo. Anyways, carry on to whatever you guys are doing. I'm not getting wrapped up into this rigmarole. Actually, neutrinos aren't even photons, so technically that's not even light. So address my picture, uh, if you like. Is that, is that if, if I would ask you where's the horizon in that picture, what, what would you say in relation to the sun? I don't know. I thought the answer I already gave was pretty good. <laughs> Which is what? Right, that I've never seen the sun below the surface of the earth anywhere, anytime, ever. But I have seen the sun through a cloud bank. But if the sun wasn't there and I would ask you where the horizon is, the apparent horizon is, where would you point to? See, that's the question. Would you say it's clouds? Would you say, like, uh, the text is, like, lit up here. Everybody has an opinion. So would you say it's a visual effect, like the picture Wits had posted, that the sun <laughs> appears like, like it's a horizon right there, and it's right above the horizon. You can clearly see it, but there's another horizon, so it's a visual effect. Would you say this is a visual effect also? Did I come through there? Yes. So guys, what's up? Uh, you're reluctant to answer here. We got two pictures that are like wh whoppers, I think, today. And you guys are reluctant to uh, talk about them. I already gave my answer for both of them. I actually wanted to get back to the guy who said we can zoom in on something that's partially obstructed and we can see the obstructed portion revealed again. And we still don't have that. Yeah, I'm sure you want to change the subject back to that, but okay, no, no worries. Oh, well, I'd, I'd like to know what I the want to point out that this, this video, this, this, is, this video is super cool. It shows that the sun sets up above the horizon with another horizontal cutoff, making the sun be obstructed from the bottom up, and uh, that Where proves that an from? optical effect. Uh, uh, I don't know. Someone made the video over the sun. I mean, over the ocean. Yeah. 
can there be land in the in the fog over there in the distance? Uh, I don't think that it's land, but if the land just so happens to be perfectly horizontal. Yeah, like sometimes it is, yeah. So that's a possibility, what? right? How is it? I've oh, been can to you Holland. give me an example of that? Yeah, I've been to Holland. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it's very yeah, flat. Yeah. And if you look at the coast of the UK, there's a lot of flat spots. And then the mountains. Oh, wait, the, you think that there's mm -hmm. land on the other side of the water and it's like a giant plateau? So you're just yeah, just like like in... Oh, desperate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just denied flat earth. <laughs> what? No, you guys are just desperate. This proves that the sun can appear to disappear from the bottom up due to optical effects in the atmos. That's a fact. No, it doesn't. Let me guess you you're denying that? Oh, so you're, is land, it possible right? or not possible? Is it possible or not possible, yes or no? To, to optic, what, what optical phenomena do you need? I mean, no, any of them. Anything optical, yes or no? Any of them. Uh, not, not any of them, no. no. Like, can you, is there any optical effect, buddy? No, I, I'm not sure. Because no one's demonstrated that. Oh, that's crazy. Hey, uh, Doofus, you want to help this guy out? Oh, he went on mute so fast. He's like, oh, I don't agree with the other glow bro shit. Uh, no, I'm messing with a baby right now. Mm -hmm. Well, Doofus was just talking yeah, about how, how it is. Doofus was just talking about how it is possible. Uh, I think I mentioned well, that on, uh, for an inferior mirage to make it so that you can't see the sun anymore from any angle would still have to be obstructed by some kind of surface somewhere. Yeah. Oh, so an optic dude. This is what's so funny, right? You guys first, first some globers will say, "Oh, it could be cloud." And then, oh, this could be an inferior mirage. And then Levin says, oh, it's looming up. And then someone else says, oh, there might, there might be land out there that's perfectly horizontal. And then I say, oh, so, the, so know, it can disappear without horizontal. just being Earth curvature. No, 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 it can't be. No. Well, so, how do you know that it's perfectly horizontal? But where is that concept uh, taken from uh, that you posted, the one that disappeared in the mid, mid air? Is that I'll, have to, I'll have to find it, man. I don't know. Because the location is important yeah. to, to be able to answer the question. Yeah, because there might be land there. Um, there yeah, are we, land we don't know what, what the picture is taken. So. Yeah. Just above the ocean, man, let's be real. Yeah, but I mean... You don't even know if it's from an ocean. It can be from a lake what? or a sea. So what you're saying is every time we see a hard cutoff at the bottom of a sunset, there's probably land in front of it? I would tend to agree with you. But that's clearly yeah, the ocean, the and there's clearly not land there. Basically, you're saying that there's land there, but we can't see the land. And if that's a cool story. So you, and you're, then, you're saying that you don't see anything, so there's no land. Let me finish, you know? buddy. If you could use your brain, you would know that if you're claiming that there's land there, you're still saying that it can something can be gone in the distance, right? Well, optically, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Optically, right? Well, you're saying that optically, yeah, so you the well, right? right? Nothing. Let's see if you can use your brain here. Yes. If He's there's land the there, service, if there's the land there, again, like if always. there's land there, if there's land there, why can't we see it? Oh, how do you know that you can't see it? There's a dark spot on the sun. When you reference that to the sky, it's darker. <laughs> <obvious. laughs> Just say the light attenuation. Can you not see it? Exactly, exactly. They're afraid to say it. Dude, if, there, if your they excuse that there it. could be, if there's land there, well, before the sun gets over behind this uh, supposed land, we can't see the land. So why can't we see the land if there's land there? Because sometimes there's fog. <laughs> so like in the picture. You're, you're nervously... Oh, so there's land there, but there's fog. Is it possible that the fog could block the sun? You cut out. Is it possible that the the land the fog could block the sun? Fog is typically not dense enough to block an intense light source like the sun, but can easily block out the land. <laughs> Which is us receiving the reflection of the light source. And what's so funny? It's like okay, you're so if you're saying that it could be fog, the light from the sun. Yeah. Yeah, I would disagree like, with that adamantly. You haven't been in dense fog before. It's like we're just to the point where they just shamelessly say absurd things. 
Okay, well, let's find out why they're absurd. So you're saying that's that's absurd. It's, an, it's an infinite ocean, right? It never ends, because there's no land. So, you, buddy, when you, <laughs> you're saying there is land. <laughs> I mean... Oh, good, Rocky, we land. agree there's land. There you go. They're both ways, bro. They can make a hard cut off of the, the sunrise. Sunset. Roboting life. So in between the viewer and the sun. Yeah, I didn't hear anything he said he was cutting on. Yeah, this is simple, man. I mean, uh, you're saying that the light could be attenuated because of the density and turbidity of the medium, if you're, even if you claim fog. Did you know that? But it's, if that means that we can't see the land through the fog, then sure, I guess I'm saying that. Do you know what light attenuation is? I'm not sure. It hmm. stops. stops. How long have you been of, talking uh, about flat Earth? You don't know what light attenuation is? Yeah, I'm not familiar with all the terms. Okay, well. It's the absorption rate I mean, of you light. Don't know, you don't know what density or mass is, so I mean. Good one, man. So it's, yeah, uh, it's I, I know fuck. I okay. What's I can answer those questions better than you, but we're not gonna so I track here. So it's the absorption it's rate of yeah, light. Just gas light. Gas light is more so. How am I gas? Do you, define gaslighting. Why are you using words you don't know what they mean? Well, you're making claims that people make claims. So I mean, that, that's uh, it's kind of uh, what's the what's the right word? Maybe fire fire hosing or some shit like that. I make claims that people make claims. Yeah, you're saying, oh, well, this is what the Globus claim, and this is what they claim, and this is uh, this is what you guys do when you're arguing, and so this is all these. Uh, no, that would be a stereotype fallacy. No, but, well, yeah, I think, I think, I think you used it on me a few times. Yeah, I think that's fire hosing, right? Well, it would be called a stereotype fallacy, but I'm I'm obviously speaking generalized to the specific people in this room, and I'm saying in the context that. You see what they're all doing. I've said that like 20 times. You see what they're all doing or what they all do. I'm talking about you guys yeah. in here. Yeah. That's part of the conversation <laughs> that are doing it. I think well, what you guys will say <laughs> came out of your mouth a few times. I think that's being dishonest, but yeah, okay. All right, well, it's not. You're in the process of doing it. So me denoting that you're doing it isn't dishonest. We'll try though. Hey, do you know what light attenuation is? It's crazy that no it? globe earthers know what light attenuation is. When I'm in, okay, I don't mean literally none of them. Doofus does, okay? And when I'm in modern day debate and someone says something like, um, why is the whole earth not lit up by the sun? And I'm like, bro, do you guys not know what light attenuation is? And then the <laughs> comments will say, oh, here's Woodsy just making up a word that doesn't exist again. So anyway. Well, and attenuation, attenuation wouldn't explain why the sun is obstructed. Up. Well, that's what, what you, you say. Make that but, up? Yeah. What what does light, what does attenuation of light do? What, what can you explain the process for us? Uh, it's a gradual fall off until the signal goes below the noise level. There you go. So the absorption rate of the light relative to the medium, predominantly the density and the turbidity, causes the light to fall below resolvability or where we can receive the information effectively. And for a six-foot observer... That's not how on, sunsets on, look. For a six-foot observer on the beach, where would that happen the most at? Below him or above him? Uh-oh. Simple question for very smart people. I'll repeat it. For a six-foot observer that's on the beach, that light atten attenuation where it fades out due to the reasons that were just given, would that happen below him or above him quicker? No Globers want to answer? Don't all step up at once. Right, I'm trying to get the actual not just reason for the question, because the air is obviously denser below you, but the, the thing that we see in the distance being obscured is being obscured. It's not attenuating. 
<coughs> well, if, the reflect, just... <laughs> if the reflected light what? off the object that the viewer is looking at goes through a more dense atmosphere, which is below the viewer, would that go extinct first or after the light that's being reflected in a less dense medium that's above the viewer? Well, see, that's part I of the problem. You, Attenuation is not... I, mean. I know you know what I mean, and I know you're going to avoid it. I'm not avoiding it. Attenuation is not where the light immediately becomes extinct, or it just suddenly becomes obstructed at some point. It's Attenuation is a gradual slope of light intensity down to until you get below noise levels. Would okay, that happen so... below the viewer or above the viewer more? Quicker? More, yeah. Well, yeah I, don't more. Think, right. I don't think that six, six foot is enough to measure difference. Uh, yeah, any, any, any foot above the, the surface could be answered by this. Exactly, any, because it's just basic common sense. Yeah, it's an easy Except answer. Except that we don't, see the, we don't see the sun being attenuated. We see it being obstructed. We don't need you to baselessly assert your conclusion over and over. We need you to answer the question. Okay, it's not baseless. If I look at the sun and I see the bottom of it is getting obstructed the progressively... Answer it's not question. baseless if I if I see the bottom of the sun being progressively obstructed. The light is becoming uh, obstructed immediately, which is not attenuation. If which, which is your not attenuation, which is not attenuation, which is not attenuation, obstruction. You said it seven times. Not, right, but you keep interrupting every time I go to say it. No. Okay, so you're just to clarify for the room here. You're intentionally choosing to avoid answering the question directly. Well, is that correct? No, it's not correct, because I said several times that the air is indeed more optically dense down below. However, for a sunset, that's not what we're observing. We are not observing the sun being attenuated. We're observing it being obstructed. Okay, that's the next part we get. You assert your conclusion over and over. So then, his, the answer to his question, he said, where would that absorption rate of the light, that attenuation, for a six-foot observer happen the most, above or below him? Isn't that just pigeonholing? No, right. it's just a basic... Dude, you don't even... Know, you guys don't understand anything. Okay, so what you would be trying to say right there is that it's a loaded question. It's not a loaded question because it's not even inputting a conclusion whatsoever. Right, to you, a or you're B. Right, but I already gave you the answer to that no, question. It's, no, 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 it's not, dude. Dude, it, it, but it, I already it, gave dude, you the answer to that question in dude, the doofus, answer. Did I, I not, dude, doofus, did I not give you the answer to, to the that question? Guy? Didn't I so, give wait, you the me, answer to the question? Hey, do, do, do did I give you the question? Did I give you the answer to your question? Did I give you the answer to your question? No, no, doofus. I'm modding. Relax, man. Let's all go one at a time. If you have a question that okay. you don't think I'd answer, state it again and let him answer it. Right. And my fast. answer. Let me address the other guy. Right. And my answer Holy so far was that. Right. And my answer so far was that the air is more optically dense below, so more attenu attenuation would happen there. You can't say I didn't give you an answer because I definitely did. Well, that's the first time that you've said the answer, actually. No, it isn't. And to address that's the other... bullshit. You lying son of a bitch. Because I said that three Why fucking is this times. Why allowed to do this, man? <laughs> He's obviously his yeah. meds are wearing off. Why are you allowed to kill a commentator no. all of you through every conversation? Wow. So to, towards the end, he did end up saying that it's obviously more dense, but he wanted to keep just jumping to the conclusion. And that's dishonest. And then the other guy said that it was a loaded question. That's not true. And then he said A or B. That would be called an accusation of false dilemma or false dichotomy. But it isn't a false dilemma or false dichotomy. He's saying if there is a rate of attenuation of the light based on density and turbidity and other, other variables in the atmosphere, right? If there's a six-foot observer, right, would that effect take place more above or below him? That's not a loaded question. That's not a false dilemma. It's you guys being dishonest, wanting to skip over the clarification of the point being made to then baselessly assert your conclusion so that the coherency of the, co the point is never made. It's a tactic. Okay, and what was my answer three times? And what you, was my answer three up, times? 
you, you ended up answering at the end, and you said yes, that the attenuation would be greater at the bottom, which is cool. That no, was it wasn't point. the end. It wasn't the end, Witsit. I gave that answer to you three separate times, and then you said, oh, now you're finally answering, which is bullshit. You lied. No, I didn't lie. You did. You said something about the density would be greater at the bottom, and sure, I can understand that you think that everyone would logically put together that that means the answer is below the observer. But you didn't specify the answer to the question, and it's on purpose, right? Because we walked everyone through the logic, which is, of course, you guys are saying that those that those uh, the land could be there, but we can't see it. Well, okay, why is that? Do you know what attenuation is? We then defined it. The light gets absorbed by the medium based on density and turbidity and other things. Then Rakia said, okay, so for a six foot observer on the beach that's looking out. Where would that effect take the place take place the most, above or below him? The answer is below him because the bottom of the atmos has the most turbidity and the highest levels of density, etc. Okay, now you're then going to say, okay, but that's not what's happening. Okay, we disagree with you. That isn't the point. We're establishing the facts first that you guys admittedly, 90% of the Globers don't even know the definition to the word, don't even understand the phenomena, and never account for the phenomena. So yeah, we are establishing the facts of the phenomena first, not that you disagree with our conclusion. Okay. All right, but this that's is not attenuation. To... Right, yeah, the thing that I posted, think. that's definitely not attenuation. Right, you guys think that, we get that. But the point is that we can easily say, look, when you see this video that I just posted where the sun is disappearing from the bottom up, up above the horizon, well, it makes sense that we would be losing resolvability of the information from the sun, the light, right? at the bottom towards the closer to the surface than above it, right? Because the extent, extinction rate of the light or the absorption rate is going to be greater at the bottom. So if something is further in the distance, we're going to lose resolvable information through the atmos from the bottom up. That's a fact. You can say that that's not what you think is the full cause of it or whatever. A fact is that we're going to lose the resolvability of the information from the sun bottom up and everything in the distance bottom up because it's going to be absorbed into the medium faster from the bottom up. Plus, the okay, and what we see is not the attenuation of the sun. Even in your example, the bottom, <laughs> you lose the light at a hard cutoff somewhere. And that <laughs> light is not being attenuated because that's a gradual process, not a fast one. Yeah, but it could happen both ways. We heard you. We know your model, right? We know you believe it's Earth curve blocking it, but there's, we're trying to tell the audience how it can happen with the angles being more acute, with the, the, the rays of light, which is information being being absorbed, with those same rays of lights that are reflecting off of a boat or off of a mountain or coming directly from the light source, which is the sun, um, you know, being combined and merged together where you don't get the information where you don't get the information of the bottom of the, the light source itself because they're merged together with the surface because of the angle itself. And then you add in the, the, the other things that we've talked about. You got yourself bottom-up obstruction, which is all not Earth curve. Yeah. Uh, angular resolution doesn't work in the way that you suggested, Rakia. Well, we get that you disagree. Like, we get you're going to say no on everything. But the audience should, in fact, realize hmm, there's a bunch of variables that they're pointing out that seem to be objective that all the globe earthers have completely excluded the entire time while they make their false claim of exclusivity that the only way this can happen is on a ball with our curvature blocking it. And also, to point out what's wrong with your claim that, well, it doesn't just happen instantly, it's gradual. <laughs> okay. Whenever, <laughs> if there's an air, we have horizontal layers <laughs> of the atmos, right? So the density is the, it, it decreases as you go up and there are horizontal layers. Once the light is no longer receivable, it's just gone, right? It, re it reaches the point that it's extinct. You can no longer see it. So yes, as you go up from the bottom, at one point it'll be where, oh, you're not getting enough to, re to receive the image anymore. And that would, of course, give you this exact same effect. It wouldn't be gradual in the way that you're depicting it. It would be a horizontal layer where now the light can't get through based on the distance in relation to the density and turbidity of that layer of the atmos. So you, uh, you just changed the definition of attenuation, Witsit. Congratulations, you changed the, def the definition. No, uh, you're just trying to poison the well. We have very oh, no, you did, because attenuation okay. by definition okay, is a gradual process, not a hard cutoff. 
Yeah, you were done insulting it, um, with it and poisoning the well. I'm just going to continue to my point. We have observations that are done over distances that can't be earth curve that show bottom up obstruction or even um, the disappearance of a direct light, uh, light source. So we're not questioning like the question whether it's earth curve or not or can be something else isn't even a question anymore. We know for a fact that it can be other optical phenomena, right? That doesn't rule out earth curve. But to argue the fact that it can't be anything else is just disingenuous at this point. Agreed. Exactly. Well, That's if he point. changes the definition of attenuation, then maybe it could be that. But it's not the same thing as attenuation anymore. As I didn't change the definition. Wrong, yeah. <laughs> I did. I didn't change the definition of attenuation. Attenuation is a gradual process from point to point. So, say gradual. there's an object in the distance. Say there's an object in the distance, right? The light coming from that object to me is going to gradually attenuate as it comes to me, right? But when I'm looking out, when it comes to the vertical information right when i'm looking then at the object distance, when i'm looking at the vertical image or the vertical uh information then obviously the information at the bottom is going to have a faster rate than the stuff at the top which means that i'm going to lose that information at the bottom first right and it suddenly drops off not gradual anymore well, no, it's just like if the, inform if the information is coming to you through the medium, at some point it'll become extinct. It'll have an extinction limit where you, you no longer can receive it, right? Wherever that point is. We're saying that obviously that point is reached sooner at the bottom, right? <laughs> and everything below that point is beyond that point, so you're not going to receive it. So it's like once it hits that point that the information no longer receives, anything below that's not going to be received because the attenuation rate is even higher below that. This isn't complicated. It requires intentionally being disingenuous and bastardizing the point to, to misrepresent it. Okay, let's go back to attenuation, what it actually means. The light falls off gradually until the light source or the light that you receive falls below the noise level of the surroundings. Now, when you say we see the bottom up obstruction, the bottom will disappear first, that part the light had to stop coming to you immediately. It's not gradual anymore. So therefore, what you're describing is no longer attenuation. That's not true, no. So I'll say it one more time. So if the light's coming to you, right? Yeah, it's gradually, the amount of receivable information is gradually decreasing from point to point. Now, whenever you look at that vertically, we know that that point is going to be reached sooner at the bottom. So therefore, why did the light get cut off? Why did it suddenly stop showing up? Because once we reach below, like once it optically declines because of perspective in our, in our view, once it get the light is coming through the part of the Atmos that the light cannot get to us because of the distance, then we're just not going to see the light just can't well, get there. It, so as soon well, as the light optically comes, it, it, Oh my God, dude. I honestly, I don't care to explain it to you, dude. If, if, the creator himself floated down and told you that the Earth wasn't a ball, you'd argue with them. If NASA came out and said we were faking space, you'd argue with them. Like, I don't Rich. care anymore. Right, because you keep saying what attenuation isn't is an explanation for attenuation. Or, or no, that you isn't keep true. changing the how it is. Yes, it is. Because the, you're saying that there's some point at which the light from the bottom of the sun suddenly is unable to make it to us anymore. That's not attenuation. That's some other bullshit you invented. No, that literally is attenuation. Attenuation determines the extinction limit of light. No, it Buddy. doesn't. It's okay, a gradual so fall off until it goes below the noise level of the surroundings. That's which what would be attenuation the extinction is. limit. Extinction limit means there's a hard cutoff somewhere, which is no longer attenuation. That's literally in the definition of attenuation. So no, it isn't. So okay, do you Show want to bet me. on it? Show me oh, where it okay. says extinction limit in attenuation. No problem. It okay. does say and in physics, attenuation in some contexts, extinction. Thank you. Right. It is extinction. Where's the extinction limit? Uh, the thing that Wits it said. <laughs> Wait, so there's an extinction, but it doesn't happen at any, at any point. What is Where's the mean? limit? Because what you're suggesting is that there's a point, some finite distance or finite amount of material in which extinction immediately occurs. 
Now, the definition no. says extinction. The extinction is itself uh, modeled as a gradual process. Okay? Now, no. where's the extinction limit? Because there's not one in the definition, and I haven't seen an example you put forward where extinction okay. limit is involved. What does extinction mean? Extinction means the light is decreasing. No. Yes. What, <laughs> what does extinction mean when it comes to like animal decreasing. species? What does it mean when it comes to like an animal species? That's what I was thinking. Like, are the dinosaurs extinct? Extinct? Are we talking no, about? They're, light no, they're or gradually. Animals? They're gradually extinct, bro. No, they're not well, extinct. That, that, still, that also happens. But are we talking about light or are we talking about animals? Which context are we means discussing? This, the word means the same thing in the context. It sounds like this is. Uh, no, it doesn't. It sounds like this is different falling off into the use words differently. Can it be okay, both so, at the same time? No, yeah, there's a gradual. Different there's, definitions no, for different no. contexts. The extinction is not what is gradual. The absorption rate is gradual until it reaches extinction. Okay, where's the fact. extinction limit? Oh, oh, whoa! So wait, is what I just said a fact or not? Is what you said a factor? The light is being extinct, is extinction, yes, extinguished as it goes through the atmosphere. Okay, listen, it it is an absorption rate that's gradual until oh. it reaches. You are the correct. Point there, there is a point. There is a point where there is no more light. That's the extinction. Thank limit. you. But, but, but thank but, you. But but to get there, there must be uh, a gradual decrease. Right. And that's I what said I've been below the, the whole noise time. level. That's literally what I've been saying the whole time is that there's a gradual decrease until it gets to the extinction point. Yeah, but we I'm don't glad see that the we gradual see... decrease. We, we only see the. the, the... <laughs> no, you people are so. Okay, yeah, now let's think about it logically. Thing. Wait, wait, wait. Now that we finally got the fact that, oh, I was right. So there's a no, gradual no, you, absorption rate. Right. You weren't. No, I was. There's a gradual absorption rate. So the absorption rate through the medium is gradual until it reaches the extinction limit. Okay, that's going to come from point to point. I Meaning, if I look out to the mountains, right, the light from the mountains coming to me is going to gradually become absorbed into the medium until it becomes extinct. Now, if I look out at those mountains, there are basically, let's just visualize lines coming straight from me all the way from the bottom of the mountain up, all these different lines. And each line has a different rate at which it will be absorbed gradually okay which means that each line coming from the mountain to me is going to have its own extinction but, limit yeah but the, okay the mountain is going to be a hard cutoff and in, no in, wait in, do you understand what i just said yes but you confu you're confusing the argument now no i'm not i know right. you are confused and can't follow the argument no, so no, no. then so no wait, wait, let's keep no stop 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 so the lines are coming to me, right, from the bottom of the mountain to the top. There's a bunch of different lines that are coming to me, right? They have different rates of absorption, so they have a different a different extinction limit for each line. As it goes higher up, the extinction limit is going to be like it's going to be further no. from the mountain. The mountain. Oh no! Have, uh, the oh, mountain it's not. Hard, the mountain's going to have a hard cutoff that no. that you don't have on the on the horizon. No, 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 right. no! Address what I just said. So the line, the light's going to come from the mountain to me. It's going to have a specific absorption rate, and it's going to eventually reach an extinction limit. Okay. Now the we know that at the bottom, the absorption rate is going to be higher. So the extinction li limit is going to be further away from us and closer to the mountain. And then as we go a little bit further up, that is going to it's going to be closer to us. And further from the mountain. So as we go up, right, the extinction limit is going to get further and further away from the mountain, right? So therefore, now we're going to look out and see horizontal layers. And if we look at the, we look at it vertically up and down, there's a gradient of extinction, right? But we're not seeing a gradient of extinction. We're seeing a point at which the sun's light stops reaching us. It is not a, a, it is not a gradual change. But that's the, the point is that it's once it reaches the extinction limit, you can no longer see it. Okay? Then that means it can no points, longer be received. Then the points in the vicinity of that point that haven't reached the extinction limit yet would be very soft, just barely able to be made out above the noise level of the surroundings, which is not what you're describing in the sun. Yeah, okay, now here, where does it Oh, now we're getting. Now we're going to get to the fallacy of division. 
So we do agree. So we're just using the definition. So we do agree with what I just laid out that you're going to have a gradient of the extinction limit from the bottom up. Okay, and then once the once we go down this mountain or down the sun, you're going to hit a point where the light can't get to you, right? Why Even if it's gradual. You know, oh, 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 oh. Okay, and so it's gonna it's going the bottom up, right? The light yeah. from the bottom up is going to be is going to not get to us from as far away. The light's going to get to us from further and further away. The higher up we go, but from the top yeah. down, it will be the same. No, it won't be the same. What are you talking about? They're specifically different because it's in relation to the turbidity and the density, which is greater than the bottom of the atmos. Yeah, but talk about seven times. No, but I mean, there's <laughs> there's <laughs> there's a gra gradation, right? And and how 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 um, dense the atmosphere is. So it doesn't matter if you go from up, from down to 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 up or from up to down. What the? F you laughed. That's the funniest part. So. Okay, we've we have had to say it seven times. Anyone that's being honest obviously knows what's being said here. So then the, their argument back is, but we don't see, like, say where you see the hard cutoff there, right? That the point right above it, the light would be more dim, right? So, like, from the top down, it would get more and more and more dim, and it get to that point where you can't see it anymore. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's we good. know. That's attenuation. Wait, look, are you guys ready? But what we're not going to do is the fallacy of division, where we say that the flat earthers are only claiming that's the only thing. But we're also not going to move on to the next point and then pretend to forget all about that point. Okay, so we know that that point is a variable. We know it is a variable. Okay, now it's in addition to the fact that obviously the angle from the bottom of the sun to wherever the horizon is smaller. So we're going to start to lose resolvability sooner there. It means that we're going to have less and less information coming to us because of the actual angle. And we're going to have less and less information coming to us because of the actual absorption. Those two combined are going to give us a point on this horizontal, this horizontal layering. There's a point where the sun just simply can no longer be seen. Yeah, and, and that's what we're uh, saying. Angular here. resolution, hold on, angular resolution doesn't happen out there. It happens at the optical device relative to the angles out there so the angle from the bottom of the sun or the bottom of the building or the bottom of the boat to the horizon right that's smaller than from the top of it to the horizon that means that we have more information with greater re uh, reception and propagation angle so we're getting more information from the top of the object than from the bottom yeah okay the, okay the, the, <laughs> the, the problem the that you have with that yeah, the problem that you have with that is if you bust out some other kind of optical device with a greater angular resolution capability, that you should see different proportions of obstructed objects in the distance, and we don't see that. Okay, so we know we're getting less information from the bottom of the object than from the top of the object. And yeah, just ignore what I just said. I am, because you're just trying to make sure I don't make my point, which is that the information from the bottom of the object, right, we're getting less information from the bottom of the object because of the angle and because of attenuation, which means objectively, an object would disappear from the bottom up on a flat earth. And you can now claim, but you think it would disappear from the bottom up differently because it would be gradual. If that's what you want to claim, that's cool. Guess what? This is terrible for you because when you zoom in on the horizon, guess what we see? That the horizon is actually not a hard cutoff. It actually is a gradient where we gradually lose resolvability. Thank you for playing. It's that's game, set, good. match. You're all going to deny it. You'll, they'll nervously that's, laugh that's like somehow all. I don't understand something. Okay, you want to bet money on it? Yeah, you can zoom in on the horizon all okay. day long and see incredible detail. Do it. Drop, drop, drop the picture. No, you, you get a waviness. You get like this layer of waves that you can't tell. It's definitely it's not a whole cutoff. No, Dude, I'm offering, I'm offering a bet. I'm offering a bet. I'll give you the hard line. No, okay, no, and then as soon as I zoom in on it, we're going to show that there's a gradient there. And then you're right. gonna be like, oh damn, whoa, 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 uh, 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 why do objects in free fall not have a force? Like, or something. Just settle down. I've been listening to you, you're like spazzing out, you're making up shit, making Please. up your own terms. I mean it's really You're coping. It's really you're coping. What term did I make oh, yeah. up? What what term did I make up? I just posted it. What term did I make up? I just posted it. 
You just said I'm making up terms. What terms? Yeah, you were making up several terms. Name name one. Yeah. Yeah, we should move on. No, I I got a reception reception propagation angle. I said reception and propagation angles. Do you think I made those terms up? That that term conjunctively. Reception propagation. I didn't say that, that conjunctively. <laughs> they were separate. Yeah, I don't know why you're laughing. Plus, when we zoom into the propagation horizon, propagation angle. Wavy. Really? You think is my mic being is... hurt? What's that? I couldn't hear you. My mic's low or something. It was. Yeah, you got here now. I'll drop out. I'll drop out. I don't see anything from you in the chat. But here's just the facts of the matter, yeah, right? A... Like, say, say, even when you're in a plane, right? Like the planes where it's really obvious, like if you're in a plane and you take a picture with anything or you just look out, what you see is that the horizon is like a gradient. Even over the ocean, that's the case. I know this for a 100% fact and nothing that you people in this room say are going to change it. I went out to many dozens of bodies of water and did it myself and zoomed in on the horizon. And it is a fact that what is called the horizon is a gradient where the sky and ground merge and it's this blurry gradient that converges into each other objectively. Now, when you do it over water, okay, when you do it over like the ocean, there's there's more distinction between the sky and the ground because they're more distinctly different colors, okay? That's what it is. But when you actually zoom in, you'll see, well, you see the distinct, like, d- deeper blue, it going up from the, the ocean into the sky. But when you actually zoom in, you'll see that there's a gradient of those colors that merges in in a little blurry area in the middle. Yeah, if you zoom way out, yeah, if you zoom way out, you may think I it's do, a hard line, do do this especially day, if you have a religious belief. Obvious. Well, we're it's telling a, people the truth. Do do That's why we do it. When it's over ocean, it's wavy. When you get up in the air, it's more of a haze because you're seeing way too far. Like you're let's, seeing let's look at this picture further. I just posted. Then let's just talk about this real quick. We have yeah. we have several different types of reference points here. You can zoom in all you want, and you have two hundred foot objects that are angular. See, what I always bring to the table here, and we talk about this, and it seems like everyone oh. seems to forget about it, even on both sides. Is there's an angular position change in your field of view? These things are dropping down, obviously. You have to be just completely intellectually dishonest, Woodson, to not see that that windmill is annulus, is almost near the surface angularly. And the waves in the back the horizon, which are the last few waves of this water, and it's not totally straight. I guess why I brought this picture is it just shows a horizon of water that is a, is, is a little bit turbulent. And the air seems to be pretty clear. You have it, regardless of that, you see an angular position change. How do you explain a 300 foot, 200 foot tall windmill where the horizon is just a, a fraction of a degree above the surface of the water? Angular. It's an optical degree. illusion. Optical illusion where the foreground okay. appears uh, to ramp up that, towards that, the I, I appreciate you, appreciate that, right? yeah. you notice I, I had a sensor up here, right then? Are because you, you can't. Pardon me? You can't actually debate this. It, is my it. mic okay? I'm because I went to, to answer your very specific question in this very picture that you posted. It's very simple. You have a foreground and a background which are different. Optical illusions occur because you're, you're looking at a turbulent atmosphere. You can tell by the white caps on the water. So there's a lot of moisture low to the ground, which makes the foreground appear to ramp up and hide oh things God. in the distance. And, and the, the things in the distance could appear closer or further away due to the same optical illusion, which okay, would give fine. them a you different said a bunch of things. size change. And you're not going to cut me off. I'm almost done. You know you're done. But basically, it's a, an optical illusion you called for how we see into the distance, foreground and background. And um, yeah, just like you see ships appearing to float in the sky, that's a mirage. But you, you see a ship appear below the waterline or um below the the per- perspective view of the foreground you call that earth curve no it's the same thing it's just a mirage how we see into the distance okay thanks you for said the a proof. bunch of things i should have been taking notes because that's why I, don't, I wanted to interject when i thought you paused you said perspective yeah. foreground you said all these different things no we we don't have we have you said turbidity of the atmosphere we have water we have we have to have 
air that's moving around. Obviously, there's wind because we have white caps, forces acting on the water. <clears throat> but we, and you said it's an optical illusion. It's the same reason we have boats that are higher than they should be. No, those those are op, those are optical illusions. That is not reality because that is <laughs> colors that are blending together, making it look like the boat is higher angularly than it is, but it actually isn't. It never will change. On any day you look at that boat, it'll always be in the same angular position in your field of view. What you have is a layer of water that's reflecting off the sky, or there's fog there that is uh, making the colors blur together. So let's, that, let's forget about that. That's obvious to me, and it should be to you. I'm talking about the angular position. You're saying it's an optical illusion, perspective. It's not. When these things, when you have a windmill that's sitting near the surface of the water within a fraction of a degree, where did the 300 feet of windmill go? It's angularly down in your field of view. It should be up. If you were to go in a boat, if you've traveled toward these windmills, they would gradually get higher and higher and higher until they were towering above you. Now, there's perspective, and there's also why are they hidden and also lower in your field of view. Oh, my God. Just to point out what happened, let's point out what happened. So uh, I pointed out that – you know, your whole argument where I showed that there's the attenuation relationship and then the angle relationship, and they were all so confident. All the Globers were laughing. Can you address You're my censor uh, question me. specifically? St please? Stop censoring me, dude. But you ask you us go. this all the time. Oh. I'm trying Stop. to have you stay on track. Stop. I gave you I gave you a very detailed explanation. I gave you what I thought is happening. You see how he's just talking to again? It. Don't go on some Isn't divergent freaking obfuscation oh. path to try to make your yeah. very, very uh, weak point, by the way. Okay. Just remember, I want everyone yeah. to remember that he just accused me of obfuscating. And I'm going to explain how that's the exact opposite of what happens. We, I was explaining all those variables of how the things work in the distance. All of the Globers were mocking me and ridiculing and laughing and saying I didn't understand thing. I added to define basic terms to them. And then we finally got to the point where they said, oh, but there would be a hard cutoff because because if what you're saying is true, it would be gradual. Right? Okay. And the bottom of the Can object would question, begin to disappear. Yeah. Stop interrupting me would disappear from the bottom up right so it would be gra it would be a gradual change and i'm like well this is where you don't know you were set up that's what we see right every time we look out in the distance what we call the horizon if you actually zoom in on it you always see that there's a gradient where it's blurry and merges into each other then zanik jumped in pretending he was going to rebut that point and he said that he was going to give us an image that shows that isn't true. Then, yes. then he posts this image and starts ranting about a totally different point about how he thinks it's impossible to see the angle relationship between the windmills and the water in this picture. So you diverted. I didn't say that. You obfuscated. No, You're the one that's trying to change the subject. Stop. I'm not, you absolutely yes. did. Yes, Zanik. Yes. And so if you, know, actually zoom in, if you actually zoom in on the picture, you can see that even in this picture, there absolutely is a gradient between the water and the sky. And there's this blurry little band up above it that's waving. And then in addition, of course, this picture has like immense waves. And so everyone can use their brain here for just a second and realize that if I put a thumb, if I put my thumb in front of my water bottle right here, right? If the thumb is closer to me than the water bottle, it blocks out the whole water bottle. Now, of course, the water bottle is bigger than my thumb. And when I get closer to the water bottle, now the thumb isn't blocking that at all. But I bring the thumb closer to me, and boom, it blocks out the whole water bottle. So when there are waves in the foreground, even if they're smaller waves, those waves will block out a lot of stuff in the in the background, even if they're smaller than what's in the background, right? And how far away are these? How far away are these windows? That's why, that's why it's nice about, that's just nice about this picture, uh, Bear. We have a buoy out there. We also have, but the main, my main point of what I said was not obfuscation. It was actually bringing up a point that you completely seem to skate over. The angular position change in your field of view. You, now you're talking about waves. I've brought up that many times. If your wave was close to you angularly and it was a certain size angularly, it would block things in distance angularly for things that are very far away. They could, you could block a 300, 300 foot tall ship if it was in front of you and it was only one foot tall. Depending on where it is, how far from you, and where it is angularly in, your, in the position of field of view. Yeah, there you we're go. Talk, but what I'm talking about, and you haven't addressed yet, you never have that, by the way. Is you why changed is the topic. Why is there a 300 foot windmill <laughs> that is sitting on its annulus 
a fraction of a degree above the surface. Now you can say there's a blurry line there and a, and a gradient and turbidity in the water. All this nonsense, which has well, nothing to do with Well, that's what we were talking about. That's, that's what on. you claim to on, be hold rebutting, on, hold dude. On. Let me, I'm almost done. How about this? If you don't I'm respond to the point we're talking point about, point then you're going to get muted. Respect. Can you give it back to me? You're not so giving us respect. We were in the middle of a point that we had to painfully oh go God. through for like 30, 40. Okay. Listen, ahead. Zanuck, we, there, we, were the, we were at the conclusion of a point that we had to painfully go through with like five Glovers for 30 minutes. Then you pop in the room and then just jump in pretending to address it and completely change the subject, throw everything away, uh, help everyone avoid the conclusion and therefore equate into wasting the last 45 minutes of our life. Because Zanuck runs the room. So we must all comply to what Zanuck says is more important and we can just throw out whatever we were talking about right at the point of the conclusion. Do you not see why people get mad at you? I'm running the room. Isn't that ironic that you're telling me that I'm running the room? My God. No, no, what I, That's the no. point. The point is that we had a specific subject and that you stepped in right at the conclusion after we had to go through all kinds of painful steps to get the Globers to slowly concede that they didn't know what they were talking about, even though they were arrogant and cocky the whole time. We get oh, right to the conclusion. Was, uh, we get right to the conclusion. Right. We get right to the conclusion of the point, Right. And then you jumped in and changed the subjects to avoid the conclusion. I Almost like you're being paid a, or something. Well, I'd like well, to I give you an you example of a, of a horizon where there wasn't this blurred area. It was very clear. And I referenced it to the objects that are for reference points in the distance. These things are a known height and they have a known angular size for the distance away from you. And that, that con contrasts grossly of what you're trying to make as a point to this area above the horizon that seems to be blurred and that seems to have some kind of substantial value to you in this conversation. And your conclusion is incorrect. Just because it's blurred doesn't mean angularly the position uh, doesn't change or is changing at all. Okay. Even in this picture, there is a blurry area, right? And the waves are so turbulent that like the actual area is, it changes. Right, like it changes, and if you zoom in on parts of the picture, you can see that the actual blurry gradient area is waving itself, literally, right? And then uh, that, so the actual you didn't refute my point at all. You, your image proves my point further. And the best way to prove it is to have a video to show the horizon from zoomed out. It looks kind of like it could be a hard cutoff when it's over the ocean, but then when you begin to zoom in further and further onto the horizon, you will see. There is a huge gradient that's super blurry, and you will see this every single time you make any observation in reality because I've done it dozens of times myself. Dozens it, of it, times. It doesn't. Dozens of times. You're not making much sense, and you're not addressing my point, which is really – Oh, no, no because conclusion. we are talking about I, your point. I, your blurry horizon, I, I know you think it has some kind of value here, but it really doesn't. It really okay, does. well, we're we, talking, so, so Zenix now admitting, Zenix now admitting that he's intentionally changing the subject because he thinks that my point doesn't really matter. So thanks well, no, for I, confirming I, my very point, which is you disrespectfully come in the room after a 30 minute conversation where we finally got to the conclusion, but you decided because you're King Zanuck that the point doesn't matter. So we can just change the subject and just disregard the point right at the point of the conclusion. Thanks for admitting no. that that's what you were doing. No, that's so, not what I. That's not what I said. Thanks. You for just said that my points are relevant, and you were trying to bring up another point. Well, you know we can happened. zoom into horizons at great distances and see a blurry line because it's beyond our, our, our resolution limits. And even in cameras, even in zoom configurations, we know it's going to be blurry because you can't zoom forever. You can't. Okay, zoom now on a flat Earth resolution, and you're on a flat with Earth, your eyes or with the actual. Uh, optical instrument. Yeah, thanks for we, your concession. We have, so the pictures of, we have the pictures of the, the theodolite, uh, not theodolite, the, uh, the Hudson displays, where you see an you know, a, a infrared filter looking at water has a certain color and the sky above it has a black color. And okay. I've done it in infrared as well. And in infrared, so you still not, see yeah, a in, gradient. In an infrared, you still see a gradient from the water or whatever the ground is going into the sky, there's a gradient. There's an area there that merges together and it gets blurry and there's a gradient of the colors. Now, obviously in infrared, it's harder to see the colors. You still see that there's this blurry area there that people are calling the horizon, even in infrared, because I've also done that dozens of times because I actually had a P9000 that was not 
converted to infrared and one that was infrared, and I set them up right beside each other over and over. So Good. that's a uh, fact. Here, here, no, oh, oh, let me no, so wait, wait, let me yeah. make the conclusion here. Okay. The Globers are claiming that the horizon is a physical location that physically blocks things in the distance, right? And they say, first they try to say there would be no horizon on a flat earth. And we're like, are you, have you lost your mind? Then they all said, oh, but well, it wouldn't be a hard, distinct cutoff or line. It would be like this gradual blurry area if it was actually flat. Then we pointed out that literally every observation that exists shows us that very thing. So they said, oh, well, the fact there is a horizon at all proves that there's a geometric horizon because you can't have one unless it is. There would be no horizon on a flat earth. We point out how stupid that is, and they say, oh, well, what I mean by saying there's no horizon on a flat earth is that it wouldn't be a hard, distinct line. It would be a gradual, blurry area. And then we point out that's literally what we see in reality at all times, and then you guys say that that point doesn't matter. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me steal you're, man your position you're, real quick. Recapping it falsely. Yeah. So I see. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Let, let no, I'm not. Your, let me steal man your position real quick. So I, I posted something. Uh, the infrared showing the green color of the of the land and the black is the sky. And the infrared is an infrared filter, by the way. It's not really infrared, uh, you know, like an infrared laser, which is truly infra only 100% infrared uh, information, which has to be then uh, through a processor to be able to show you some kind of, so you can see it. Because infrared is invisible to us. This is actually an infrared filter. It shows it green and black. And you can, if you zoomed in on that, if you're up that airplane at 47,000 feet and you zoomed in, you, you see a little gray area. That's fine. It's still below level. That's a whole other topic. Then I, then I have a picture above that shows the sun below level, and this also this blurred line of the horizon, which I, I totally agree that we would see that on a, a altitude because of the atmosphere, the turbidity of the atmosphere. And I also have one with the, with the moon below level, and a, and a really good example of what you're talking about, kind of zoomed in there to the green area to the land, and then there's a a light green hazy area which is the atmosphere, and, but then the moon's still above it. So how do you answer the fact that if we're on a flat plane, why would that moon be below level? And what we're going to talk about first is, you guys see I took screenshots of his image again, even with the infrared filter. And you see that there's an entire blurry gradient area there. Now, yes. if we're looking at an actual physical Earth curvature, and you're claiming that the horizon is only possible if there is Earth curvature, then we would see a hard distinct line. Now, you guys can move the goalposts and say, oh, well, no, because there's atmosphere there. And so that would make the, the horizon always look like a blurry gradient. That's convenient because that's the flat Earth position. So, again, no, this, is the this is the recap of what has happened. And you're I don't, over dude, we're, we're, here, we're here for the audience. We're not here for your weirdo gotchas that you no, no, away. Why weird. do you keep recapping, though? Be, well, be, well I, we get that you guys are zealots and have been here for seven years saying the same thing after getting absolutely dunked on every day than pretending it didn't happen. But there are other people that actually want to understand the truth. Now, I listen to you guys obfuscate and whine all the time. The truth is that you guys said, look, things disappear in the, in the distance. That proves the earth's a ball. Then we made observations and you moved the goalposts in 2019, 2020 and said, we never see the actual geometric horizon because there's always refraction and that the only way you could have that horizon, which is always apparent, is that you do have an actual geometric horizon somewhere. That's the only way it's possible. This is the true history of the debate. You guys changed your argument in 2020, right? And said, oh, never mind. We never see the actual geometric horizon after you guys mocked us for five, six years straight, claiming that you know that the Earth's a ball because we see the curvature of the Earth just standing out the ocean. So then you moved it and said, we never see the geometric horizon. We said, and then you said, the way we know is because the only way you could have the apparent horizon is if you have a geometric horizon. There wouldn't be a horizon on a flat Earth. And every glober pretty much said that and started repeating. So then we said, wait, what? How would there be no horizon on a flat Earth? That's ridiculous. Then they said, oh, well, what we really mean is that on a flat Earth, the horizon would be this blurry gradient. It would be an area that kind of gets blurry and blends together. Right, but on a curved Earth, it would be this hard, distinct cutoff that's blocking things in the distance. So then we pointed out, okay, that's literally what we see. In fact, we never see a distinct hard cutoff without a gradient. Every observation shows us that there is a gradient that blurs together, just like you said would happen on the flat Earth. Instead of saying, "Oh, damn, 
what I said would happen on a globe Earth improves the globe doesn't happen in reality. And what I said would have to happen on a flat Earth actually does happen in reality. That would mean if you keep the same energy and standard, that disproves the globe. Instead, you guys skate past it for years, never acknowledge it, and then just start changing and diverting away. So you're wasting our time for eight years now. That's what's actually happening. You're moving the goalpost every single time, making stuff up over and over, and never honestly conceding or addressing the point. I have every single time. And, and does anyone worried. disagree with my recap of the debate since 2015? Because yeah. that's, that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you've ever made a point with it that wasn't addressed. Yeah, we've, we've made just your point. No, no, I, is there, uh, Leflin, do you agree I just described the debate progress from like 2015 on? No, I, I, I disagree with about 75% of what you said. Dude, uh, yeah, no, that's like, what, that is what happened. Though, we we the have first we thing all agreed that you guys said that there was a, there was a year there that we were talking just about the actual panic, horizon panic. and the apparent horizon. One at a time. One at a time. Can I just finish a one sentence? One at a time. One at you a time. You monologue forever. I just want to say one sentence. Dude, you heard Jeremy one at a time, talking. Zanuck. He didn't care. He just tried to power through me. Hold on. You can go next, Zanuck. Uh That is exactly what happened. You said there wouldn't be a horizon on a flat Earth, and they said, well, there would be a horizon fuzzy. And now we're seeing that they all look fuzzy, right? Is that does that sum it up pretty much? Yeah, yeah. After they first said that that we always see the curve of the earth, and then they said we'll never see the actual curve of the earth after the 2020 argument. So. Go ahead, Zanuck. Thank you. Be so, concise, I, I didn't hear, by the way, I didn't hear you at all. You're, you're, I don't know, it was me or you're really low, but um, no, we, that was a fun year of like the actual horizon, the geometric horizon, and talking about what it, you know what, what these things really were. Everyone really knew every what everyone else was talking about, but we all were getting all pedantic of the terms. Yes, when we see a horizon, it's been refracted. It is the actual horizon that has been refracted up. So what we're seeing actually is this is actual horizon, but it's not the geometric horizon. So we were going back and forth for a year on that. It was kind of cute and funny. But right now, we I think we all understand what we all mean on both sides. But what I'm telling you is that we do see a horizon. And yeah, if you zoom in, it could be a little blurry. But the, my point has always been, and I brought this up thousands of times, is that it's below level. And that can't happen on a flat Earth. If you had a flat Earth, I would also agree there'd be a somewhat of a horizon, a blurry line between the surface and the sky, because you can't see forever. And the, and the, and the atmosphere would attenuate what you see in the distance. So you would have this blurry line. But that blurry line should be at eye level. The center of it should be at eye level. Incorrect. We don't see that. We don't see that. We see we see the hard surface well below eye level. Sometimes four degrees below level. And you can say, this well, that's incorrect. Kind of some kind of, what's incorrect? Wait, you said that if the Earth was flat, we would see the horizon at eye level, and that is incorrect. And this goes back to what I was saying: is that for you guys to argue against flat Earth, you always have to create a caricature and straw man of it. And it's been eight years. You guys still can't talk about what we well, actually said. One of the things, one of the things that's interesting about that comment, what's it, is that we all tend to agree. And now you've brought this up several times in the opposite, but we're not in opposite world. We're in reality. And when we talk about standard refraction, why they have it is because things do loom up, and that's why we do see standard refraction. We do put a little bit of an angular positive upward in in the in the picture to find out where things actually are. But in these situations where we have things that are lower than than level. The refraction would make things higher, so it makes the problem worse because we're still seeing things below level. So no. the refraction, general, the mountain pictures I show all the time and all the other things I, I post all show things much lower than they should be. And if we had refraction, they'd be loomed up. Now, you can have the, the inverse of that, which would be a, a, a sinking or a upward refraction. The upward refraction would tend to make things sink. But... That doesn't happen unless you have a gradient that you've mentioned all the time that is inverse also, some type of inverse gradient, which we don't have, especially at higher altitudes. We don't have temperatures and, and densities that are going down as we go uh, down. They go up as you go down. Those densities go up as we go down. And the light bends toward the denser medium. So for light to bend upward, the denser medium has to be upward. And you can do that in very isolated situations like in your room and open the door and the cold air comes in or some liquid nitrogen or whatever you got. That can create that, that temperature inversion that would cause that like a sinking refraction. But we don't see that generally. So you guys always bring it up it could be refraction. But it, it can't really work because you can't describe a mechanism for how that would work. You don't need refraction. So oh, again, don't. in order to argue against flat earth, you have to straw man it. Um, you, after I have this conversation with you today, you'll come back tomorrow and say the same thing. 
Um, and that's what's required to defend the globe. When I can still man the globe better than all the Globers, you guys are eight years in still straw manning flat earth. So that shows all that you need to know about this conversation. You're but of course, I've listened very – no, I can absolutely still man the globe and everyone here knows. So now this is the problem. Uh, that's not what we say. I mean, some players have said that probably, but that's not the true players. Position. Right. The horizon rises towards eye level, but the horizon is just an optical effect. Right. And in fact, as you see further and further and further, what's going to happen is that area that is the gradient that makes up the, the vanishing point in the distance or what we call the horizon is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Duh. So the ground is going to look like it's ramping up. The, gr the sky is going to look like it's ramping down and they're going to start to converge towards each other into this gradient, this little area, right? Parallel bands where there's like this fuzzy area where everything converges to it. So it's the part where it's going to look like the color of the ground that's more distinct is, is starting to reach into that convergence point is going to be lower the higher you get and the further out you see. But in the, also the area of that band is going to increase. You guys are looking out and saying, you see how, the, how it kind of looks like it changes color here? Where the most distinct color changes, that's the physical earth curve, even though it's not really there, it's being refracted. But no, it's just an optical effect. The quote-unquote horizon is actually a, a band, a fuzzy gradient that's in the distance. And when you actually zoom in on any of these images, when you start to isolate that area that looks really fuzzy and it starts to blend into each other, it always pops right up to almost eye level. Okay? But you guys will come look at the hard, distinct difference in color and claim that that's the physical horizon and then claim it's a certain amount below it. And then you'll talk about things in the distance that are blocked by it, when of course, no, we, the, the, if something has a higher, like a, a height in the distance, like a higher height, right? Then, and then the ground is merging up, but then it hits that point where it stops right there and it's being cut off, right? The vanishing point. If there's something that's taller in the distance, well, you're going to see the taller portion of it. It's exactly what you would see on a flat earth. You have to straw man flat earth. No, no, I, I Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll respond to you exactly and um, steel man your position. You're saying you said very clearly that as things get further away, the surface and the and what's above it tend to get blurry at a distance, and it, the bottom, the this bottom surface will move up in your field of view, and the top surface will move down. And it should. You didn't say this, but I, I imagine you're implying that it should meet somewhere near the center of your field of view. Yet it doesn't. Whatever you're saying, whatever you're saying, this blurred line, this blurred area of this turbidity in your atmosphere, whatever you're talking about, should be relatively close to the center field of view. Yet we see everything skewed downward, directly proportional to this, the distance above we're viewing above the surface, which is interesting. The higher we go, the more that blurry area, if there is a blurry area that you zoomed in on, would be below level. So much so with yeah. proof that we see the sun below level, we see the moon below level, and I can show mountains at distances of one being twice as high as another in the background that should be in line for the double the distance, but they're not. And we can even have reference points of snow lines to, val to validate that. And you're saying, well, that's, Racky has said this before, it's just an optical effect, probably refraction or something. So he has said, because the thing, because light does bend. He's mentioned it, and he's, that's a valid you know, response. You're saying it's not about refraction. That's not what we say as flat earthers. We talk about this convergence or this, this uh, optical limit of our eyes and this convergence area where things get blurry and they all move toward the center, but we don't see them move the center. What's it? We see these things move down from the center. And that's my question. Why do they move down oh angularly? Okay, okay. That. Can you answer that question specifically? Because I've been waiting for an answer for half an hour. They move towards the center. That area moves towards the center. That's a fact. In fact, the globe has to claim that perspective causes that to happen. Because when we yeah. take a drone and we move it up, we see that the horizon moves up with us. Right? Which would be indicative of a planar surface. Hang on a second. Exactly. He asked me to say right. And I'm saying no. You, you, I heard you said I oh. heard you do that as well. You are not answering why it's below the center line. Why it angularly is downward. If what you say is true, they should meet at the center. They don't meet at the center with it. They, they meet below the center line. Okay. So, again, I, first of all, it depends on how you're determining the center line, right? Level. How are you determining? How do you determine that? Uh, get a bubble level. 
and extra, extrapolate a, a a line out to the distance based on that orientation perpendicular Ex- to plumb. Extrapolate a line out to the distance. Point yeah. a line. Point point a pointer. Point your finger. That make your oh, finger oh. perpendicular. Make make your per, your finger on a plane perpendicular to plumb. Okay. So what happens is objects look like they're going down the distance due to perspective when they're above you. And they're going to keep on looking like they're going down until they get to the vanishing point, right? Where you start to see this vanishing point, that area increases and gets blurry, right? With height and distance. And so the bottom of like the ground is going to start moving up. The sky is going to start moving down and it's going to start to create a convergence area that's really blurry. The ground is going to rise with us as we get higher which is the exact opposite of what you would see on a globe because the ground would be going down and away from you. So as you get higher, it would just get further and further away from you. It would not rise with you at all unless you invoke perspective. But it does exactly what we expect on a flat earth, which is that the horizon is going to rise with us as we rise because it's all due to perspective and condition. And then we see things in the distance in relation to that area that's converging, right? And then you bring up stuff like, look at these, look at these windmills over the ocean. And I, again, anyone in their house, anyone on this board right now, you can pull your hand out, pull your thumb up, and look at something in the distance, right? Like here, I have a cleaner bottle right here. Okay, the cleaner bottle is probably ten, the length of ten of my thumb. And as I put the thumb in front of my face, pretty close, it blocks out the entire thing, right? It blocks out the whole thing. Now, as I move my thumb closer to the bottle, I see more and more and more and more of the bottle. And when I put it right up to the bottle. Again, it's just like one tenth of the bottom. No, no, it's very simple. That if there's waves on the on the in the ocean, if the waves are only just like a foot or two, if they're close to me, they're gonna block huge things in the distance. Just like my thumb could block out a twenty-story building. Okay, so you guys didn't say, "Well, look, there are all kinds of waves and water in front in the foreground, close to what I'm taking a picture with." And it's blocking stuff in the distance that's way bigger. That can only be because the earth is curved. And that's just objectively incorrect and ignorant. Yeah. That's that's all they have because they can't admit it. They can't admit that things in the foreground will obscure things bottom up. Well, that's not what I was saying. And I was, you repeated it. For That's four years times. and years of your debate, Zanuck. You hey, literally denied the fact that anything in the foreground. Do you mind, do you mind real quick? Can anything in the foreground can block and obscure much larger objects, objects in the distance. Uh, you guys have ignored seen. that. You guys have denied that, and then you guys uh, uh, obfuscate the the objective truth. Is 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 that objects in the foreground definitely can block out objects in the background okay. that are two, two much points. bigger. Two points on that. Let me respond, please. So I, I've already conceded and admitted and, and offered that an object away, for example, a one foot wave that's close enough can block a 300 foot object in a distance. Not in contention here. Not at all. Well, wait, wait, come on. What about the Glover that just said that that's incorrect? That makes no sense. What's up? Speak up now. No, no, Shizanik. The Glover that just jumped in and said that makes no sense. You want to explain to, why, to us why it doesn't make any sense? Yeah. So if we have this giant object in the distance and there uh, are. For example, a windmill or a skyscraper, and if it, it further away we get from it, it's not going to fully disappear just because of little bumps in the ground or tiny little hills. So long as the area is relative to flat, it just won't disappear. The whole thing won't disappear like that. That's not how. Oh, so works. you didn't actually it address it at all. Disappearing of objects. I don't think you heard. So you didn't point. actually. You didn't actually address it at all, right? So, like if I'm okay. taking my thumb, buddy, I can have a thirty-story building in the distance. I can take my thumb and block out the entire building. When I move my thumb further away from me, I'll start to see more and more of the building. In reality, my thumb is way, way, way smaller than the 30-story building. But because my thumb is so much closer to me, it'll block out the entire 30-story building. What if your thumb This is like cool. third grade stuff, dude. But what if yeah, exactly, was, exactly. So, so why do these tiny little bumps in the ground? What if we change the subject? They, they should, they should oh, wait for this question. Somebody's got a thumb question. No, Finn, I don't think Finn really understands your point, which is just, just defend him for a second, because I think he's saying that these bumps in the distance are, are, are smaller angularly and farther away from you. They can't 
possibly angrily block things that are like building distance. I understand what you're saying perfectly, Woodsy. You're correct. If I have a one foot wave and I'm on I'm, and it's only like ten or feet ten or ten feet away from me, it can block a three hundred foot ship in the distance. I totally agree. Right. We all. So do you agree that do you that agree one. that do you agree that if someone was to take a picture close to the water over the ocean and then say, look how much this stuff in the uh, distance is blocked, that can only happen on a globe. That would be patently incorrect because the waves of the water themselves, even if they're just one foot waves, based on your relative angle of view, could block things in the distance significantly and it would do so bottom up. If you want to get far away, you're extremely close to the camera. What? Not if you're far away. They can't. They can't. They can't block stuff if you're very far away. Yeah, well, wait, there you go. You're wrong again. So for one, if yeah, you know, one, one foot wave that's a mile away. With it, you know that being the size of that one foot wave is going to be. I can give you the number. Okay, but that's not the way the world works. The waves don't just pop up really far. Yeah, I know. Away. I know. But there was a point he's trying to make is that these little waves. We have relevant. A, we have one foot waves. Point. Hold on. Let's say we have one foot waves everywhere, all the way from for, out to three miles. All just one foot white caps. They're all about a foot high on a on a very clear like a lake, which so is not waves or just these white caps. We know what those little waves will block based on my angle to them and my distance to those waves, even the furthest one we could see or the closest. Mm-hmm, yeah. Wait, wait. So, now think about this. Think about this. Think about this. Say you have the ocean, right? To your perspective, the ocean is going to look like it's rising up. Just due to perspective, just like the plane looks like as it goes overhead and goes away from you, it looks like it's going down. Just like when the plane comes towards you, it looks like it's going up. Just like a hallway. Just like the globe Earth has to invoke because when we go up in a drone, the horizon rises with us. So when we look out over, when we look out over the ocean, the horizon looks like it's rising up. Now we're going to see those waves optically higher. Right, but they're still going to have the same effect of blocking things out in the distance, proportionate to our angle of view and the distance to us. That's and we'll obviously, we're obviously no, it's not. When we're looking at why, if you like. no, 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 tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Obviously, it's always based on how close, like, say, the wave is to you in relation to the object, right? And obviously, when we look out over the ocean, <laughs> the ocean is close to us. Okay, it's it's right. We're looking over the ocean, but also the effect of those waves blocking it out in the distance. Is going to be affected by the fact that the that the ocean itself is optically lifted because of perspective. It ramps up, and this is just a fact. And the fact yeah. you guys deny this stuff, I mean, do we have to go to the point where someone can pull their thumb out of their pocket and block something, and you guys tell us that it's not a real no, thing? I, I, I understand trigonometry extremely well, so I'm not I'm not I'm with you the whole way. But you're just confused on a couple points here. That one foot wave, if I'm on the beach and I have a one foot wave, and I'm like a foot from it. It's going to block everything. Nothing. I won't see nothing over that one foot wave if I'm just just below it, right? One foot away. However, if I'm six feet tall and I'm looking at two miles and I have a boat that's 300 feet tall and I have a one foot wave that's maybe 10 feet from the boat, well, that wave's only going to block only a little less than one foot of that boat because it's that far away. That same wave, one foot wave, if it's further away, will block less of that object. That's of what, course. That's what, that's what, that's what Finn was saying. That's what he was But thinking. that's an irrelevant point because in that reality, is it is Come because on. in reality, when we look over the ocean, it isn't just many, many miles of no waves and then boom, there are waves. And in fact, yeah. I live close to the ocean and the ocean has more than one foot waves anyway. And I live on the more calm side of the ocean and we know that there are much bigger than one foot waves in the ocean. And I'm not in California or something. Right, we have easily three, four foot waves, and what they do is they just move through the ocean. That's what they do. 